Making a website has never been easier and in this course I will show you step by step how you can create an amazing website using WordPress and the Divi theme. My name is Ferdy and let me show you what we will cover in this course. This is the website we are going to create using the Divi Builder. You have a beautiful header over here and if I scroll down look at this, the logo changes, it becomes a darker logo and the background changes. Right now our header looks like this, but you can also create a header like this or like this. The sky is the limit. We will create a hero like this over here and if you want to adjust something it's really easy just enable the visual builder and if you want to change something just click over here and adjust it i can double click over here change the color that's how easy it is i click over here then i can change the order of the images now this one will appear first it's just a matter of dragging and dropping and if i don't like it i can just say command or control z and everything will be as it was if i want to change the colors over here just double click I can drag the editor around or I can make it bigger. I can put it to the side of the page or I can change the height and the width over here. So let me drag this to the right. I can hover over here and select certain areas I want to adjust. And when I do that, immediately I can change that particular thing over here. So maybe I want to invert the colors. And if I like it, I can say right mouse click, copy the module cells, right mouse click, Paste the module cells and there you go. Or even better, right mouse click, extend the blurb styles throughout the whole page or only throughout the section or through this row. So if I say section, only all blurbs in this section will be adjusted. So if I say extend, there you go. And that's how easy you can adjust things within the Divi Builder. How can we apply this? If I want to change this background, I can do that over here. I can have a gradient. So I can change it to something like this. And if I like it and I want to apply it to multiple areas on the website, I just say right mouse click, copy the section styles, scroll down and at the next area, paste the section styles. And that's how easy it is to adjust things within the website. If I want to create some extra space, it's really simple. I just drag it. It's that easy. So I will show you step by step how to create all these areas over here. And of course you can adjust the content to your wishes. We're going to talk about creating blog posts, creating a portfolio. And of course, we're gonna create a footer for our website. So the header, the footer, the whole page, everything will be created using the Divi Visual Builder. And of course, we're gonna make sure that everything is optimized for all devices. We go to the about page. We're gonna create something like this. Talk about our team. Throughout all the pages we're gonna create, you will learn more and more on how to make websites using the Divi theme. And if you take a look at this area, we copied it and pasted it from the homepage. It was this area and by copying it and pasting it and adjusting it, you can save a lot of time. That's what we're also going to do. We're going to speed up our workflow so you can make websites fast and efficiently. We're going to talk about Divi Cloud. That means that you can save an area like this to your Divi Cloud and then use it on any website you're creating using the Divi theme. And I'll also show you how you can import all these pages that I've created in this tutorial for free in a matter of minutes. If we take a look at the blog page, if we go to a certain blog post, we will create a template within Divi that displays all the information of our blog post like this. But we can also decide to make it look like this or this. That's what we're going to do using the Divi theme builder. I will also show you how to learn how to write blog posts so you can get more free traffic towards your website and increase your business. First, we will install Google Analytics and Google Search Console so we can keep track of everything that our visitors are doing on our website. Then we will install a popular and free SEO tool called Rank Math. This tool will give us suggestions so we can optimize our blog post and be found better in the search results. We will do market research so we know that the subjects that we have in mind to write about are subjects people are really searching for on the internet. And then we will start writing content. I will show you how to do that using the WordPress editor. And in order to give your visitors a better experience, I will show you how to create and import images in your blog post. We will talk about scheduling posts, categories, tags, featured images and when our blog post is almost finished we will apply everything that rank match suggests so our blog post becomes better and will be found better in the search results and last but not least we will talk about blogging and ai i will show you how to create a portfolio for a website with a filter or without a filter whatever you prefer and then how to display all your portfolio items i can display them like this but also something like this or like this besides that we will talk about scroll effects 
split testing an amazing way to optimize every single area in your website so you can get more conversions. And we're going to talk about Divi AI. What I can do, I can improve this text. So let me make it better. We create stunning websites that drive tangible results for your business. Use this text and that's how easy it is. Now I can select this and make it orange. Over here, I can get rid of everything. Click on AI, write with AI, and I can say, write something about an amazing web design agency based in Los Angeles that is focused on driving more traffic to your website and generate more business. Now I can say generate text and then based on all the other information on my website, this text will be generated. So I see 23 years. That's something I placed over here in my title. So if I use this text, it looks like this. Created using AI based on the other information on my website and the general knowledge of AI. When you follow all the steps in this course, you will be able to create an amazing website. And not only that, you will also be able, with all the knowledge you've learned, to create websites for others. And in that way, generate an extra source of income for yourself. Every now and then I get a message from a subscriber that's saying, hey Ferdy, thanks to you, I can do this now for a living, making websites for clients. And you can be the next. Well, two more practical things. In the description of this video, I have timestamps. So if you want to go to a certain part in the tutorial, you can click on one of those timestamps and you go directly to that part of the tutorial. When I go to fast for you in this video, you can go to the settings here at YouTube, go to the playback speed and slower it down. What you also can do, you can click on the left arrow on your keyboard and then you'll go back five seconds in the video and that way it can help you to follow along in this tutorial. If you can appreciate that I made this video for free, then please like this video and also subscribe to this YouTube channel if you want to learn more on how to make websites and generate money with your websites. Now let's take a look at the three steps we will take. So first you get your free domain name and we will get web hosting. What is a domain name? A domain name is the address of your website. Web hosting is a special computer that's turned on 24 seven that contains all your files, all your emails, all your images, all the content on your website. So with your free domain name and web hosting, you are visible on the internet. Then we will install WordPress and WordPress is completely free. It's the best tool to create a website without having to know anything about coding because WordPress is doing all the hard stuff for you. And then the third step, we will create a website using the Divi theme, the most popular WordPress theme in the world. And for the website we will make, people can charge thousands of dollars, but I will show you for free how you can do it yourself. If you already have a domain and web hosting, you can do two things. You can migrate your current website to this amazing web hosting platform. And I have a tutorial here that can show you step by step how you can do that. And if you already have installed WordPress, you can skip step two and go directly to step three. And I will show you right now where you need to go in the tutorial in order to follow along from that point on. So ladies and gentlemen, let's get started. If you already have a domain name and web hosting, you can skip this part. If you don't have a domain name and web hosting, you can go to webhosting39.com, hit enter. Then we click here to go to Hostinger. Three years I've been searching for the best web hosting company that's affordable. And then I came across Hostinger. I'm already using them for five years and I love it. And I'm not the only one. If you take a look at the reviews on Trustpilot, you see that all people are also really excited about Hostinger. And if you take a look at the Google Trends, Hostinger is taking over the web hosting industry. They're getting more and more popular. Why? Because their web hosting quality is top notch and they are affordable. So if you want to get a free domain name and web hosting here at Hostinger, you can click on claim deal, you scroll down and then we see three plans, the premium plan, the business plan, and the cloud startup plan. Let's start with the premium plan. Everything you need to create your website. If you're on a budget, this is the best plan for you. What does it contain? You have standard performance. What does it mean? I've tested everything like crazy. As long as you don't create 100 websites on this plan, you will be fine. The performance will be fast. This is a performance test of a heavy website that I've created using the premium plan. The performance will be a bit more challenging when you will create 80 websites on this plan. But if you only want to create one till three websites, everything will be blazing fast. You have 100 gigabyte of SSD storage, which is more than enough. Weekly backups, free SSL, unlimited brand width, so, so you can have as much visitors as you want. A free email account, you get a free domain. And to make it even better for every plan you have, there will be free domain privacy. What is domain privacy? That all your details, your phone number, your email will be hidden. So people on the internet cannot see all your details when they look up your domain information. And with Hostinger, this is free. And with other web hosting companies, this can cost up to $20 per year. But it's also really nice if you somehow don't like the service, 
there is a 30 day money back guarantee. No questions asked. So there is no risk at all to get started. So if you want to go for the budget plan, you can click on add to cart and there's a period you can choose. And the longer the period you choose, the more discounts you get. So here you see for 48 months, you get three months for free and you pay $2.99 per month for the next four years. So if you scroll down, that's a total of $173. But let me make this even better. If you click over here, you fill in 30, you click on apply, you get 10% extra discount. If you're like, okay, but I want to go for a shorter period, you can go for 12 months, then the price increases a bit per month. But then if you scroll down, look at this, you just pay $41.68. So for $41.68, you can get started with a free domain name in your own web hosting plan. Now let's talk about the business plan, which is even better. Here is the most popular one, the business plan. Look at this. You get increased performance up to five times as fast. You get 200 gigabyte, more than enough, but it is NVMe storage. So basically NVMe servers make your websites up to five times faster than SSD servers. So you can have 20, 30, 50, 80 websites on this plan and your websites will still be fast. There are daily backups instead of weekly backups and you have free CDN. Free CDN makes your website fast on every single place in the world. If we scroll down, what you will see over here, we have a WordPress staging tool, object cache for WordPress, which will make your website even faster. You can create a backup on demand. And this is also something really big. You have the WordPress AI tools. Those AI tools will help you in building your website. They will give you advice on what you could do to make a better website. And the great thing is that it's already really good, but it will only become better in the future. That's included in the business plan. So if you want to get this plan, you click on add to cart. Then there's the same overview, choose a period. And when we scroll down, we can fill in 30, apply. You pay $208 for four years. If you don't want to go for the long run, but you want to go for 12 months, you pay a bit more, but then the total amount will be $65.21. So it's up to you to choose which plan you want to have and which period you want to choose. When you know what you want, I will go for 12 months. You can create your account. So I'll fill in my email address over here. I create a password or you can sign up with Google or Facebook. And then you can pay with credit card, PayPal, Google Pay, Alipay and CoinGate, but there are also local payment methods. So if you come from a certain country, from the Netherlands or from India, there are local payment methods. That's also what I love about Hostinger, that everybody can pay with their favorite payment method. So that makes it easier for you to make the payment. So you can choose over here how you want to pay. I want to pay with credit card and then you can fill in your details over here, but you don't have to do that over here. You can also do that later. So I will leave this empty. You can add your company details. If you have a company, fill in the details over here. And then when you do that, your taxes will be subtracted and you'll pay $53.89. So what I will do now, I will fill in my credit card details and then I click on submit secure payments. And then I want to congratulate you with your free domain and your web hosting plan. And in a few minutes, we can choose our free domain name. Awesome. It can be that the hosting or panel is in your language. Click over here. They're adding languages all the time. So if you prefer your own language, you can select it over here. I will use English and then I click on start now over here. Who are you creating a website for? I want to skip all these steps. They want to help us, but I will show you what you need to do. So I click on skip and also over here, create or migrate a website. I say skip, create an empty website. And then over here, we can claim a free domain name. So over here, we can fill in our domain name. And then here we can fill in our extension. So in my case, I will say Divi5. And over here, I can select my extension, .com or something else. I say .com and then I click on search. It is still available as you see over here. So I click on continue. And now we can fill in our details over here. If you don't have a company, you can select personal. If you have a company, you can select a company. I have a company, so I click on company. Next step, and we need to fill in some extra details. So my first name, 30, my last name, I email my company. So make sure to fill in all these details and your phone number. This is for registering your domain name. And the great thing because of domain privacy, these details will not be shown. 
to the world. So people cannot call you like, hey, I'm calling you because I saw online that you have a new domain. We can make a website for you or a logo. You will not get spam thanks to the free domain privacy from Hostinger. I click on finish registration. Now we are registering our domain. We can choose our server location. If you click over here, you can choose one. I want to focus on people from the United States, so I leave it where it is. You can also select another one. If you're focusing on people in Europe, you can select something in Europe. I leave it as it is. And then I click on finish setup. And now your WordPress website will be installed on your brand new free domain name. Our website will be made secure, which is great. And it says, well done, you are ready. We can view our website. And if we click over here, it will probably be a website that is a preview of the current website. As you see over here, this is not the real website yet, but we can already get started. So I close this and then I click on the control panel. It says over here that my domain will be accessible in about three minutes. So I prefer to wait instead of working on a domain that's not my real domain. So my advice is that you also wait until your domain is live and then we can work on our real domain, which we got for free. So I will be back in a few minutes. It's now one minute later. If I refresh the page, the text is gone. So if I click over here, look at this. This is crazy. We see our live domain. It's hosted at Hostinger and it is secure. You can see that by this icon. Connection is secure. How cool. I close this command or control W. And now I go to security SSL just to check. And it says, yes, it is active. So I go back to the dashboard and now I want to go to the auto installer and then I select WordPress. My website title is my WordPress website. We'll talk about it later. The administrator email. I want to use another one, my username. I want to use this one and my password. And then over here, I click on next. We get the most recent version of WordPress. We can change the language. So if you want to create a website in a different language, you can change it over here and all the other settings are great. So I click on install. And now we can click on admin panel and that will bring us to our website. Look at this, our live website. We are live. Everybody that goes to this domain at this moment will see our website. So what you see over here is the backend of WordPress. This is where we can adjust our website. If I click over here, I see the front end of my website. This is what people will see when they enter our website and it looks okay. But of course we're going to make it look so much better. So by default, this will be installed on your website. It can be that it looks a little bit different. And because we are logged in, we see this bar over here. All the people that are not logged in, they don't see this bar. With this bar, we can navigate from the front end to the back end by clicking here. So now I want to close the other two tabs. This is the back end of our website. This is the front end. On the back end of our website, we can adjust our website. We can create blog posts, we can add videos, images, PDFs. We can create the home page, the contact page, the about us page. We can moderate comments when people have a comment on our blog post or a product we have. We can change the look and feel of our website with themes. We can add extra functionalities to our website. We can add other users that can do things for us on our website. There are WordPress tools and there are settings. So congratulations, you're live now. I like to work in an organized environment with my desk, but also with WordPress. And right now it can look a little bit overwhelming. There are a few things in WordPress that comes with the installation that we don't need. So what I will do right now, I will uh, clean up our WordPress website and I will show you how to do it. And meanwhile, we'll talk about a few important configurations. Now I want to configure our website in a way that we can work more efficiently. How can we do that? Well, the first thing I want to dismiss this message. Then I want to go to the screen options and uncheck everything. So the overview of our dashboard will be clean. Of course, afterwards I want to install Google Analytics. So I see an overview of the visitors of my website. And if I have a web shop, I want to see the amount of sales. But for now, I want to leave it empty. Then I want to go to the website, to the front end. And I search for my blog post. There's one blog post that will come with every WordPress installation. And in this case, it is here. Hello world. 
If I click on it, it says my domain forward slash index.php, all that stuff. I want that to look better. So I go to the back end to settings, permalinks. And there I want to change the custom structure to post name. So I'll see my domain.com or dot whatever forward slash and then the name of the post. So I click on save the changes. Now I go to my website. I scroll down. I click over here. Now as you see, it just says forward slash hello world. That's so much better. Then I go over here, Howdy Ferdy Corp. I click on edit profile. I want to scroll down. I want to fill in my first name, last name, and then change the display in name publicity to Ferdy Corp Zoek. And now it says Howdy Ferdy Corp Zoek. If you want to have an image like this, let me save it first, update my profile. I scroll down. You can change or create your profile picture on Gravatar. So you need to open this link. Then you can sign up, leave your email address, which should be the same as on your website and upload an image and that will be displayed over here and over here. Okay. Over here at the admin color scheme, we can change the look and feel of the backend, the color. So I can click over here. It will be light, modern, blue, ocean, etc. You can choose something you prefer. And I prefer the default one. Let's go to posts. I want to select all the posts, even though there's only one. And I click on dog actions, move to the trash, apply, go to the trash, empty the trash. Then I go to pages. Select all pages, build actions, move to the trash, apply, and add the trash. I want to empty the trash. Then I want to go to plugins, select all plugins, build actions, deactivate, apply, select again, build actions, delete. I want to start from scratch with no plugins. Of course, we can add plugins later, but right now I want to start with nothing. Now, if I go to my dashboard, it looks so much cleaner already. Then I want to go to the settings general and make sure that over here in my WordPress URL, it says HTTPS and not HTTP. If there's no S, you can add it over here and also over here and then scroll down and save the changes. If you need to change it, you need to log in again, go back to settings general and I scroll down can change the side language. You can change the time zone. Well, if I say I'm from the Netherlands, so if I focus on people from the Netherlands, I can just say AMS Amsterdam. I search the city that is in my time zone, and then automatically everything will be synced to the right time zone. Then there's the date format. I like to prefer the upper one. You can change it to another one or have a custom one. The time format I like to use PM in capitals. My week starts on Monday. So I click on save the changes. Great. WordPress works with themes. What is a WordPress theme? Well, the best thing I can do is share my screen with you and explain to you what a WordPress theme is. So I had an idea. That's what I'm about to do right now. Later on, we're going to talk about the site title and tagline. Really important. Right now, I want to talk about the themes. If I take a look at the website, it is ugly. It's really ugly and we want to make it look better. Of course, we want to make it look great. In order to do that, we need a theme. What is a WordPress theme? A theme decides the look and feel of your website and every theme has their own functionalities. So what you see over here, I have my WordPress sample page, a title and this area over here with a white background and black text. If I would go to the back end to appearance themes, and I choose a different theme, the 2021 theme, for instance, and I activate it. That means I still have the same information on my website, my WordPress, just not a WordPress website, nothing here, but now it's in a different look and feel. So that's what a theme does. Again, I go to themes and I go for 2022. I go to the website, same information, different look and feel. And as I said, every theme has their own functionalities. There are free themes. You can find them over here, themes new and you see a lot of themes but they're also premium themes 
And those premium themes have a lot of extra functionalities. And in this tutorial, we are going to work with the most popular WordPress theme called the Divi theme. You cannot just create a header and a footer with the Divi theme. No, it's a complete website builder. It has a page builder. So all the content we're going to create, we can do that using the Divi visual builder. And I'll show you step by step how you can do that. And the great thing about the visual builder, it says it already, you can see exactly what you're doing already. There are other page builders that you need to go to the back end of WordPress, try a few things, save it, take a look at the front end, and then you see the results. And if you don't like it, you need to go back. But with the front page visual builder from Divi, you see what you're doing at once. So let me show you how to get the Divi theme. So in order to get the Divi theme, we go to 30corp.com forward slash Divi, hit enter. And what you'll see, you get a discount of 10% for 24 hours. The last 24 hours, 192 people purchased the Elegant Themes membership. So what do you get over here? Well, if we go to all products, first of all, we get the Divi theme. The Divi theme is the most popular, the most used WordPress theme in the world. So we're going to use this in this tutorial, the Divi theme and the page builder. You can also use the Divi page builder and use a different theme, but I love this combination. So I will go for the Divi theme with the page builder. What else do you get? The extra magazine theme. If you want to create a blogging website or a news website, I have a tutorial about that. So if you want to follow that, search for extra theme tutorial 30 on YouTube and you'll find it. I have also tutorials about the Bloom email opt-ins. That means that you can get email addresses from your clients and it is beautifully created and it helps you to get more emails to your email list. And there's the Monarch social sharing, which helps you to let people spread the word about the content on your website or show people how they can follow you. And you can show people how many followers you already have on all your social media platforms. So I want to get a deal. I scroll down. There are two plans. The first one is you can pay $80 per year and then you can use all the tools we just discussed on unlimited websites. As you see, you can use it on unlimited website. And if you somehow don't like it, there's a 30 day money back guarantee. You just can say, Hey, I want my money back. I don't like it. And you get your money back. You get premium updates and premium support for as long as you are a member for $80 per year. Then there is the other plan. And the only difference is that this is for a lifetime. So you pay $224 one time and then forever. You have access to all those tools. Also, when there will be new tools, you'll get access to them. There are lifetime updates lifetime premium support their support is amazing and you can still use it on unlimited websites i bought this eight years ago and i still can use it on all the websites i have created and also with this plan if you somehow don't like it you can get your money back within 30 days so if this tutorial is really not what you thought it would be or you just don't like the tool you can get your money back so there's no risk and the next 24 hours you get 10 percent discount so for 224 dollars you can get this plan and then for the rest of your life, you have access to all those amazing tools. So I click on sign up today and I need to create an account. So I go for a username. I need to fill in my email address, a password and my first name and my last name. And I'm from the Netherlands so I can fill in my VAT number and then I get my taxes back. So I will fill it in. Then I need to fill in my credit card details. I agree to the terms of service and I don't need to have any updates via email. I click on complete registration. Awesome. And now I am welcomed over here and I can download the Divi theme. It can be that it says login. Well, then you need to click on login. Uh, I'm already logged in. So I click on download the Divi theme and there it goes. So now I go to my WordPress website. I go to the backend by clicking here. I go to appearance. Themes, add new, upload a theme, and I click over here. And I drag it over here and I click on install now. You can also choose a file by browsing on your computer. And now we need to activate the theme. So I click on activate. There it is. So I can click on my WordPress and I go to the website. It still doesn't look that great, but we're going to make it look great. But this is just the beginning. So we see that our theme is activated. I go back to the back end by clicking here. Then I go to Divi theme options. And in order to get everything out of this theme, I want to go to updates, fill in my username over here and my API key. How can I find my API key? I go to elegant themes. 
I go to account, username and API key, and then I scroll down, I can find my API key. I can also generate a new one and call this one divi5.com. Copy it by clicking on it and then I paste it here, save the changes, and now I can update everything within the Divi theme from out my from my WordPress website. Awesome. So again, I go to my website. This is how it looks. We're going to make it look better. Now I want to take a look at the site title. I assume you want to be found in the search results of Google, and that's why it's really important to have a good optimized site title. So let me show you how to get one. So I go to the back end to settings general. If you want to create a great site title, take a look at the best examples. You can find them on the internet. So my website will be about a web design agency in Amsterdam. So if I search for web design agency, let's say Los Angeles, and I skip the sponsored stuff, you see Los Angeles web design. The first thing I see web design in Los Angeles, that's what you see over here. What you see over here is the title that can be created over here. So don't say welcome to this website because when people want to find you, they will never search for welcome to this website. They will search on web design, Sydney, web design, Amsterdam, web design, wherever you are. So take a look at the websites that you are about to make. Do some example websites, search for that and see what the results are because those results over here are results of one of the best websites because they're ranked on number one by Google. So we can learn things from that. And what I see over here, web design, Los Angeles, Los Angeles, web design, design, Los Angeles, web design company. So make sure that the keywords, the most important keywords you want to be found on are in the title of your website. So in my case, that would be web design Amsterdam. Or if I was located in Los Angeles, I would say Los Angeles. I can also say web design agency Los Angeles, but then that's not enough. Then you need to hook them. You need to make them click on your website instead of someone else's website. So if I take a look at the sponsored ads, design, creative A design, digital creative agency, best web design agency, another sponsored one, top branding agencies. Transform vision into reality. So you need to have a catch, a nice phrase that will help people to click on your link. Digital agency, web design agency. So what I can say, web design agency Los Angeles, 23 plus years of experience or the best web design agency in LA. So make sure that you have the keywords you want to be found. I want to be found on web design and Los Angeles. Then there's the tagline. In a few words, explain what this site is about. So I can say we create websites that generate you more business. So the site title that will be seen, by the way, if I save it, if I click on the website, it will be seen over here, Web Design Agency Los Angeles. And then the subtitle, the tagline, that will not be seen. And it's not also not necessary to use it, but I prefer to, in a few words, explain what the site is about. So really important to have a good title over here. Take a look at the, the website you see when you search for uh, your website. So maybe you have a website about training dogs. So training dogs. How to train a dog, dog obedience training. So be inspired by this. Don't copy everything one-on-one, -on -one, but you can get inspiration. And also uh, when we take a look at the website, the websites that are number one are doing something really great. Otherwise they would not be there. So then you can take a look over here to how they made their website. So we're going to talk about it later. Right now we have a site title and a tagline. I'm happy with it. So I save it. And then I go to my website and it's still not looking that great. I have two pages over here. I thought I removed them. So let me go over here. I go to pages and I select this, move to the trash, apply, go to the trash and empty the trash. 
So we have no pages now, no pages. So if I go to home, there's nothing. So that's the next thing I want to do. I want to create a few pages. When we create pages for our website, the home page, the about page, other pages, we can fill them with content and share information on our website. When you have all those pages, you want to organize them in a menu that can be visible in your website so people can navigate through your website. So the next thing we'll do, we'll create a menu and create all the pages you need for your website. And I'll also talk about what kind of pages you need for your website. If you want to create new pages, you can hover over new and click on page, but there's a better way. You go to the title of your website and then to the theme customizer. Then we scroll down or we go to menus over here and then we're going to create a new menu. So we're going to create a menu and pages at the same time, which saves us time, which I like. I like to save time also for you. So if this will save you five minutes and a million people watch this, then I've saved people five million minutes. But the longer I talk, the less of the time will be saved. So um, let's get started. There's a menu name and it can be anything. It's just for reference purpose only. So I always like to call this the main menu. And I assign it to the primary menu. So the Divi theme knows where it needs to be placed over here. I click on next and now I can add items. That's how easy it is. I click on add items and I can add a new page just by calling this home. I click on add. So now the question is, what do you want to display on your website? And also with this, you can get inspiration. So if I search for web design agency, Los Angeles, I can go to brave people and see what they have. Plan a project. I click here. Intro, what we do, who we are, our work, plan a project, insights. Okay. So what I want to do, I want to tell something about myself or about my company. So I type about add and it will be added to the menu at once. What else? There are a few services I offer. So I want to have a menu item and a page called services. But there are a few services I offer. The first one is branding. I want to help people to brand their company. The second service I offer is web design. Create a website and design it. The third one is development. Or even better, web development. If I don't know if the word is correct, I go to Google. Copy. Paste it. That's how I roll. That's, that's it. That's okay. So I want to add a new item. And as I want to showcase what I can do. So our work or it can be portfolio or user cases or cases. I say our work, whatever you prefer. And then I want to have a blog page. A great way to get organic visitors to your website by sharing valuable information about the services that you offer. And I want people to be able to get in touch with me. So I create a contact page. But what I see over here, I have the services and then branding, web design, web development, and our work are all services. So I actually want them to be beneath the services page because right now there are a lot of menu items over here. How can I do that? Here I have services. I go to branding and I drag to the right a bit. It snaps. Like that. That's how easy it is. Publish. And now it's over here. I can even take it a step further. I can also have a second sub item. And now it's services and then web development and then our work. I don't need that, but hey, it's possible. If you somehow get stuck over here, there's another way on how you can adjust this. You can close this and hover over the title, go to menus. Uh, you can also Adjust it over here. Well, if I go to apple.com and I go to iPhone, I want to go back to the home page. Where's the home page? Where is it? It's nowhere. You need to click on the logo and then you go back. That's what I also want to do. So what I can do, I can go to home, click on the arrow down and remove this. Save it. Okay. What else? Well, that's it for now. I want to go back over here to the theme customizer because right now it says no results found and that's because WordPress originally was a blogging tool. It's so much more than that right now, but in the beginning it was just to place blog posts on your homepage. 
So that's why it says no results found because we don't have any blog post. So in order to show our homepage over here, we need to go down to the homepage settings, change our homepage displays from your latest posts, which are not there to a static page. Now we can select the homepage. So I select home and for the posts page, I select the blog page. I click on publish, close it. And now it says home over here. So here we can create a beautiful homepage with the visual builder from Divi. Ladies and gentlemen, it is time to upload your logo to your WordPress website. But Ferdy, I don't have a logo. What should I do? I don't know. No worries. I'll show you how you can create a logo yourself. Yes, let me show you how you can do that. What I want to do now, I want to upload my logo. Well, I have tutorials on how to create a logo if you go to YouTube. When I search for create a logo 30, hit enter. There are a few tutorials. Five months ago, uh, create a logo for free. This is my best tutorial about that for free with a transparent background. Look at this. Fun things. Uh, logos like these. Make it for free. Also, three years ago already. And um, I think this one is good to, uh, good enough for you to create an amazing logo. Or you can follow along with images I use in this tutorial. In that case, go to ferdycorp.com forward slash images. Hit enter. There they go. Unzip it. Drag it to the desktop. And then over here, you go to miscellaneous web Define 2024. And you can use the logos. I use in the tutorial. So I will do that. So now I go back to my website and I want to upload my logo. In order to do that, I go to the back end by clicking here to Divi theme options. And there's a logo. I click on upload. I click on select files. I go to the desktop images tutorial, miscellaneous web Divine 2024. And I go for the logo.png open it set it as a logo save the changes and now voila so we have webdivine about services blog contact etc what i see over here i have no capitals so i want to do the same thing in my menu you don't have to do that you even can go to the theme customizer to the header and navigation header format and change it so you can make it centered. You can change the look and feel. You can have the logo in between. You can have the logo slide in or the, the menu. A lot of options. I'm not going to talk too much about this because I will show you later how to create a custom header from scratch using the Divi Builder. Right now I want to use the default one. And if you want to, you can go to the primary menu bar. And then change the font style to capitals like that. Or what I prefer, since I also use no capitals over here, uh, no capitals at all. There are a few ways to do that. Now I'll show you one of the ways, which is the easiest. <laughs> so I close this. I go to the menus. And here at about, I open it. And here I remove the capital A and change it with a normal A. So I get rid of the capitals. That's just a way of, uh, that's, that's a part of the branding. You don't have to do this, but I prefer to do this or I prefer to have all capitals. That's what I also like. The blog page, and the contact page, save the menu. And now it looks like this. We can also change the font. If you want to talk about fonts, we can go to fonts.google.com. Here you can find a lot of fonts. A lot of different kind of fonts, as you see. I prefer, but that's my preparation, uh, to use sans serif. So I go to categories. If you use serif, that means that it has those things over here. Uh, I don't know how to say that in English, but um, I prefer if you have sans serif, it's a little bit more straightforward, except for this stuff. I don't know what this is doing over here. But then you can take a look over here. I like open sans. We're going to use that. Pop-ins looks really beautiful. What I prefer to do, I like to use a, a font for my titles. So for my for my menu items, for my headers, 
and then another font for my main text. So I really like Railway, but what I, what I prefer even more is Nunito Sans. So if I want to change the fonts over here to Nunito Sans, I go to the theme customizer, to the general settings, typography, and then for the header font, I choose Nunito Sans. What I still like about this is that you cannot search for it. You need to scroll down all the way to the end of Nunito Sans. A lot of Noto Sans. And after that, there is, yes, Nunito Sans. And then for the body font, I prefer Open Sans. There it is. Awesome. So it looks already better than this. There's still a long way to go, but hey, step by step, we're going to make it look better. I hope you like it so far. Do you know what fortuitous means? Well, it doesn't matter. If you don't know, that's no problem. Do you know what a fave icon is? That's more important. And if you don't know, a fave icon is a small square or round image on the top of your website when you open a certain tab in your website so people can see where your website is. Let me show you where it is displayed and how you can upload one to your website. So we have our logo over here. It starts to look better already. We're going to take a look at the colors in a minute. But before I do that, I want to take a look at this area over here. I want to adjust it. How can I do that? I hover over here. I go to the theme customizer. I go to general settings, site identity. I want to have a site icon, which will be placed over here. So I click on select site icon, upload files, select files. I show you in the same tutorial of the, the, the Canva tutorial, how to create something like this. But I also created something for you if you want to follow along in the download folder with the images. And it needs to be a square, 525 by 520 pixels in my case. Select it and voila, there you go. So now if I go to apple.com and to coca-cola.com, I can see at once where my website is by this logo. If I can. So that's what I prefer. And now it's time to like take a look at the colors within my website and within your website. When you just created a new business and you're creating a website for your business, maybe you have not put any thought into the kind of colors you want to use for your website. Well, let me show you how we can find out which colors you can use for your website so we can use those in your website. In my website, I like to work with a specific set of colors that has everything to do with the branding of my website. If you don't have any color for your website yet, you can watch my tutorial for that. You go to YouTube and search for choose colors for website 30. Hit enter. And there it is the first video, or you can take a look at my description. There I have a link to that video and there I show you how you can create a color palette for your website. And then if you want to follow along with this tutorial, with these colors, you can go to the image tutorial folder, go to miscellaneous web design 2024. And then there's the web design PDF, which I've created in the tutorial I just showed you. And now I want to use those colors in my website. And by default, if I enable the visual builder, I'll do that in a minute. But then when we use colors, by default, there are a few colors we can choose. And those are not the colors we want to use. So in order to adjust those colors, we need to go to the back end, to Divi theme options. And there are these colors. So what I will do, I'll grab my preview over here, copy this color and I paste it here. Then the second color and the second color, then the third one, The fourth one, which is a lighter version of this one. And this is also a lighter version of this one. So in that way I can maintain my style. And after that, I would like to have black and white, and then another white because I will not use that color. So I have two main colors, one dark color, not black, then a lighter version of the orange and a lighter version of the greenish one and then completely black completely white and not a completely white so save the changes and now ladies and gentlemen it is time to start working with the visual builder of divi 
Okay, are you ready to get your feet wet into the visual builder of Divi? I hope so. Right now, I'm going to show you the basics, like how to navigate, how, where, where are all the features. And after that, we're going to get started. And throughout the tutorial, we're going to learn more and more about this amazing page builder. And ladies and gentlemen, are you ready to learn how to work with the visual builder from Divi? I will call this the Divi builder. Well, when we open this for the first time, it can be that you see a uh, follow a tour. But you can skip that because I will show you around. There are three options right now. I can build a page from scratch. I can choose a pre-made layout. We're going to take a look at this later. And we can clone an existing page. Well, since we have not created a page yet, I cannot show you yet how to do this. So what I will do, I will start with build from scratch. So I click over here. There is a lot we can cover. So I will talk slowly and show you step by step how everything works. Even though when I get excited, I can start to talk faster, but I will do my best to show you everything really clearly and step by step. So the first thing we see when we open the page and start from scratch is this area. We can insert a row. Right now you don't see this, but this is a section. The Divi Builder has three parts. It has a section. In that section, we can have rows. We can have one row, two rows, three rows. We can have six rows. We can have a small row and a wider row. And in those rows, we can have modules. So let's choose this one, for instance, three rows. What I see is still this section over here. I don't see the blue line yet. It will come right now. I see one, two, three rows, and then there are modules. That's the third thing. Sections, rows, one, two, three. And in those rows, we can have modules. So let me choose an accordion. And now we can adjust this. I can do that over here and I can do it over here. This is the area where I can adjust all the information. So I can click over here. And I can give this a title, title one. And when I type it over here, it will appear over here. I can drag this area around. I can make it bigger. I can stitch it to the side. So now my page becomes smaller, but this cannot float anymore. But now I can work over here and then adjust everything over here if you prefer that. Or like this, you just um, drag it around. So if you uh, added something over here, you'll drag it to the right. And when you want to do something over here, you drag it to the left. If I'm finished, I can click on the check. Now look at this. When I hover over here, Right now we see the blue area. This is the section. Within the section, we have rows, this green area. In this case, one, two, three rows. In those rows, we can have modules. If I want to adjust this module, I click over here. And then this opens up again. If I'm finished, I click here. If I click on this plus, this is the second row. I can also add something. So let's go for a blurb and what you will see again, I can adjust the title over here, title two. I can adjust the text over here. I can adjust the image or the icon so I can grab this logo over here. There it is. And what you will see, depending on the, the module you use right now, we use a blurb. We have different settings. So over here I see text, image, icon, link. If I go to the accordion, I see something else in the toggle icon. So depending on the module you use, there are different settings. Well, in the first tab, there's content. So I can adjust the content. I can change the title. I can change the text, the second title, etc. If I go to the second tab, there is design. So now I can give the title a different color. I can give the body text a different font or I can make it uppercase or I can align it to the right. Again, also with this one, this is a different module. I can go to design again, a few different options as with the accordion, but again, I can adjust all those settings over here. So this is the content. I can change the text. I can add an image or an icon. I can add a link to it, the background. Then there is design. It's about the colors, the styling of the module, and then there's advanced, and then we can add CSS. 
we can add conditions. We can change the visibility. So I can say only show this on a desktop screen, but hide it on a tablet or on a mobile. There are transitions. You can adjust the position. You can exchange the scroll effects. We're going to talk about all these options, but that's what you can do with every module. There's content, change the information. Then there's design, change the styling and there's advanced. And that's everywhere the same. And I just talked about it and we're going to talk about that. So as I said before, I'm probably overwhelming you with all the options. There's so much more to show, but throughout the tutorial, it will become easier and easier for you to navigate through the website and create amazing pages using the Divi Builder. Let's go for a third one, a circle counter. I'm okay with this. So I have three columns over here. If I want to save it, I click on this icon, open it and I save it. Or you say Command S or Control S on the PC. And what I can do now, right now there are three columns. Maybe I want to change it to four. And now I can add a fourth one. So that's how easy it is. And as I said before, throughout the tutorial, it becomes easier and easier for you to navigate through this whole visual builder. So I bring it back to three. You don't have to follow what I'm about to show you. But look at this. I go to this module and I can change background to this color. Okay. And I can go to design. I can change the circle colors, the field color. Make it uh, visible. I can go to the text. Let's find the title text. Make it orange. I can go to the number text. Make it white, for instance. Okay, let's keep with this. I don't, it, it looks really bad, but I uh, just want to show you something. Because right here, the background is green. Then I can go to the row. Then I can go to the third column. And change the background to this one. I know again it looks ugly. I can go to design, to spacing, bring it to the center. So I can do that pixel perfect and then add the section. I can also give it a background. Well, again, this looks really ugly, but it shows you what is possible on how many levels we can adjust things. So we can create the layout and the content we have in mind using the Divi Builder. So that's just a small introduction. Uh, I know it looks ugly, but we can make it look so much better. For instance, over here, I go to the second column. And if I would change the background to white, and I play around with the spacing, I can also link it. So I can say 20, 20, 20. This looks so much better than what we have over here. So I can uh, get rid of this, get rid of this. I can even duplicate this, drag it over here, duplicate it, drag it over here. But then also here in the first column, I should change the background to white. Play around with the same uh, spacing settings. We're going to talk about it. I can also copy this style and paste it over here. So, so I can also pick over here, right mouse click, second column, copy item styles, and then the third one, paste the item styles. So this is starting to look better already than this. This is ugly. This is looking better. So I just want to illustrate and show to you what is possible. And I know I want to show you a lot of things at the same time, but I need to take my time for it because we have a lot of time left in this tutorial. Now I'll do my best to show you everything step by step. There are three kinds of sections you can import in your website. Let me show you all three of them. So this was an area with three columns, but look at this. If I click on the plus, we can have a regular area. That's the one I just show you. And if you want to remove this, hover over here, click over here, then again, there's the second area. It's a specialty area. So not just one, two, three, four, or five or six rows, but it's even more advanced. So something like this. So we can have one big area over here, here a long row, and then below two small rows. 
So I can click on that. And then again, we can import stuff over here. Then it has an orange area. I almost never use this. And then there's the third one. That's full width. This is something I use sometimes. So you can have a full width header, full width image, a full width map, a portfolio, full width post title, full width post slider, and a full width slider. And if I would have a full width slider, I can also drag it on top. So I can drag this one over here. So this is the first thing people will see when they go to our website and then below they can see our three services we offer and we can have multiple sliders. We can change the background. The, we can add a video to the background. There's so much more we can do. And that's what I wanted to show you that there are regular sections, specialty sections and full width sections. Yes. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, it is finally time to talk about the interesting, appealing purple button at the bottom center of your page. What is it? What can you do with it? Which features does it hold? And um, that's what I'm about to tell you right now. Yes. Okay. Three, two, one. Let's go. Uh, I'll keep this as this for right now. And now I want to talk about this purple area. If I open that, there are so much options. First of all, we can save it. So if I would save it and I would exit the visual builder, this is the website we've created so far. This is what people will see when they enter our website. And if I want to enable the visual builder again, I click over here. There's also a shortcut for this. If I want to save it, Command or Control S. And if we want to get out of the Visual Builder, Command or Control E. And there I go. Now I'm at the page again. I enabled again. So let's talk about those options here below. I click over here. And the first thing I want to do, I want to play around with the position of this bar. Because I can also close it and then drag this to the left. Then when I open it, I see those options over here and these options over here, and then those at the right. I can drag them over here. There are a lot of places where I can put them. And if I open them, it looks like this. Oh, I like this one, but I'm used to this one, which I also like. So I prefer to leave it where it is, but it's up to you. And that's what I like about the Divi theme. Everything is so adjustable. So it's up to you. Keeping it here is great. I would maybe prefer this one, and if you do that too, hey, feel free to bring it there. So I'll keep it here and I want to go through all these other options. So right now we see the page exactly as it is. It's a visual builder. So it means that everything we create will be displayed on our website exactly as we see it. The only thing is we can click here, we can adjust it. By the way, anywhere where you click, double click. You can change the text so I can say title three. I can select this when I do that. I can underline it. I can make it bold. I can make it a quote. I can give it a different color. So that's really nice. And I can also click over here and then I go to the settings. And as I said before, we can drag this around to change all we want to change. Make it bigger, etc. So we see the website exactly as it will be shown. It's a visual builder. And if I want to see how it looks on a different device, I can click over here. Then I see how it looks on a tablet. If there's a new tablet with a bigger view, I can also change it and see how it will be shown. I can make a default, but right now 768 is the default ratio. So I can see how this will look on a different device. And then we can adjust things for the tablet and for the smartphone. And when I adjust things over here, so I bring this title to the center, for instance, then on a desktop, it's still at the left, but on the mobile, it will be in the center. So everything I change over here will overrule the settings we have for the desktop. And in that way, you can optimize your website for all devices. And if I'm finished again, command or control S, and then I save it. 
And if you want to toggle between those or switch, I can say Command or Control Plus. You see, I go to the next one, again Plus, and then I go to Mobile. I can say Command Minus, and I go to the tablet, Command Minus. I go to the desktop, look at this. If I say Command Minus again, go to this option. That means that I see an overview. I actually a little bit zoomed out. And why is that? If you want to uh, drag things around, for instance, I will uh, duplicate this area. I want to dr drag this on top. It's easier when I'm zoomed out. So that's why there's that option, which I can enter by saying command minus. If I would say command minus again, I see a frame framework. It looks overwhelming and that's okay. That will be overwhelming in the beginning. But what you see over here is actually a skeleton. If I can call it like that with uh, an overview of how everything looks. So if I take a look at this area, for instance, what I have is a section with three rows and in those rows we have modules. So if I go to the skeleton or the wireframe, how it's called, maybe better, I see the exact display over here. This is the section. In that section we have three rows and in those three rows we have three blurbs. Sometimes it can be that I want to grab something, but it's some it's it's hard to to grab it somehow. In that case, I can go to the wireframe, and then I see exactly this section, this row, this the blurb. By the way, all sections can be renamed, also removed. So here's the 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 full width slider. So I can call this one the hero. Then I can say over here the triple click the three. Services. Save it or Command S, Command Plus, Command Plus. And if I want to find something in the big website, I go to the wireframe and I see I can go to the hero or to the three services. So I can rename everything to make it easier for myself to navigate through the website. And there's this area over here. I can customize the toolbar. So the, the builder default view mode, I can say by default, I want it to be open in a tablet view. I can change the builder default interaction mode, the history state interval, and a few other options. I like the default options. If you want to adjust something, for instance, the builder interface animations, if I close this and I click over here, you see there's an animation. If I decide not to have that, I turn it off. And now if I open something, there's no animation anymore. It's up to you. I have a fast computer, fast internet connection, and a fast web hosting provider, so I'm okay with this. Show disabled module at 50% opacity, group settings into closed toggles, add placeholder content to new modules, and theme builder, template, editing. Well, I'm okay with all of these, so I keep them as they are. And then I think it's time to move towards the purple area. So what is going on over here? If I click on the plus, I can import something that's pre-made. So I can click over here, I can grab one of the pages and I can use this layout. And now it's all been imported. Look at that. I don't like it. Well, I like it, but I don't want it. So I say command or control Z and I'm back. But that's what you can do over here. Use pre-made content. You can save your layouts. I will talk about it. You can use your existing pages and import existing pages over here. So uh, that's what you can do with the plus. Then we have this icon. That means that we can save our current layout to the library. So I can say home page. I can save to Divi Cloud. Then I need to log in. And then on a different website, I can import this layout. Really handy. I can create categories. So I can say home page, home <laughs> page. I can add text, home page, hero. And I can save it to the library. And now when I click on the plus, I can go to my saved layouts. There's my homepage layout in the category homepage. I can also do it based on tags, hero, homepage. So in that way I can navigate through everything I've created and saved. Then we can start from scratch. I can click over here. I'm sure I start from scratch. And then if I want to bring back my layout, I can click on the plus. Go to my save layouts. I go for the homepage and I 
use this layout. And there it is again. Okay, I can close this and then all these options will be gone. I can open it. Then there are the settings, the page settings, really important. I, the title of this page is called home. That's okay. I can give it an excerpt, which is in my, my opinion, not necessary for pages. It's better if you use it on a blog post, but it's not a blog post. And then there's a featured image and for the homepage. I like to use my logo. This is because of the, the pre-made website we imported, the pre-made page. Uh, all the images will be stored on our web hosting provider, on our website. Okay. What else? We can do split testing. We'll talk about it later, but uh, I'm, I'm okay with everything else. So I leave it as it is. Then there's the history. If I mess things up, I can go back over here one step or two or 10 or 20 or go to the global history states. Well, you we can even take it a step further. Say command S for saving it. And then I click on edit page. And every time I save it, a new revision will be made. So I can go to revisions. Okay, I don't see the visual aspect right now, but I can go back to time. So if I messed up things today, here we see the difference. And I say, okay, 40 minutes ago, 21 minutes ago, I want to go back to this revision. I can restore this revision. Update just to make things sure. And then I click on edit with the Divi Builder. And 14 minutes ago, it looked <laughs> almost the same. So uh, it's actually the same, but let's go back a, a bit more. I go to the revisions to this one. Restore this revision, edit with the Divi Builder, and now it's empty because that was the revision. It was an empty revision. And then again, I can click on the plus, go to save layouts, bring it back. I'm giving you all this information because in the long run, in the tutorial, it will help you to navigate through the Divi Builder. So what else? Over here, we have import and export. I can export this page as a homepage. Export it. And there it goes as a JSON file. I can go to a different website and import it. Or I can import files, select JSON files, and I can replace the existing content or not. I can download a backup before importing. So I can download a backup of what I have currently. And I can also import a preset. So I can choose a file. There it is. It's not replacing this, so it should be duplicated right now. So an exact same area should be below this area. So let's see. It's all blazing fast. And now I have twice the same area. So that's what you can do, import and export. Over here, I can search. So I can search for a blurb. Go to blurb. And I go to one of these blurbs. I can also insert things. So insert and I can search over here for a blurb that will be inserted wherever I place it. So let's say uh, here. So there it goes. I can also go to a certain page. So I can say go to the contact page, even though there's no contact page with the visual builder yet, so I can find nothing. I say I don't use this often, but hey, if you get used to it, it can be beneficial. Then there are layers. It's actually the same as the wireframe, but a little bit closer. So I can open and close everything. So over here, I see the, the hero with the full slider. I see the blurb. So really easily, I can click over here and then I can adjust it. And I can also make the, the layer area bigger. So I could have this to the left area this to the right one. And then if you have a really big screen, you can work like that and navigate, but you can also get rid of this. Well, then there are shortcuts. And I uh, advise you to, to remember them by heart. First are tutorials, but I'm showing you everything. So if you want to, you can watch them. I think it's unnecessary. There are keyboard, keyboard, keyboard shortcuts. Uh, for instance, I command Z for undo. And if you're on a PC, you will see all the, the PC shortcuts. 
Save the page is one really important one. Exit the Visual Builder, Command E. Exit to the Backend Builder. And here are a few other. Here's the command plus, the command minus I use a lot. Wireframe mode, you can also do it at once. Shift WP. And there you go. I prefer to use command plus, command plus. And there are more shortcuts, copy, paste. We're going to talk about those, but uh, those were the most important ones. And again, save. So we talked about the structure, the regular section, the specialty section and the full width section. We talked about the, um, the editor. You can drag it around. You can make it bigger. You can stitch it to the left. You can make it smaller, bigger. And also here, if you change something, I say five and I don't like it. I can say command or control Z or I can click over here and then it goes back. You can close it if you adjust a lot of things. So I mess things up. I mess things up even further. If I click over here, it will be like this. If I say X, it will go back to the latest state it was before it got saved. And then we talked about these options. So with that knowledge in mind, we can start from scratch. And if you want to start from scratch, what do we need to do? Click over here, click over here. So now the question is, are you ready to start building your website using the Visual Builder from Divi? It can be that you're quite overwhelmed with all the features, with the layout, with everything, and it's perfectly fine. The more you play around with this amazing page builder, the, the easier it becomes for you to navigate through the website, through the page builder. So it is time to start for real. Everything up till now was just introduction, showing how to, to navigate and stuff. So we're going to create a hero. Not like we're going to create a hero that will be in the next movie. No, a hero is the, the first thing people will see when they enter your website. That's what we're going to create. And I will show you more and more and more through the tutorial about the Divi Visual Builder. Uh, so let's dive in and create our first hero for our website. Before we continue over here, I see that I accidentally added our work in the submenu. So in order to fix that, I go to the theme customizer. Then I go to menus. And really simple, I drag this over here. Problem solved. The great thing is when I go from the visual builder to the theme customizer and I go back, I go directly back to the theme customizer. I can build it again from scratch. So what do I want to create? I want to show on my homepage what I'm all about. I'm all about helping people by making a website for them that gets more conversions. I want to help people to showcase their company on the internet and help them to get more business. So that's what I want to state on my homepage. And this is called a hero. The first thing people will see on your website, that's called a hero. So I'll create a new area, regular with two columns. And that's the left side. I want to have some text. So I go for a text. Great. And at the right side, I want to have a gallery. So I add a gallery check. Okay. It looks weird, but we'll get to it. I close this area. I want to take a look at the background because uh, I use dark green colors in my site. So I don't want to have a light background. I want to have a dark background. In order to do that, I click over here. I go to the background. I can have a simple background color like this one, which is in the style of my website, but I prefer to have a gradient. So I can go to the second tab. So I can get rid of this one. I can also go for a background image background video, background pattern, and then background mask. All right, now I want to talk about creating a background gradient and I click on the plus and by default, these are the colors from Divi and now I can adjust those colors by clicking on them and then I select my dark color, my, my dark green color. Then I go to the second area and then the second color is this one. Perfect. Then I want to scroll down. I can change the gradient type from linear to circular. So the middle is the lighter dark, uh, green color and the outer area is the darker area. Uh, I can have something like this, but I prefer 
the linear one. Then I want to change the, the, the degree, degrees. So it, it turns around like that, as you see. I want it to be 90 degrees. So left is the lighter color and right is the darker color. Okay. I can also mix a gradient with a image. So it's going to be ugly, but I just want to illustrate to you how it works. If I upload an image, it's the background. Then I go to the background gradient and I can say, place the gradient above the background. So now you don't see it anymore. If I turn it off, then it's a mix of the two. Well, I prefer not to do that, but if you have uh, an image, for instance, I click over here, I upload a file, I select a file, I go to images tutorial, um, miscellaneous, then I go for web design 2024. I can go for student me, for instance, this image, open it, upload it. You can have an image with a background in one. Well, I prefer not to have that, but I want to show you that it is possible. Okay. Then I go back, but now this is dark. I cannot see it that well. So I go to module over here. I click on it and now I want to configure this. First, I want to make it light. So I drag it to the right so I can see the text really clear. I go to design. I go to text. And there I can change the color to white. But I'm going to use a heading. So I also go to the heading text, H1. I want to give it a style, which is white. Then I go to the content, to the text, and I start typing. And I say, we make websites that generate customers. Straight to the point. You can use AI. We're going to talk about AI later. I want it to be as straightforward as possible. We make websites generate customers. I don't want to have a really long, big text over here that can distract, distract people because people tend to not read long text anymore. So you need to be straightforward. What is your website about? Ask yourself that question out loud in the mirror while wearing a dress. No, that was really not necessary to say that. Don't wear a dress if you don't want to. Um, ask yourself the question, what is the purpose of my website? And try to put that into one sentence. So people that go to your website for the first time know immediately what you can offer them. So for me, it's we make websites that generate customers. Then I want to click over here and change it from a paragraph to heading one. And you can have only one heading one per page. And that will help Google to know what's really important. So this for me really important. We have, we make websites gen that generate customers. And that's why I call this the header one and all the other headers in the website. If I want to have a title, it needs to be heading two or three, but not heading one because you can only have one. You don't want to confuse Google, Google, because then maybe they think, Hey, let's not put this page on number one in the Google search results. I go to design to the heading text. I can make it capitals. I can change the font to something else. I prefer to use the default one because we already said it. This is Nonito Sans. I don't want to have capitals, but I want the font to be bold or even ultra bold. Okay. I can change the text to something else, but I like it to be white, but I want to highlight one word before I do that. I can change the heading text. I want it to be on two lines. Let's say 36. I can increase the letter spacing, but I'm fine with zero. I can change the line height, but I'm fine with the standard one. I say yes, or I check it. And then I click over here and I select this text. I want that to stand out. So what I do, I click on the AA that gives me the opportunity to create a color or give it a color. Okay. So that's the first thing I want to do. Then I go over here because that looks really interesting. I think it doesn't look that appealing. I want to go to the images for the gallery. I already uploaded the studio me one. And when I do something, I always upload my images with a title. Why? Because then you can be found better. So what I could should call this is this is a website where people can sell their own courses. So I could say a course website design and then 
Los Angeles because I want to be found on people that search for Los Angeles. If you leave your images as they are, you search for IMG0001, look at this, at images. You see a lot of those images, why? Because that's how they are called. So you need to rename them so you can be found. If people search for web design Los Angeles, and they go to images somehow. Look at this. They find all these images and yours can be over here. Some people tend to search through images. They click over here and there your image can be. And when they click on it, they go to your website. So always rename your images. And then we have done that. Create spaces between every word, copy the title, bring it to the alt text and paste it at the description and then say select. I want to add another one. So I click on the plus, upload files, select files, and then I go for console delivery. You can find this at number six, WebDivine console delivery. If you want to learn how to create mockups like that, go to YouTube, create a web design mockup. And there you go. There you can learn things, how to make something like that. I select them both. So there they are. Now I drag this to the left because I want to see how it looks and I want to have only one appearing at a time. So the, def the order can be default or random. I want to change the image count to one. I want to get rid of this. So I scroll down at the elements. I turn off the title and caption and turn off the pagination. I don't want to link it. So there's no link. Then I go to design to the layout. I want to change the grid to a slider. That's what I want. And F every seven seconds it changes. And if you want to change that, scroll down all the way to animation, turn on automatic animation. And then say, in my opinion, every four seconds, that's 4,000 milliseconds. So now every four seconds, the other one appears. Great. What I want, I want this text to be in the center. So vertically aligned, I want it to be here. Well, you can play around with design spacing and then top. But I prefer to make it a little bit better. And that's what brings me to the next subject, custom CSS. I just saved it using command or control S. If you want to align this, you can go to the column settings. Then you can go to design, sizing, and then you can say equalize the column heights. That should bring it to the center, but there's one small code of CSS uh, that's not there. What is CSS? Let me show you. I say command E. So I exit the builder, wait, command S, save it, and then command E. Okay, this is the website. If I say right mouse click, inspect. The whole idea of WordPress and Divi is that we don't have to create all this stuff, all this text from scratch because Divi is doing that for us and WordPress is doing that for us. And over here we see CSS codes. It looks really complicated. It can be depending on how much knowledge you have about it, but I want to keep it simple. So what I've done for you, I've created the code for you. What you need to do, you need to go to 30corp.com, hit enter. It will redirect you to my beautiful back or last name corpers hook. I want I wanted to start this channel. I wanted to call myself Trevor Sampson because I thought it would be easier, but I was afraid that I would lose my identity when I would get known, my channel would grow and I would start to consider myself to be Trevor Sampson. So I'm happy I'm Ferdy Korpshoek, but it's not the best name, but it is what it is. There's also a guy called Gary Vinderchuk and he calls himself Gary V. So I call myself Ferdy Corp, which is easier. And you don't have to type all that stuff. So you can go to tutorials, Divi, and then I scroll down until I see one of the last codes. Vertically center content. So I need to copy this code. You don't have to understand it. What it's saying actually is margin at the top should be automatic, margin at the bottom should be automatic, and that makes the content go to the center vertically. So in order to make it that happen, I need to go 
to the theme customizer. That's what I prefer. There are more places where you can more places where you can place additional CSS, but I like the one at the theme customizer. So I paste it over here and voila, it goes to the center. Okay. So now everywhere in your website where you say that you want to equalize the column heights, things will go to the center. So if I enable the visual builder and I go to the rows, design, sizing, and I turn it on, then it will be vertically aligned in the center. So that's how you do that. So, so far so good, I think. What I want to add now, I want to add a few more modules. How can we do that? You can hover over here, click on the plus, and then a module can be added below. The same over here. I can click on the plus, and if I search for a button, then I need to type it right. I can edit, great, but I want to have two buttons like that. No, not like that. I want them to be next to each other. How can I do that? Well, I will tell you in a second. First, I want to animate these or actually style them. In order to do that, I hover over them. I click on this icon and now I can change the text. Well, what I want to do, as I said, I want visitors to know what they can do over here. So when I say we make websites that generate customers, I want to show them our work. But what I also want to do, I want to give them the opportunity to get in touch. Maybe they're already convinced by what they're seeing here or what they're seeing here or over here. I always want to give them two options. If you go to apple.com, right now you only see learn more, by the way. Oh, interesting. Tomorrow there's a new keynote. Wow, this looks beautiful. But normally, <laughs> normally you should always see two options. So if I go to uh, iPhone, look, you see two options, buy or learn more. So maybe people are already convinced and they can click on buy and it's blue because Apple wants to focus on this, people to buy it. But maybe people are, people are not convinced yet. Then they can click on learn more. If you only say buy, people don't want to buy, you can lose them. But if you give them another option, then if they don't want to buy, they can click on learn more and then you can convince them to buy. So instead of spending a lot of money to hire people to, to figure this out for me, I just go to popular websites and I see they have often have two options. So our work and get in touch. Well, I really don't like this style. Blue, uh, I don't like it. So in order to style this, I click over here. And as I said before, the, the first step is the content. Well, we change the content and we can have a link. So forward slash R dash work. So when people click there, they go to the R work page over here. And then for the second one, the link will be forward slash contact. So in order to style this, I hover over here, I go to design and the first thing is I can align it. I can align it to the right, to the center, to the left or nothing and then it will automatically align to the left. I go to the text. I want it to be light because we have a dark background. And then I go to the button and I want to have a custom style for the buttons. So I can change the text size. I can make it a bit smaller. That's why I prefer 16. And I can give this a different color, but actually I like the, the white color. So I leave it with that. What else? I can give this a certain background. I can give this a yellow background or green or whatever I want. Well, I prefer not to do that. So I click here. I scroll down. What else can we do? We can change the border white width. Right now it's two pixels. You can make it <laughs> bolder, but I, I prefer two pixels, but there's also, then there's the border color. You can also change that. But I'm okay, so I bring it back. And there's the border radius. Well, I want to increase it until the point that it is a half circle. So in, when it doesn't increase anymore, I know I'm good to go. So let's say 25, just to be safe. I can increase the letter spacing. Look how easy it all is. I, I just go, I have all these options in front of me. I just have to change a few things and then I get the result I have in mind. So. Do I want to show an icon over here when I hover over it? This one, for instance, if I say no, it is gone. So this looks nice, 
But when I hover over it, I don't want it to look like this. I want to still see the, the, the border when I hover over it. So if I scroll up, look at this. There's the button text color. I can click over here on the mouse and then I get another option. This is how it looks by default, but this is how it looks when I hover over it. So now if I hover over it, I can change the background color to the green one, for instance. Oh, sorry, this is the text. So the text needs to be white, but the background, I want it to be green. Like that. But also the, the border, I want it to be there. So still two pixels, and still white when I hover over it. So all these settings are only for when I hover over it because this is selected. So if I bring it back to the desktop and I say Command S, Command E, nothing happens because we're here in the visual builder. So it's representing the website, how it will look on a real website. So Command E, now I exit the visual builder and if I hover over it, there's nothing that changes. So let me check what is going wrong. Enable the visual builder. Design. Button. So let me see. The background. Okay, so I go to the hover. Okay, if I go back to the desktop, there's also a background over here. So I know what already happened. These settings were only for uh, this era, the button text color. So what I need to do, I need to go over here. Get rid of this and then when i click on hover now i can adjust the background settings when i hover over it so that's what's what was going wrong now if i bring this back and i hover over it this happens that's exactly what i want there are many great features within the divi builder that will help us to speed up our workflow and i will show you a simple one right now but throughout the tutorial i will show you more but let me show you the first one how to copy and paste styles from one module to another one. What I can do now, I can say right mouse click, copy the module styles, then right mouse click, paste the module styles. And in that way, I save myself a lot of time. But this time, I want to have another color. I want this to stand out. I want people to get in touch with me. That's my main goal. We make websites that generate customers get in touch with us. So now I go to design of the second button. I go to the button style. By default, I want the button text color to be white, which is already the case. The background, I want it to be yellow. And I don't want it to have a border or I want it to have a border, but it needs also to be yellow like that. And when I hover over it, I want it to be green, but without the border. So here at the border, let me see. I need to go to the hover. And now the border color, when I hover over it, needs to be white. Sorry, it needs to be green. So I go back over here and now this is what I want. Okay. Have you ever heard of CSS? Cascading style sheets. I did a course in 2007 about it. Since then, I have not followed a course. I'm not a CSS guru, so I don't know a lot about it. I know a little bit about it. But what happens when we create a website using the, the Diffy Builder, we just slide things to the left or to the right, or we increase numbers or choose a certain background. And then when we save it, a CSS file has been generated by the Divi theme. This is how a CSS file looks. It can look a little bit complicated. And that's why I like that the Divi theme is doing all the hard stuff for us. But sometimes we need to help Divi a little bit with a little bit of CSS code. Well, as I said, my latest course was, 20, uh, was 16 years ago about CSS. You don't have to know or understand a lot about it, I will show you how to work with it. And I also have the codes for you. So I want to achieve a certain uh, result within the Divi theme. And I'm about, I'm about to use some CSS for that, but I will show you the codes and I will show you how to work with that. And um, so you will learn a little bit about CSS, but at the same time, I will do, I will share the codes. So I'll kind of do the hard stuff for you. But uh, yeah, without talking more about this, like blah, 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 and this and that and CSS and 16 years ago, Let's dive right in and show you how to put two buttons next to each other using a little bit of CSS. Now I want those two buttons to be next to each other. Well, also for that, I need to have a code. So let me show you. Again, we go to 30corp.com. 
and to tutorials, Divi, scroll down. And it's the latest one, I think, or the one before. Two buttons side by side. So, okay, what is happening over here? There are some settings from Divi. And it says actually when this will be applied to a certain area in the website, to a button, the display will be inline block. An inline block means that the modules will be next to each other instead of on top of each other. So again, I go from the visual builder to the theme customizer. Then I go to additional CSS. I paste the code and now I need to assign this button or this area to this, to this code. So I need to copy this code, publish it. That's another word for saving it. And now when I assign this text to this area, then the CSS will be applied. Maybe you don't understand it at once. That's okay. We're going to talk a bit more about CSS, but what we need to do now, it's just like my car. I don't know exactly how it works, but I like to drive it. I go to the row settings to advanced and then at CSS ID and classes here at the class, I need to paste this PA dash inline dash buttons. So now they're next to each other. Awesome. Well, I don't like it that there's no space. So I go to the second button to design. Then I go to spacing and then at margin, uncheck this or sorry, check, uncheck it. So at the left, I say, let's say 14 pixels. Okay. And now I go to the text over here to design and then here at spacing at the margin button, I want to increase or decrease it. And when I do that, it all comes really close to each other or well, I don't need to decrease it, but I can give it a custom height. So six pixels is fine with me. So what we have now is a beautiful hero over here. People can show what I'm, what I'm capable to do. We have the text and we have two call to actions. Uh, if I save it and I say, Command E. I can see how it looks. Great. Well, there's a lot of space over here. Maybe I want this image to be bigger. If I want to do that, I enable the visual builder. Then I can click over here and I can change it to, let's see, this one. So this area is a bit less wide less width and the other one more. So in that way, the images here are a bit bigger and I can also adjust it manually like that. What I also can do, I can increase the size just like that. It's so easy to do that just like that. Or if I want to be more precise, I go to the settings over here to design spacing. And that's what I just did over here. I want to Give it 110 pixels above and 110 pixels below. So it looks like this. We're going to talk about the, the heading, the header later, and we can make this transparent. So the background is behind this header. And then when we scroll, we get another header, which is really cool to do. But right now I'm happy with this. What I can do, what I prefer to do, I go over here to the section settings. Then I go to design and I go to dividers. If I go to the bottom divider, look at this. There are a lot of different dividers I can choose. So I can choose something like that. And that gives your website a cool look. So I can bring it over here. I can create something like that. And you see the result immediately. That's what I love about this front page editor. You can see the results at once. Well, I prefer to keep it clean, not to have a lot of different stuff. This is a little bit too much for me, but I'm looking for a gentle divider. This one. Okay. Then I can change the height of the divider. I can change the color. And I think this is fine. The color. I want it to be white because below I'm going to create a white area. And then um, I'm actually quite happy with how it looks. 
I can say command S or control S, command E. And this is how it looks right now. If I click here, I go to the our work page. Of course, we're going to create that. Get in touch, contact page. So I'm really happy what we've created so far. I hope you are too. I see those arrows. I don't want them. So I enable the visual builder. And sometimes I, I hope they will change it in the future, but you need to use custom CSS to get rid of a few things. So over here, I see that animation arrow in order to go to the next one. Also here, um, bullets, you don't see them right now. But um, I would prefer that if I click over here, I go to the settings over here, I can remove the bullets or the arrows. Well, in some cases, it's just not the case yet. So let me show you what you can do in order to solve problems in Divi. In this case, search for Divi Gallery, remove arrows and bullets. And then there's the first one, DiviBooster.com. I see this code. Copy it. What I can do, I can check if it works. So I can click on the dots, go to the settings of the, the page, go to advanced, custom CSS and paste it. So right now I see an arrow over here. If I paste it, it's gone and the bullets are also gone. So let me get rid of this. I see the bullets over here, really light. So I paste it, they're gone. So I know it works. I get rid of it again. Command S. Now I know it works. So I use the same code. I go to the theme customizer from within the visual builder. And again, I see them right now. I see it over here. Now if I paste it, it is gone. I publish it. I close it. And now I'm back in the visual builder and it is gone. So sometimes there's a workaround. I have a lot of um, stuff over here, but if you want to search something custom, you just don't see the solution, just search on it on Google and you should be fine. So one more thing, I like to have a few animations. So for instance, this button over here. So I click, I go to design and here below animation, I can make it slide in from a small area. I can make it bounce, roll. And again, when it comes to things like these, I never see something like this on a website of Apple or Tesla.com. So I prefer to have it simple. So make it fade and then I can uh, change it over here, How uh, the, change the settings. But what I prefer even more is slide. So right now it slides from the center. I prefer to slide it from the left, uh, excuse me, uh, the right. So slide to the right. It's in some uh, page builders, it's from the right. So that's where the confusion comes from. Okay. And what I can do now, I can also give it uh, the change the duration. Right now it's one second, but I also can delay it. So I can say when the page loads after a half second, then it goes, comes from the left and then over here. And let me, oh, wait a minute. Yeah, let me make it float again. Even make it smaller if I want to. I go to design with the get in touch area. Animation, slide in, but this time towards the left after 0.7 on the 50 milliseconds. So first this one, then this one. And then after one second, design, animation. See, the longer you play around with it, the easier it becomes to navigate. This one also towards the left after one second. So how will that look? Command S, Command E, one, two, three. And if I think this goes too fast, I enable the visual builder. I click over here, go to design, animation, and I make it two seconds, an animation of two seconds. Command S, Command E, I like that. Well, that's way too slow. So uh, that's how I, I roll, play around. What I also can do, I can save it and then refresh it over here. So I don't have to open and exit the visual builder all the time. So uh, I go to design animation, say 
1250 seconds, command S, and then I just refresh the page, command R or F5, and now I see this is how I like it. So, so far so good. We're still going to take a look at how it will look on different devices. That's really important because most of the viewers from your website will probably come from different devices than a desktop. So it's really important to optimize it. We'll take a look at that later. I think it's time to take a look at the second area. Are you having fun? I hope so. I hope you enjoy learning all this stuff. If you have a question, feel free to leave a comment. Uh, please consider or just not consider, but just please like this video or you can consider it. It would help me out a lot. The more likes I get, I think the better my video will be found. And if you want to learn more about WordPress, uh, feel free to subscribe to this YouTube channel. And now we're going to create a second area where I want to display a few features about my company. I will display three. You can display four or two. I will show you how to do that. And throughout everything we are about to do, you will learn more and more about Divi. And you'll see that it becomes easier to navigate through the website. So are you ready? I guess because you're in front of the computer or maybe you want to have a coffee or popcorn. But if you have popcorn, then your fingers get salty unless you use sweet popcorn, but then your fingers get, I don't know, but um, and that's not the best thing for the keyboard. So uh, choose wisely what you're going to consume or consume nothing or only consume my knowledge. Wow, that's deep. <laughs> I've become emotional. Okay, let's continue. So I click on the plus over here. I go for a regular area with three things that say something about our company. And what I want to use for that is a blurb. Blurb. There you go. So by default, that has an image, a title, and a text. You can also use an icon, and that's exactly what I want to use. But meanwhile, I also want to show you more about what is possible using this module and using the Divi Visual Builder, because it's not going to look like this at all. We're going to make it look different. So the title, I want to say three things about my company. Maybe you want to show four things or two. That's both possible. I will show you how I start with the first one. And the third thing I want to say about my company is we listen. We really listen to what the client wants. So there's the text, the title, we listen, and then I can write a text. You can use AI for this. Um, I also use Grammarly. If you want to know more about Grammarly, you can go to ferdycorp.com forward slash Grammarly. Or you go to YouTube and you search for Grammarly Ferdy. There's a tutorial already three years old, but still works. Until this day, I should make a new one, even though it's still working. And then it can help you to do change words and stuff and uh, to correct errors. So I want to use an icon instead of an image. So I click on use icon still at the content area and I search for a bulb, a light bulb. And I prefer to have colored ones in, instead of the outline. I like to have the colored ones. So there it is. Then I want to go to design, go to image and icon. The icon color, I want it to be orange. And the background, I want it to be greenish, but this is not what I have in mind. So um, I want to place it at the left. Okay. I want to have rounded corners, but right now I first want to create some padding because right now there's uh, no padding at all. So let's see. I can create padding with a, with a border, but I prefer not to do that. I want to take a look at the image icon padding. So I turn this on. Let's say 12. I want it to be a square. And the interesting thing, the interesting thing is I need to, it cannot all be 12 because then it's not a square anymore. So I need to do this manually. So that's how I do it. And then I scroll up again because now I want to add a rounded area, rounded uh, corner. And I increase it until it's perfectly round. And I see it's not perfectly round. So what I need to do, I need to go to the padding, the top and the border, or I, I decrease it or I increase it. And I also increase the side, the left and the right area until I think it's a perfect square. Mm. 
Yes. Okay, we listen. I can also click here and then I directly go to the right part in the in the editor over here. I want to make it bold. We listen uh, and I click over, click over here and then I want to make the text a bit smaller. Yes. Okay. I go to the settings over here and now I can duplicate it and duplicate it. Get rid of the other two. Bam. That's how I can do things. Now I want to change the title over here to we think along. Now I also want to change the text over here. Then I want to go to the image and icon and change it to shake hands. Something like that. Problem is now that it's not a circle anymore. So then I need to play around with that. I can do that um, at design. Image and icon. So I can make the icon smaller. And then play around with the, the top and bottom. And then over here. I wish uh, Diffy would make this easier. Just make it a square always. So let's put this to 40. It's not a, a circle. It's still a bit bigger. So let's see. Okay. Then the third one, change the title. We are fast. I want to deliver my websites really fast. So I can say something about that. Okay, so something with uh, with time would be great, or clock. Okay, then again, I need to play around over here. And I also can search for a CSS code to always make this a square. Let's see. I think it can be a bit smaller. Okay, a bit bigger. Okay, and then again over here. Okay. So we're not there yet because what I want to do now, I want to click over here at, at the column area, go to design spacing. I want to bring this halfway way over this nice divider. So I go to the margin and then minus. Look at this. Now it's getting really cool in my opinion. I hope you do. And if you like this video, then please like it. It would help me out a lot. The only thing is there is no background over here. So it looks, it looks really ugly. Let's keep it with minus 150 for me. Uh, maybe for you, there are different settings and I go to the content column one background and make it white and I go to design of column one spacing. Let's see how much I want to increase this. Let's say 22. Also 22 over here. Okay. Then I go to the border. I want to increase the radius like that 16. And I want to have a shadow. We have not talked about shadows yet, but there's a box shadow for every, every element. There's a shadow and you can see at once how it will look. There's also an, an inner shadow or shadow like this. I like this one all the way around. And then over here we can adjust it. So and you can change the colors and stuff. I like this preset, so I keep it with this, but you can adjust those settings. And always bring it back if you don't like it. So you can reset it again. Okay. That looks great in my opinion. 
And what I can do now, I can say right mouse click, copy the item styles, paste the item styles and paste the item styles. So the, the content will be the same, but the, the, the style will be adjusted. Well, there's a lot of space over here and it's exactly in between those uh, three dividers. So there's one row, a second row or one column. So there, okay, <laughs> there's one row and in those row, you can have multiple columns. So what I can do, I can go, hover over here, go to design, to sizing, and then say change the custom gutter width. So this is the gutter width. It's three. I can adjust it to two or to one. I prefer two. Only one small problem. Uh, I prefer to have everything in the same height and uh, width. And I like to have everything in three lines. So here it's perfect. Here's perfect. Here's not. So, or I need to, to do something about the text or about the padding. So let me show you what I mean. If I click over here, sorry, sorry, sorry. If I click over here on the second column, I go to design spacing. What does it take? Okay, 18. So let's make this all 18. What can we do now? Go to the columns, second column, copy the item styles, paste it on the first one and the third one. And that's how we roll. And that's how we created the second area. And I think it looks great. There's only one thing now that since we push this above, this is vertically not perfect in the center anymore. We can change it manually doing this. So we see it's in the center or we go over here and do it also manually, but now with the numbers over here, you can even measure it. I have on the Mac shift command three or that's an image Sorry, shift command four. So I see it's around 110 pixels and then also here 140. So what I can do. I can or increase this and then decrease this a bit. Shift command four, 26, 126 and okay. It's a little bit less. And th this is how I work. It's not a perfect way. It's not the best way. It's just how I like to work and for me, this works. You can also make a screenshot, open it in Photoshop and then try to measure it. Uh, for me, this works. So what we've done so far uh, using the Divi Builder, we created one area with two columns. We brought this vertically to the center. We made sure that we could have inline buttons next to each other. We used a slider, a text. We highlighted something and below that uh, we used a divider. And then below we had three columns, copied and pasted the style, changed the content, played around with the, the icon, brought it up gave it a background with a shadow and uh, now it looks like this. So I hope you're happy so far. I am. And it's time to continue with the third area within our website here below. So I save it. Command E, just take a look. Animations. And then I see, oh, wait, let's do one more thing. So I enable the visual editor ad again. Remember that after 1.25 seconds, this will appear. So if I go over here, I go to design. Let's see if the background goes with us. If we, if I create an animation, so I slide it. No, it does not happen. So I bring it back. So I go to the columns, to this area, design of this column. And then I want to animate the whole column. Otherwise the background doesn't go with us. So I say slide. Yes. To the top. Let's slide to the top. That will be a great name for a song. Slide to the top. You were enough up. Hey, the better key. Slide to the top. Who knows? If uh, YouTube stops, then I can always pursue a different career. Career. Yeah, why not? So um, after 1500 seconds, this one appears. Then I go back to the second one, animation, slide to the 
top after 1750. By the way, I can also only use this copy animation styles. And then the third one, go to design, right mouse click, paste the animation styles. And now we already have those settings. The only thing I have to change is make it two seconds. And I think this one, the second one should be one seventy five. Wait, one seven five zero. Yes. Command S or control S on the PC. Command or control E. There it goes. The button, the second one. Wow. Awesome. Thank you for still being here. Thank you for following this tutorial. That means a lot to me. I do my best to create great tutorials. And now we're going to take a look at the third part. Okay. 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 Hear me out. Okay. I have an idea. We're going to create another section. So we need to enable the visual builder. And we're going to create a relative easy part. So um, we click on the plus. I want to tell something more about my company. So I want to create a regular area with two columns equally, equally divided. And I want to start with a gallery. So I click over here and I want to add a few images. And if you want to use the same images, it's these are stock images. You need to go to ferdicorp.com forward slash I stock hit enter. You can get a, um, how is it called? A, um, subscription and then you can have 100 images per month for a certain amount of money. So I log in. So I search for business meeting smile and I see these images over here so I can get them. And if you would open this in an incognito window so I can see how much it costs, maybe it's only part of the subscription. I can download it for free. It says you can have a few for free. So feel free to test it out. And then you can see all those images and I will use them. So um, I think stock images, they can cost some money, but first impressions counts. And of course, in this case, it's maybe you should use images of your own company to show real images. Uh, in this case, I use these images over here. They have the same style, so it comes across like it's um, genuine. If they're all different companies, different styles, then it can look a little bit weird. But um, these are for a demo purpose only because this is, of course, not my company. But if you have images from your company, definitely use them over here. And it, it, it shows some professionality. And I optimize them all. So over here, I say Los Angeles Web Design, Web Design Agency, California, Web Design Agency. So use your keywords in your photos. So I select them all. First one holding shift, the latest one open. There they go. And again, click on them, get rid of the titles, paste, paste, second one, copy, paste, paste. And if you have a lot of images, what you even can do, you can copy this. And if you have all those dashes, you can go to the text editor, create a new document, paste it here, and then go to file. Let's see, where is it? Edit. Find and replace, and then find a dash and replace it with a space, and then all. Then I copy it, paste it, paste it, paste it. I go to the next one, copy this, go to the text editor. Sometimes I have just weird ways on now I can change things and hey, it's working for me. So maybe it also works for you. But I only would do this if I have a lot of images because right now it's faster to do it like this. You have to do this only once, so maybe it's not fun to do, but it's important. Paste and paste. And I select them all. They are still selected. So I select them. There they go. I prefer not to use a random order because I want to be in charge of how I display my images. Maybe I want to bring a certain order. So first this one, we have a meeting. Then we talk together. We sit with the client. We talk about the results. Etc. We do some preparations. Maybe you have a certain order, and then in that case, don't use uh, a random order. The image count, I prefer to place one with the elements. I say the same thing. 
no, no title and caption and stuff. Then layout, change it back to a slider. And I prefer to have all the, the same height and width for your images. Uh, otherwise, um, your whole page um, shifts. Let me show you in a minute what I mean by that. Automatic animation. Okay, let's let's put it on one second so it slides really fast. Wow, did you see that? One millisecond. What? So they're all the same size. If I would not have that, look at this. Uh, I will add one image in between. Which will be my logo, which has a different height or a different aspect ratio. Look at this. Okay, okay. One, two. Okay, it's doing a great job. But if my image will be higher, then it will be a problem. So keep that in mind. Um, okay, I want to use the same background as I do over here. So click over here. Right mouse click on the background. Copy the background. Ferdy, are you kidding me? No, I'm not kidding you. This is really possible. Ferdy, that's amazing. Yes, I understand. I, I totally agree. So that's how easy that is. Now I can go over here. I want to add a text module. And then I want to add a text. Well, I already have the text. This is a heading two. And this is some information about my company. Then I go to design heading text. I want it to be H2. So for the, all the H2 text, I can create a certain style, make it orange, for instance. I can even make it capitalized and stuff. But uh, since I'm working with low, lower, um, no capitals, I prefer to only have a capital at the beginning of my sentence. Otherwise, I would have a capital at the beginning of every word. And then I go to the text and I want it to be white. And I want it to be a bit, can be bigger. Okay. So far, so good. What can help you to be found on the internet is to highlight certain words, keywords, or phrases. Well, I want to be found on my company name, Web Divine. So I can, wait a minute, I can select it. I can make it bold, and that will help you. And what I found out is that this, there's a glitch over here. If I say bold, it becomes underlined. You see that? So there's a glitch. Uh, before in the tutorial, I said if you click on the AA, the color will change. Well, I need to click here, of course. I make it this color. So there's a glitch. I hope when you follow this tutorial, the glitch is gone. I want to highlight a web divine, Los Angeles, command B, and click on the color. It's working this time. And then there's one sentence. Nothing has to be done, but everything is possible. Can make it bold, command B, and now it's having that glitch again. Or not? I don't know. But I hope uh, when you watch this, it will be gone. I save it, so everything stays in the style of the website, and that's what I like. Then I'm going to create a new area. I want to show you more ab about what is possible, and I hope by now you're you're comfortable navigating through the Divi Builder. I click on the plus. Now I want to have a regular area with one row or one column. And I want to have a text with a simple title that says awards we have one. Make it a heading two. Go to design want to bring it to the center. Make it this color. Why is it not going? Of course, I need to select H2. There you go. And then in this area or below this area, within the section, I want to have a new row. So I can have multiple rows in a section. So I click on the, the green plus, and now I want to have four columns. And in every column, I want to have an image represents one of the awards I won. So I have them on my desktop those four, but um, I cannot use these. Uh, I cannot share these images, but what I can do, if you click on upload files, select files. If you go to the images tutorial area, home, will we work for, you can use these 
if you want to follow along. The only thing is I cannot share those images. So I select the first one, then I can go to the, let me see, to the settings here. I can get rid of everything else. So now I have four of those and what I will do, I click on over here and I change it to the second one. Then I change it to the third one. And I change it to the fourth one. It can be if you have different images with different sizes that those sizes do not really match. I think this does not look that appealing. First, I want to make use of the design sizing equalize column height stuff. So this looks better. I want to bring everything a bit closer. So if I go to this row structure, design, spacing, margin, zero, zero, padding, zero, zero. So everything comes a bit closer and I want this to be smaller. Well, I can go over here, go to design, sizing and in decrease it like that. That's one way to do it. Or I can also do it with pixels. So I say 600 pixels. I prefer pixels because when you go for a percentage, uh, depending on the size of the, the computer screen, things will change. I prefer to have everything uh, pixel perfect. I want to make the, the, the bigger images smaller. So I go over here to design, sizing, and then I can change the, the width to percentage. But again, let's say pixels. And I need to figure out how big. So I think 90 is okay. What I can do now, I can copy the style and paste it here. This one can be bigger. So I go to design sizing and increase it again until I think, okay, now it's matching. And then I can go to the columns to design sizing and I can use a custom gutter width. So there's less space or more space between everything. Actually, I think three is great. So I'm happy with this. And then we're going to create a next area. As you probably know by now, we're going to create another section, but this time I want to show you a bit more about what is possible when it comes to styling. Of course, we can create content and give it a color, but we can also do more. So in this section, I want to talk more about the, the, the things you can do in order to style your website. Regular. I want to go for one row with a text. So the text will be, there will be two texts, two lines. What we are really good at. Then I hit enter and I say, this is what we do. So I select the first line and I make it a heading three. And the second line, I make it a heading four. Now I go to design. Let me scroll down so I can see what's going on over here. If I go back to content, I can bring it to the center, but I also can do that at design. So I go to the text and I bring it to the center. Great. Then I go to the heading text. First one, H3. Okay. What I want to do, I want to have a background. So you know what? I will duplicate this module. Then I remove the second line. Then I scroll down and I go to background. I want to give it this background like that. I want to go to design heading text H3. I want to change the text to white and bold. You know, ultra bold. Then I want to go to sizing, change it to 300 pixels. Like that. Bring it to the center. And now it's spacing, padding. I can increase the size around it. So that's what I actually, actually like. Um, I want to use a dark background. So I go over here. Copy the background, 
over here. Paste the right mouse click. Copy the section styles. Right mouse click. Paste the section styles. So what we're really good at, and then below, get rid of this. This is what we do. I can also change it to a heading three. Design heading text H3. Make it white. This is what we do. Make it bold and a bit bigger. Then I go to this module, design, spacing, below. Yes. Okay, below that, I want to show four things that we're really good at and what we do. So I click on the plus. And this time I want to have four columns. Then I go for an icon. There you go. I want it to be a fingerprint. I'm going to talk about branding. That's something we're good at. Okay, at design. I want the icon to be white. No background. I want to decrease the size. Align it to the left. Okay, below that. Click on the plus. I want to have a text with the four things I offer. So zero one, enter, branding, and then a list of the things I brand. So I do a brand scan, shift enter. So it stays in the same paragraph. Branding strategy. And I do logo and branding or logo design. Over here, the zero one, I want it to be having three. And branding, I want it to be heading two. Now I go to design, text. I want it to be white. There you go. I go for the heading H2. Of course, I also want it to be white. And then the H3, I want it to be yellow and smaller. So I make it um, bold. But a bit smaller. Okay, then I want to take a look at the line height. Bring it back to zero. Then I want the H3 to be even smaller. It's not about the number, it's about branding. And this is how I'm actually happy with this, how it looks. Then I can go to the columns, remove them. Duplicate the first one. And now it's a matter of finding the right icons and filling in the right information. So I will fast forward and show you what I will change. Okay, click over here. Design, sizing, use custom gutter. But I'm okay. What I like to do. Sizing, make it smaller, bring it a bit closer. So I can say um, 700 pixels, make it 800 and then change the icons. Awesome. I'm happy with this. So what else? I click on the plus, I want to show some numbers. So I go for a regular area. Let's start with one column because I'm uh, all the time duplicating them. And I go for a counter, not a circle counter, but a number counter. I can have a title, websites made. How many are there? Well, I can tell you more than 430. So I say 430 plus. Or I just say 430. Then I go to elements and get rid of the percentage sign. At design, I go for the number. I want to change it, of course, to the number of my, the, the color of my website. Website is made. The, the text, I can make it smaller, bigger, but I'm okay. Maybe a bit smaller. Now I can go over here, 
duplicate it a few times. Then I go to the second one. Years of experience, 23, like I say, plus. And the third one, how many employees? 12. And how many awards have we won? Four so far. Awesome. Did you know that you can turn a section into a global section? If you did not know that, now you know. What does it mean? If I have a certain area in my website that I want to use on multiple places, I can turn it into a global section. Then if I place that global section on multiple places in my website, I can adjust one of those uh, areas and then all of these areas will be changed at once. So I will make a call to action and maybe later on in the tutorial, if I've placed it on three places in the website, I want to adjust the color of the button. If I adjust it in the global color, it will be adjusted on all three places within the website and that will save you time. So let me show you how to create a global section in your Divi website. Now I want to create an area that I want to save and use on multiple places in the website. So I add a new section, regular with one column or one row. I want to start with a text and I call the, the title reach out to us. Again, I want to make this dark. So copy the section styles and paste. Okay, it's not working like that. Paste the section styles and bring it down again. A few glitches, but there are always ways to, to work around it. Again, I go over here, reach out to us. That can be in H2. I can go to design, heading text, bring it to the center. Let's see, H2. Bring it to the center. Make it orange. What I like to do now, I like to have a separator. But if I take a look over here, I want to click on the plus. And if I cannot click on the plus, then I can go to the wireframe. And then over here, I can click on the plus. So that's how you can use it. Or you can go to the layers, to the latest one, text. And I can duplicate it, or I can add a new one. Well, I'm searching for a separator. or a divider like that show the divider so how does it look okay it doesn't need to have a link the line color i want it to be this color solid on top and i go to sizing the weight so how how bold should it be two pixels is fine for me the width how about 250 pixels maybe 200, I want it to be smaller than this text. I want to bring it to the center. I can take a look at the spacing, how much space do I want to have, but right now it seems to be fine. Again, I cannot see the, the, the plus, so I can go to the layers, section, row, column, click on the plus, go for a new text. And I want to type a text. There it goes. I go to design. The font is okay. I want to bring it or give it uh, a light color. Bring it to the center. Then I want to go to spacing. Oh, sorry, sizing. And I say, uh, how about 600 pixels? And bring it to the center. And how about a little bit less? Yes. Then I want to have a button, click on the plus button or what I can do, duplicate this one, select it, scroll down and release it over here. Then I go to design, alignment, bring it to the center and 
then I want to have a section border. So I go to design border. I want to have a border only at the bottom of two pixels, which is, and it's orange like that. So I like it. Command S. Then before I save it, I want to see how it looks. Or you know what? I'll save it and then I'll show you how I can change it later. So this area, I can click over here, save the section to the library. And I call this one CTA contact form. So call to action for to reach out or contact. Save as global, that means I can place it on multiple places in the website, but when I change it on one place, it will also be changed on other places. That's what I really like. I can have categories, CTAs, CTA. Save to the library. Awesome, now it becomes green because if I change it over here, it will also be changed somewhere else. So if I would exit the visual builder, and I go to the about page. And I enable the visual builder. And I choose a pre-made layout. And I go to my saved layouts. There are no results. My existing pages, the home page. Okay. Well, then I will not use this. But what I want to do. Click on the plus. Add from the library. There's my CTA contact. And I want to use this section. There it is. Now, if I would save this color, I go to design button, make it the text, make the text uh, okay dark. Let's do something more significant. So the background. Now it's green. I save it. I exit the visual builder. So now I'm here at the about page. It is green. If I click over here and I scroll down all the way, it's also green. If I enable the visual builder, I scroll down all the way, I click over here, I go to design, animation, none. Okay, let me bring the color back, background. I save it. Command E. About now it's also yellow and it's not flying in anymore. So that's a global area. We can use this on multiple places in the website. And when we change it on one place, it will also be changed on other places. So what I want to do now, make this a bit bigger. And bold. Save. Exit, home page. That's also bold. So I think this looks great. We have made this page. I think it looks amazing. We're going to optimize it for the other devices later when we created the other pages. So we have created a complete website from scratch using the Divi theme. So I hope by now you're a little bit familiar with, with how to work with the Divi theme. Uh, still, it still becomes easier. The, the, the more you practice, the more you play around with it, the easier it becomes. Uh, of course, we're going to optimize our website or page for all devices. We'll do that later. Right now, I want to show you a different way on how to build a page. I will show you how you can import one of the hundreds of Diffy pre-made templates. And I will show you how you can adjust those pages in a relatively short amount of time. So you can uh, save time and make every page in the style of your website. So I will show you a few cool tricks on how to save some time. Don't we all want to save time? I think we do. So I should not talk more about this and just get straight to the content. Let's go and import a pre-made website and adjust it really fast. What I want to show you now is how to import a pre-made template and show you a lot of tips and tricks in order to speed up your workflow. I go to the about page and we already pasted something there. So I enable the visual builder. For now, I'll get rid of this. So I want to start from scratch. 
And I can click on the three dots, click on the plus, and then I want to go for the favorites. And I like this one. I can choose any page. I want to hover over here. I can scroll. See how it looks. I like it, but it's not in the style of our website. But I will show you a few ways on how to make it in the style of your website, how to adjust it. So I use this layout. It can take uh, five to ten minutes, depending on um, the weather. No, it will take around five till ten seconds. So there it goes. And there it is. Awesome. Of course, I save it. Command S. So a few things we can do. Up until this point, we have worked with the colors we have chosen for our website. I showed you how to choose certain colors for your website, uh, branding colors, and then use those. But you can also work with global colors. And if you use global colors and you decide later on that you want to change those global colors, all those colors that are used in your website using global colors are changed. I think it's better if I show you how it works. We can work with global colors. Right now we work with colors we use all the time in our website. But besides that, the default colors, we can also use global colors. Let me show you. I click on the section settings. I go to the background. And over here, I can select one of the colors of my website. Or I go to global colors and use this color. Click on the plus. You do not see it immediately, but it's there. So if I would check this, save it, and I would go back to the background, gradient, and then the color, and then the global colors, it's there. I can also go for another color and click on the plus. Let's go back, see if it's there. Yes, two global colors. So the first one is the orange one. The second one, I want it to be the red one. Great. If I would go to this button, I click over here, I go to design button, and I decide that the background should have the global color orange. And the border should also have the global color orange. So now three parts, the, the border, the button background, and then this area of the background have that orange color. Now, if I go to that color, I go to the global color and I decide to change this color to something else. Look at that. Everywhere it is changed. Why is it also changed over there? Because I'm working with text right now. So that looks better. So that means wherever the, on the page you change those colors. So if I would go over here, go to design, heading text, and I go to the color, global color, orange. If I decide change this, to change this color to purple, yes, and I go to the red color, and I decide to change it to dark blue. Yes, that means that all those colors now are changed. So if you want to use global colors, you can do that. And in that way, later on, it's really easy for you to change the look and feel of the style of your website. So that's what you can do with global colors. I personally do not use it, but hey, you can use it. So what else can we do? Well, since we're working with those colors, I can click over here. You know what? No, I don't want to work with those colors. I go to the background, color one, green one, color two, color next to that. I change the gradient direction to 90. Um, and then also over here, I prefer to go to design button, use this color, sorry, white text, but the background like that. I want to get rid of that glow around it. So I scroll down and I go to the box shadow and I say no. So I like this style. If I want to speed up my workflow, I can 
copy the module styles. Then I can scroll down. And over here, I see a button. I say right mouse click, paste the module styles. So now it's changed. I can also say Command Z, Control Z. So you know what? Right mouse click, extend the button styles. So now I can extend it throughout the page, the section, the row, or the column. If I say the page and I extend it, that means that this color will be used on all the buttons on this page, as you see. That can save you some time. So you can do that with everything. So if I see this color over here, I don't have to go to Photoshop. I want to change those colors to a bit greenish or maybe orange. I don't have to go to Photoshop, upload it again. Now I can go to design, filters. I can change the hue to something that is more orange or something that's greenish. Oh, I prefer orange. It's a tricky one to find orange. It's just to make my point over here, what you can do. Okay. Right mouse click. I can extend the filter styles to all images on this page. So right now there's an image over here and here and here. If I say extend, look at this. Now they're all in the new filter style. So that's how you can save time. I see this color over here. And that color has nothing to do with the color that I want to use on my website. If I scroll down to the other dark areas, also here, it's purplish. Here, I don't want that. What I prefer is it to be white. So I can go to design, text, or I can click over here. So I go directly to the right place. And I can say right mouse click, find and replace. And I change it to white in this section, in this column, text settings, all text settings. So if I replace it, it has become white over here, but also over here and over here. So let me show you another example, this greenish color. I go to design, image icon, find a replace over here. I can do it only within this section, replace. So it will only be changed over here, but I see, I thought I saw the same color somewhere else. So I can say that all these purple colors should be replaced in the website. So I go to design, or I click here, find a replace. all modules and I change it with this one. There you go. Okay. We're getting closer and closer to the result I want to have. Right mouse click, copy the section styles and for every dark background, I want to paste the section styles. Paste the section styles. Okay, then there's this color over here from the divider. Design the line. I can change this to orange. And then I can say extend line color to all dividers on this page. And now orange, orange, orange. Again, oh, 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 wait, wait, wait. Oh man, there are multiple ways to do things. I can hold shift, select, 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 select. I select eight modules in one time. I, I click on one of the icons. Now, if I change something over here, the body text, for instance, it's changed everywhere. If I go to the icon, I go to the filter of the icon. I change them all at once. So that is how you 
can save a lot of time. Again, the text, find and replace with this text. Copy. Paste module styles. What you also can do, there's so much more. I like this style. I want to use it all the time. But now when I create a new button, it looks like this in the Divi style. So what I prefer, right mouse click, apply styles to active preset. Yes, I'm sure. So now if I create a new button anywhere in the website, by default, it looks like this. Oh, is that a time saver? Yes, it is. So that is how we can relatively fast adjust the styles in our website and speed up the workflow. Okay, but now let's make a real about us page so you can learn more about the Diffy Builder. I remove this page and start from scratch using an area with one row. I want to have a text in it and maybe I can get, go a bit faster because by now you should be able to know a bit how to work with the Divi Builder. So I want to have a title, the about page. I want it to be heading one. Then I go to the section settings, to the background, go for a gradient. And by now I think you know which color I will choose. The green one and the dark one and put it to 90 degrees. Then I go to text design or I can hover over here. Bring it, make it a uh, white, bring it to the center. Then I want to go back to the section, create a divider, sorry, a design dividers at the bottom. And I want to have the same one actually as on the homepage. Or I can do that manually like this, bring this to 50 and flip it. Then I can go to layout and then to <laughs> spacing. That's what I meant. Let's say 50 or a hundred. So far, so good. Then I want to have um, kind of a next level area. Not super next level, but I just want to show you what I'm about to do. I create a new section with two columns, one bigger column at the left, like that. And I want to have an image over there. I grab the image. I used it before. You can use an image you have. I upload the image. I go to design to border. I give these, this image rounded corners like that. Then I want to have a new section below that, regular, but now the other way around. Small area at the left, a bigger area at the right, and I want to have nothing over here. But over here, I want to have a text. If you want to find dummy text, go to dummy text generator. And there you can say a few things. You can have 200 words, a few paragraphs. So I can copy this and if I use this text, nobody can sue me for using their text. This is kind of copyright free text. Okay. I want to give it a title about, and that will be heading two. Click over here and I'm okay with it. Then I want to have a few areas that I want to uh, highlight, choose a color, orange, bold and orange, bold and orange. So what I want to do now, look at this. 
I want to go to the section. I want to go to design, spacing. Say, say, say every, put everything. Wait a minute. On zero over here, 20, 20, 20, and 20. Now I want to change the section advanced position to absolute. Now it will be placed on top of everything. And here at the right, I can drag it down. Like that. Then I want to go to the background over here, below the text, make it white, go to design, spacing, and here I want to say 20, 20, 20, and 20. Then I want to go to the border and also say 20. Like that. Drag it up a bit. And now you have the, this cool effect. Can get rid of this. Okay, then I want to show something about my, my team, all the people that work uh, in my company. Let's save it. So I click on the plus regular. And then again, I want to have a column with three. I want to have a row with three columns. I want to go for a person. The name goes here while I'm talking about Andy, of course, or actually 30. Andy, he is the real CEO. I'm not. I'm just pretend, pretending to be. He has a Facebook URL, a Twitter or X URL, and LinkedIn. Again, I can play some text over here about our amazing. CEO, and then it will look like this. So how about an image? I go to the image and I have a few images again from iStock photo, James, Dwight, Michael, Jim, and Andy. I don't know if that sounds familiar. If it does, I'm happy for you. And I'm going for Andy. Okay. Meanwhile, I go to the background. And I copy the section styles, which is probably including this area below. I don't want that. So I go to design, divider, bottom, none. So over here, I want to have this, uh, to, I want this to have a white background. So I okay, to go to content, background, make it white, but I want to have some space over here. Well, I can figure out with you how to get it. I will do so. I exit the visual builder. I can do a right mouse click here, inspect. And then go up until I see the whole area covered over here. Then I can copy this class, copy. I can go to the theme customizer. I also give you the code, but if you want to follow along, you could say point, paste, opening parentheses, closing, and then mar, no, 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 padding, 20 pixels. And there you go. Now there's a nice edge around it. And if you want to get that code, go to 30 corpershookcom to tutorials, Divi. Then you can find that code over here. So, so far, so good. I like to give this a nice color. So I go to the visual builder, scroll down, click over here, click on Andy. I want to go for this color, make it a bit more bold. And the line height change it to zero. Let's see. Okay. 
then I want to go to the CO part. I want to make it bold and green and increase the line height. And then I want to go to the text, make it almost black and then to the icons over here, make them green. And if I'm like, I don't want them, then I can go to the text, get rid of this link of this one, of this one, and then they're gone. Now I go to the columns, I can duplicate it. And I can also duplicate this. Get rid of this one. And now it's a matter of changing the information. So I can go over here, call this one gym, go to the image, and I go for gym, etc. This is Michael Web developer. So let me fast forward. So there you have it, the team. So I think it looks great. I think we accomplished something great by creating this amazing page. Now, before we continue, actually we do continue, but we do continue with uh, this part. I want to talk about this color over here. As I said before, we're going to create a beautiful custom made header using the Divi Visual Builder. But right now I'm just using this, but I want to get rid of this color. Why is this blue? Because it's the active page. So if I go to our work, that becomes blue because that is the active page. So in order to adjust that color, go to the theme customizer, then go to header and navigation, primary menu bar, and then there's a active link color. And I use this one. I click away. And over here also, I want this to be the same color. Perfect. Then I go back. Back, I go to general settings. And if it's not the case yet, go to layout settings. And here, change the theme accent color also to this one. Publish and close. Do you like parties? Maybe you do, maybe you don't. Well, I have a party for you. It's called the copy and paste party. We will create a new page, but in that page, I will use a lot of elements we all have already created. And then I will change the style and I'll show you how you can create pages relatively fast. It's all about speed optimization. As long as you keep the quality of the content and the, the style of your website. So I will show you how to create a website fast by copying, pasting and adjusting. What I want to do now, I want to go to the services page and I want to have a copy and paste party to show you how fast you can work. So what I will do, I hold command or control on the PC. So I go to the homepage and I enable the visual builder. Now I go to the service page. I'm already there and I enable the visual builder. So I have the page builder enabled on both pages. I start from scratch. Okay, what I want to do, you know what? I hold the command and I exit the visual builder. So I, I go to the about page and I enable the visual builder again. So I have three pages open with the page builder. I want to copy this whole area. How can I do that? Right mouse click, copy section, and then I go to the services page, right mouse click, and I paste the section. I remove this one and I remove this one. And then I go to the home page and I'm like, Hey, I want to copy this area. So I go to this row, copy the row. And I go over here, right mouse click, paste the row, get rid of this. Awesome. I drag this on top and then I say services. Go to design, spacing, zero. Okay. 
Then I want to go for a text. I go to design text and I make it light. I bring it to the center and I go to sizing, make it 600 pixels. I scroll down and I do a module alignment center. So in a short amount of time with a little bit of copy and pasting, I created this part. What else? If I go to the homepage, there's this area, this really nice area. I want to copy it, but I don't want to use it exactly the same as it is used over here. So I open this new area, regular, choose anything. And then again, I paste it. Sometimes you don't see it. You need to save it, command or control S. So again, right mouse click, copy row. Maybe also save it over here, save it. And then right mouse click, paste the row. I see nothing, almost nothing because the text is white. So what I will do over here, well, that's okay. I want to go to the row settings and I go to the column. The background of that column will be green. Okay, then I go to the design of that column. I go for a border that is 20 pixels. Then I go to spacing. I want to have 20, 20, 20, and 20. Awesome. I copy the style or I extend the item styles to throughout this section or this row. There it goes. Then I get rid of all the icons. So it looks different than over here. And we did it in a relative short amount of time. I don't like it that this text is uh, in two lines. So I go over here again to design to sizing. And I bring this back from 800 to nothing. So it will be the width of the website. Great. If I want to, I can create a new section or over here. I copy this whole section. Let's save it. Right mouse click. Copy the section. Save it over here. Right mouse click. Paste section. And then below it's there. Okay, but this time I want the background to be white. So I go to the overlay. Or even better, the light color. There's a light blue color, this one or light green, I want to use that color. Then I want to go to design. I want to have some something in between here. So I go to border, border styles, top. I go for three pixels and orange, nice. Then I copy this module. I paste it over here. Let me scroll down a bit. So I paste the module. And now having this opened, I can hover over here. I can change this color to something dark. So first we have branding. Then I want to have a text. There you go. And over here, I have a bit of text. I don't want to use it here. Command X. Okay. But here I do want to use it. So here below I paste it. And the, these could be links to uh, individual links. So uh, a page about uh, two individual pages. So a link about the brand scan, branding strategy and the logo design. But I'm okay with how, how things are going over here at design at spacing at the bottom. I can turn that thing to something pixel perfect. I don't want to have this um, slider, so I remove it. I want to have one image. So I type it in and I grab this image. And I go to the design of the image and at border, I say 20. Then if I want to, I can have a button here below. 
and then it's in the same style as I decide it to be. So I can um, call this one branding. So what else? I can now duplicate this. But now, look at this. I want to have this image at the right and this stuff at the left. So I can drag it all around or I go to the row settings and change them like that. Of course, I need to adjust the information. So here it is. Web design. I can have a different text so I can um, go over here. Copy this. Paste over here. Make it bold. And then link this to the page called web design. Of course, you can have a different image over here. Now I can duplicate this one. Okay. I drag this down here below. So I've left an image, right an image left an image and then I say number three. Etc. So I will fast forward. Okay, and then here below I can add from the library and there's my call to action. I want to use it in the section. There it goes. Reach out to us. So we have created this page with copying and pasting and in that way we can save a lot of time. So it looks like this. Another thing we can do to speed up our workflow is using the Divi Cloud. You can go to ferdicorp.com forward slash Divi Cloud. You can watch this video if you want to, you don't have to. You can get it here, but there's also a free version. Here's how you can um, buy this, but it's uh, it's also there's a, a free trial. So what you need to do, if you want to save something and use it on a different website you made with Divi, you can click over here on this particular section, for instance, and you can save it to the library, or you can save it to Divi Cloud. And if you save it to Divi Cloud, you can use it on all the websites you have made with Divi. You can also do that for the complete page. Click over here, save it to Divi Cloud. So let's start with this one. Click over here, save to Divi Cloud. I can call this one services with hello text background. Save to Divi Cloud. You can have categories, heroes, tag, hero, save to Divi Cloud can be that you need to log in. I say command S. I close this. Now I go to another website and I exit the visual builder, save and exit. I want to enable the visual builder. I start from scratch, close this. Now I want to click on the plus and import something from Divi Cloud but I need to sign in again. So I need to sign in with the same account I used, of course, when I exported this. Now it failed, so I need to go back. I go to my saved layouts, and then over here, I see mine, I can click on it, and there you go, now we've imported it to our new website using Divi Cloud. Within the whole copy and pasting party, there's another option. You can clone pages and then adjust them. So let me show you right now how to clone pages and adjust the look and feel and the content. We have made of the pre-made templates from Divi and now I want to talk about cloning a page. So I have the services page over here, I want to clone that page. So I go to another page, the branding page and I enable the visual builder and then it asks me build it from scratch, use a pre-made template or clone an existing page. So I choose the page and it's the service page. So I click over here, I use this layout And now over here, I don't want to duplicate it. 
but I want to actually double click and adjust the text. Let me do it this way. Branding. And then I can say something. Branding is the motor of your business. Wow. Wow. That hits me right in the heart. I don't need this. So I remove this. I don't need those images. So I want to talk a bit more about what I do with branding. So the first thing I do is a brand scan. And I go over here, get rid of this and this. And the second thing I do is a brand strategy session. The third thing I do is creating a logo. And I get rid of this and this. There's no fourth option or fourth uh, subservice. So, command S. And that's how I clone a page and adjusted it in a few minutes. Only here I want to get rid of the, the top border. That's it. And maybe this looks weird, but if your text would be a bit bigger, I think it would look also look better. And if you want to, you can add images over here that support what you're saying over here. So that is how you can make use of the cloning page feature. And now, ladies and gentlemen, it is time to create a contact page. And again, we're going to show you new things on what you can do within the Divi theme. So let's get started with that. I skipped those two. We're going to talk about those, but I want to go to the contact page and show you how to create a contact page within Divi. So I enable the visual builder and I go to the first option and build it from scratch. I close this. I save it. Command S, Control S. Then I hold Command on Exit Visual Builder. I go to the About page, enable the Visual Builder. Copy the section, paste the section, and over here I say contact. So right now I want to go to the section design dividers and I want to change the bottom color to blue, which you see over here. And I create a new area, regular with two columns. And over here I place a form contact form and over here I want to have a text. So I say web divine LC, enter my address. Okay. And I say, this is okay. I duplicate it. I click over here Then I want to go for LLC. Shift enter the vet ID. And my IBAN for my bank account. Okay. And in between, I click on the plus. I want to have a blurb. And then I go to image. Use an icon. I go for mail. Choose that one. So, so far, not so good. So what I will do, I will start to adjust it step by step. So first, I want to go to the background of this area. Let me save it. I click over here. Then I go to the background of the second column. So I click on this icon. Then I go to the background and I want it to be dark. Awesome. Then I go back. 
I go to the first column. I want to make the background white. Now I want to go to the section background and I want to make it that light blue. Great. I go to the text design. Text. Make the text color light. Let me see, extend the text color to all text in this row. There you go. I go over here, get rid of the body text. Then I say over here, info at divi5.com. Then I want to go to design image and icon. Change the color to the orange one. Icon placement at the left. Then I want to make the icon smaller. Let's say 20. Then I want to go to the text color. Title text. Make it white. Make it smaller. Like that. Then I want to align it a bit more vertically. So the line height. Like that. And then the, the width, the spacing. It's a weird trick. Spacing. Sorry, I mean the, the sizing. I bring the width to the left. To 0%. So it comes a bit closer. Okay. Then I go to spacing. And at the left, I say at what the uh, padding 20 pixels. Come back over here to design, go to spacing. And here I say 20 everywhere. Except bottom, by the way. And at bottom margin, I say zero. And then I can increase it a bit. Let's say 10. Then I go to the content or, or I hover over here. Uh, wait, no, no, content. And then I change this to H1. And I bring this to H2. Bring it to the center, make it white, make it a bit bigger. So we have H2 here and then here H1. I think the H1 can be a bit smaller. And I want it to be orange. So we're getting closer to the result I have in mind. I want to duplicate this twice. Okay. Over here. I want to say HTTPS divi5.com. I go to the image icon and I change it to address. And then the third one, my phone number. I go to the icon and search for a phone. There you go. Then add spacing. How about zero here, zero here, zero here, and zero here. And then I say extend margin to all blurbs in this row. Okay, now it comes closer. Am I happy with it? I think the, the icon can be a bit smaller. And then with that, okay, first extend on this row. So now they're all smaller. And if I want to, I can go to the to the text and change the line height. And also extend it. 
throughout this row. Great. Then I go over here, design, spacing, and I say 20, 20, 20, and 20. And then I can go back to design and at the top I can say 10. Awesome. Over here, if you want to learn how to create a form, you can go to YouTube, search for Divi form. And there you have it. It's a 52 minute tutorial because you can become uh, really good in this and then make advanced forms. So I don't want to talk about it too much because you can learn everything about that. Uh, let me fast forward and, and make a, a form that's okay. Okay, then I go to this uh, element design. I go for spacing and I say 20, tab 20. Okay. If I want to, I can click on the plus for a text area. I can say um, reach out to us H2. Drag it over there and also give this uh, spacing of 20, tap 20, tap 20 and tap 20. Even that's a lot, so at the bottom, nothing. So here at the bottom, nothing. Okay. Now I want to stitch those together. So I go to the row settings, design sizing, use custom gutter width and I want it to be zero. So they're next to each other. I want to equalize the column heights and then it will be brought to the center, the rows, then to the second column, design. And then at spacing, I want to link those and look at this. I want this to be aligned. So if I want to see it better, I can also make this orange for a moment or black and I go back to the row, second column, design, spacing and I can increase it until it matches perfectly. Okay, then I do this times two, so that's 100. 84. So I say 0, 1, 84. Uncheck this and then 0. Let's see. 85. Perfect. So what I will do over here, and by the way, if I want to, I can also go back, go to design sizing and bring it to 600 pixels. How about 800 pixels? Okay. So it's better to work with uh, with pixel perfect sizes over here. And I can go to the columns. It's, it's a workaround. I would prefer that automatically this will be filled up, but that's not the case. So I go to spacing again. until it lines up perfectly. Okay, still at the second column with this background, I go to the border, uncheck this, and then here I say 20, and then here I say 20. Then I go to the first column, design, border, uncheck this, and then I say here, 20, and 20. And then for the mobile, we can make it look different, which is nice. So I'm happy with this. Of course, I bring the background back to the light blue color. And that is how you can create a contact page where people can reach out. And if you want to, you can have a more in-depth form and then more information about my company. Let me save it. Command E. It can be that you just want to import the complete website. Of course, it's fun to learn Divi, but maybe like, hey, I just want to get the job done 
give me the website. Let's get it over with. Well, if that's the case, let me show you how you can download this website for free with all the pages and a few templates so you can um, skip some time and have a great end result and then adjust it and save a lot of time. I already said it, save a lot of time, skip a lot of time. Let's skip the rest of this uh, talk about importing the website. Let's get started. If you want to import this complete website, I have good news for you because you can do that. You can go to divi.ferdicorp.com, hit enter. And if you sign up over here, your first name, and your email address, you can get the templates. You can unsubscribe at any time. And if you don't, I send you an email when I have a new Divi related tutorial. So when you have signed up, you go to this page, you see this beautiful image over here. You can download the complete website by clicking here. There you go. Web Define Divi. I unpack it. I see all those JSON files. And now I go to a new website, in my case, divi4.com. I log in. And it's uh, yeah, quite an empty website. I'll get rid of all the pages. The only page. <laughs> and I can go to the theme customizer, to menus. And I already shown you how to create a menu. So I'll fast forward. I will create my main menu, bring it to the primary menu, and I start adding pages. Scroll down, home page, home page settings. I select the home page. It's the home page. If I want to change this logo, I go to the back end to Divi theme options. And over here, I can upload a logo. I'll do that from the folder images tutorial, which you also have if you want to number six web divine 2024 logo. Let's do both uh, the logo and the logo white. And I go for the normal logo. Okay, so far so good. And the first page, the home page, enable the visual builder. I can start from scratch. Click over here, click on this icon, import, select files, and I go to my downloads. And I go to the home page. I had to get rid of all the images uh, which I bought because I don't want to do anything illegal. I replace the existing content and I click on import the Divi Builder layout. Okay. I save it. Then I exit the Visual Builder. I go to the About page, enable the Visual Builder, and I will do the same thing with all pages. So again, I will fast forward. Okay, so far so good. I go to the back end. Then I go to Divi, Divi Library, Import and Export. I want to click on Import. Then I continue with. Let me see the footer. Then the header, header main, and heading two. One more import, choose a file. And I go for the blog post. The blog post is a blog post layout. So it decides the look and feel of how the blog post will be displayed. Look and feel of how the blog post will be displayed. Wow. Okay. I go to Divi, theme builder, global header from the library, my saved layouts. And I go for the main header, use this layout. Then I go for a global footer from the library, save layouts, footer, use this layout. Okay, then for the contact page, add from a library. 
What's happening here? Wait. Okay, I build a new template for a specific page, the contact page. Create a template. Then I go and remove the global header. And I add a custom header. I can do two ways. I can add it from the library. So header two. Or I can open it from scratch and then import it as I did before. So right now, if I would go to the home page, it will look like this. If I go to the contact page, right now I scroll down, it looks like this. But if I go to the contact page, it appears like that. Well, there are a few things we can uh, fix. We'll do that in a minute. So that's how it works. And then again, I click over here. I go for that's from the library. Sometimes that doesn't work. So I prefer build a new template for all posts. And then I go for a custom body. That's from the library. And now it does work. Blog post layout. Unfortunately, we don't have any blog posts, so we cannot see the results. If we take a look at the website again, you see not everything is working out as I want. Why? Because here at the theme customizer, we don't have all the options we have configured and especially we don't have all the CSS. So in order to get that, we click over here, import, choose a file, and then web define Divi theme settings. Open, import, and now magically, this looks great. This is next to each other. Now the day is saved thanks to the Power Puff Girls. There are no blog posts yet, no portfolio, but you can add those items yourself. And you know by now, I have tutorials about that at ferdicorp.com. And then tutorials Divi. There, I talk more about creating a header from scratch, portfolio, blog, footer, scroll effect, split testing, responsive design, Divi AI. So, in a short amount of time, we have created this website. These links are blue. Let me see in customizer. Maybe it's a, a cache, caching setting because I think. Here it's good and it says theme accent color accent so yeah it's already working so that's how you can import a website for free in a relative short amount of time did you know that more than 50 percent of the visitors of your website will view your website through a device like a tablet or a smartphone well that means that's really up to well that means that's really up well, that means that it's really important to optimize your website for all devices. That's what we're about to do right now. By default, Divi is not doing the best job in my opinion. Maybe that will be updated soon and it will become better. But right now, you need to do quite a few things and I will show you step by step how you can do that. So making your website responsive within the Divi theme is something else. I think they should make it easier. But I'll show you how to do it. It's not always the, 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 the how do you say that? The right solution, but it works. So as long as visibility, uh, visibi visually, visually, hey, I found a word. It looks good. I'm okay with it, but I think it should be done better. They're working on Divi 5. I hope they will make this easier, but, um, even though it's a bit harder, the learning curve is a bit bigger. I'm here with you to show you how to do it. So I enable the visual builder. And by default, Divi is not doing the best job in optimizing your website for all devices. So if I click on the tablet or command or control plus, this is how it looks. There's quite some things we need to do in order to make it look better. So over here, for instance, I can go to the module. Then I need to hover over here at body, take a look at the tablet view. And then at the tablet view, I bring it to the center. I see it looks okay now, but this doesn't look good. So what I will do, I will click over here. 
in this area, our work. I go to design, spacing, and this is maybe yeah, not the best way I should do it, but since Vivi has to increase their possibilities to optimize the website for all devices, this is, in my opinion, the best way to do it. So we're here at the, the tablet view, and then I go to the margin left, and I increase this until it's in the center. When I do this, by default, the mobile view takes over the, this, these settings. So if I go to the phone view, now everything looks weird. So at the phone view, I need to bring this back to zero and then do this again until I think it fits. But what I see over here with the text, it's not perfectly in the center. So I go to the module again, to design, spacing, then I go to the mobile view and bring everything to zero. And now you see it is in the center. So spacing. Okay. Let's go back to the tablet view because I think this image is way too big for the tablet view. So I go to design. Let me see uh, sizing. Then I hover over here. Sometimes I need to click a few times before I see it. I want to see something like this. But then it, there it is. Tablet view. Now it's in percentage. I can also say 300 pixels. That's a bit too small. So let's say 400. I'm okay with that. And then also here, make sure the tablet is selected. Bring it to the center. Okay. Then this doesn't seem to be in the center. Seem to be. So I go to spacing again over here. And again, to set everything to zero. Better. Except for the bottom. I want to bring this a bit closer. Then I go over here. Design. Spacing. Bring it closer to the center. Same. Uh, I think this is in the center, so I'm happy with that. So what I can do, I can increase the, the space over here for the tablet. What I also can do, I can save it. Then I can go to the theme customizer. Then I can go to the mobile styles. And for a tablet, there are a few settings. So I can change the section height by default. Let me show you here. So there's more space over here. So you can increase that, decrease it. I think this is great. Also the row height, change it. So there's more space between all the rows. I don't need that. The body text size. So by default, it looks like this. I can make it bigger. And then you see it becomes bigger. And then they have that text size. I can also make that bigger, but I'm also, let's see. Yeah, that's okay. Okay, so by default, I can adjust those settings and then there's mobile for the menu. I see this color. I don't want that. I want to have this color for the menu fully opaque. The background color, that's fine. Publish. Close it. Okay, and now I am back in the visual builder. I go or command plus and somehow I need to bring this to the center again. So 
over here, for instance, I don't like it. I want this to be smaller. So what I can do, I can click over here, go to design, to spacing, make sure, sorry, uh, sizing. And then here at the width, click on the tablet view. And then I prefer to work with pixels. So I would say 600 pixels. 500, 400, so I make it 500 and I go to spacing and for the tablet, inc decrease this a bit. So it's a bit uh, even. Okay. Over here, this is on the desktop at the, the left and this at the right. But on a tablet and on a mobile, I first want to have the text and then I want to have the image. How can I do that? I go to the row and the settings, advanced, custom, CSS, and then here the main element only for the tablet. I can say flex dash and then direction. It will auto complete. Column, reverse semicolon display enter and then flex so now you see this is first how cool is that so i go to this element and then design spacing for the mobile or sorry tablet the bottom i want to increase the space to 20 pixels Okay, I think this is all too big. So I go to design, sizing, and then over here is what I mean. Sometimes it takes a bit for the tablet. I decrease it and for the tablet, I bring it to the center, check. Over here, maybe it's okay. This one is not. So design, sizing, wait a second. Here's the first one, here's the second one. Decrease it. Also here, make sure it's selected tablet. Otherwise it will be done everywhere. Also on the, on the desktop. There should be a better workaround, but uh, at this moment it's not there. As you can hear, I'm not that excited about this part, even though we can work around it, but this should be done much easier, especially knowing that optimizing your website is so important. So actually every page that should, that is made with a Divi should automatically be quite responsive. And in this, at this moment, it's not the case yet. Maybe when you watch this tutorial, it is, I hope so. Tablet view, smaller. Tablet view center. Okay. Look at this. This is this is so stupid. <laughs> I, I like the Divi theme, but I don't like the, the optimization for the mobile and the tablet. So again, here at sizing for the tablet. This is a percentage. So I prefer to say 400 pixels. It's not exactly in the center. So I go to spacing the tablet and then left like that. Then for a mobile that doesn't work. So I say zero and then start again. Show it like that, and then here below, everything looks great from the start. So, here reach out to us, that looks good. If you want to click over here, design spacing, bring it a bit closer. Okay, so this is how it looks now. 
on a tablet. And this is how it looks on the mobile. I think this is a glitch. This will work fine. This will also probably work fine. And if not, let's see, we go to the settings of the column, design, spacing, or even better, maybe uh, the sizing. Just increase it until you think that looks great. What I prefer is to keep some space here at the left and at the right. So we're not there yet, not yet, not yet, not yet. We're getting there, let's say 300. Nice. This looks great. This looks great. I think by default it's already good. So uh, this is great. 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 So that's what you can do now with all the pages. And of course, we can go through all the pages in this tutorial, but it will take a long time. And your website can be different than mine, unless you follow exactly all the steps I took. So if you did that, you can go to my tutorial about CSS and responsive design. Go to Ferdy Corp. Let's show you FerdyCorp.com. Hit enter. Then go to Tutorials Divi. Scroll down and search for responsive design. An in-depth tutorial on how to optimize your website. We're going to take a look at more uh, cases and what you can do in every case. So your website will be optimized for all devices. Now it is time to create the portfolio page, also known as the cases page or the artwork page. You can choose whatever you want to choose. Um, all those titles uh, mean the same thing. You can showcase on the page what you've done for clients in the past, and that way you can convince people to do business with you. So let me show you how to create that page using the Divi Builder. And this is the portfolio we're going to create. So I have a lot of um, portfolio items. I can filter them like that. If I click on one, I can display a gallery or a video. I can navigate through the images. And then here below, we can see related work. And depending on the, the portfolio item, the category, so this is all photography, but if I would go to our work and then films and go to a video, then all the related ones are also a video. So we're going to use the Divi Visual Builder to create a beautiful portfolio for our website. So right now I have a link over here, our work. And that's where I want to place my portfolio. Well, you see nothing yet. So what I will do, I will create my first portfolio item by going to new project. The title of my first portfolio item is wedding of Leah and Daniel. So I can publish it and I can watch it. I hold command to open it in the new tab. This is how it looks. It doesn't look that appealing and we're going to make it look so much better using the Divi Builder. So before we do that, over here at the right, I want to go to categories and I want to create two categories. The first one is photography. That's one of the categories, one of the services I offer. And the second one is a sub item. It's called wedding photography. Photography. So I want to have a parent category, which is photography. I select them both. I can also have tags, wedding, Wedding, photography, Netherlands. Then I want to have a featured image. And if you want to follow along in the tutorial, you can use images I use. So you can go to upload files, select files, then go to the desktop or to the place where you have downloaded and unpacked my zip file with the images. Then go to portfolio, photography, Daniel and Leah. I renamed all the images because I want to be found on Family Shoot Westland, Group Shoot in the Westland, Love Shoot in the Westland. So when people search for that on the internet, my images can appear in the search results. So when I say Command A, open, so they will all be uploaded. And the best thing you can do is click over here, 
remove the dash, copy the title, place it in the alt text and in the description. Same you can do over here with all the images you upload. And that will help you to be found. Well, I can only use one featured image. So I choose this one, set the featured image, and then I am okay with everything else. Update. And now it's time to take a look at the Divi Builder. So first, I want to create a title. I start from scratch. I want to have a row with one column. And in that, I want to have a text like that. And I scroll down and I want to get rid of this. Click on this icon. And I want to go for the project archive title. So it will be fetched and it's the wedding of Daniel and Leah. Okay, then I go to design, text. I want to bring it to the center. I want to make it light. Now I don't see it anymore, but if I go to the section settings over here, I go to the background, I go for a background gradient with two colors. This color, the green one, and the second one is this dark one. And I want to scroll down and change the gradient direction to 90. Great. Then I want to go back to the text. I go to design text. This area is just normal text. I can change the color, of course. I can make it a bit bigger. I can make it uppercase if I want to, but I'm okay with that. Uh, what I do want to do, I want to go to the section to design and I want to go to divider button color white and then I choose this one again make it white change the height that's what I prefer okay and you can go to spacing I can say you know what I want to have a bit more spacing 50, 50, how about 80 and 80? And I want the text to be a bit bigger. So I go to design text 26. Okay, now this is about photography. So I want to have a new section over here, regular, like this. And I want to go for a gallery. I want to show the photos I've taken on that wedding. By default, I see a few images. So I add photos to the gallery and I go for the first one, hold shift and the latest one. And I select them all. Okay. I can change the order. So that they started with this dress. The sister was also getting married and the photo shoot. Now the preparations dancing is at the end. So in that way, I like to, uh, Give it the right order. Okay. I can also make it a random order if you want that. The image counts. Right now we see four. I want to have at least 30 or at the most. Then I go to elements. Do I want to show the title? No. Do I want to show the pagination? No. And I also don't want to link it. I go to design, layout. Then I go to the grid. I can also change it to a slider. So I can navigate through the images. But I prefer to have a grid. I can have a uh, landscape or a portray. I prefer landscape because most of my images are in landscape. Overlay, if I hover over it, what should appear? Well, I don't want to sh show the icon. So I do want to show a small overlay, but not like this or um, less transparent. A really small, you see a little bit that I'm hovering, hovering over the area. Okay, everything else, of course, I can create a border if I want to. But I see no reason why I should do that. So I don't do it. What else uh, we can go to animation, make it fade in like that. So now I go to the row settings to design. Sizing, I want to change the gutter width. That's the space in between. Bring that to nothing. 
because that's what I prefer. Command S. I can exit the Visual Builder in a new tab or holding command. There it goes. If I click on it, I can navigate through all the images. Really nice. Okay, what else? I go over here. I want to duplicate this area. Bring it down by holding it like that. Releasing it over here. And I click over here. I go to design dividers button. And I say, I want to have none of it over here. I change this. Maybe I can change it to something else. But I prefer to say related work. Okay. Awesome. So below, I click on the plus, regular, this area. I want to go for a portfolio. I want to show four posts and only show the current category. So the category that's on this page, which is photography and wedding photography, only those will be shown over here. The elements, I want to have the text, but I don't need to have the categories or the pagination. I go to design layout and I change it to a grid. Like that. And then at the text, I want it to be centered like that. Okay. And then this whole section, there's a lot of space. So at spacing, I say zero and zero and zero and zero. How about we increase it a bit over here and we decrease it a bit over here. Okay, so far, so good. I want to save this as a template, but before I do, let me save it. And let's see how it looks on a different device. Really important. So I click over here. Perfect. And on a tablet. Also perfect. So that's really nice. Now I can save it by clicking over here. So I click on the blue, the white dots on the blue background. Click over here and I call this layout portfolio or our work portfolio page. Why not? Save to the library. Okay. Now I can exit the visual builder, save and exit. And now I can create a new portfolio item. So I go to project. I can say, Montana, easy and this, it's a flower. Let's see, that's correct. Prairie gentian. Okay. Now I want to go for a new category, which it's called, it's called films. No subcategories, subcategories, and I can say over here, films, add, and then a featured image. I go to my folder, to the portfolio, film, Montana, and then there's the image I want to use, set featured image, publish, look at this, I can do two things. I can, uh, by using the Divi Builder, I can import a pre-made template or I can just say clone an existing page and choose this one, use this layout. And automatically the title will be fetched like that. The only thing is, um, uh, this is not what I want to show. So I close this, I click on the plus, I want to go for a video. There you go. Click over here, go to insert from URL. Then I go to my desktop to portfolio film Montana. Click over here and I want to go for the video with sound, copy it, paste it here, insert the video. And I can even go to design sizing, say 600 pixels, 
align it to the center. I save it. Then I can create a new project. And this one is Jaylee Cosmetics. I go for web design, copy it, add it as a category, and also as a tag. Featured image, upload files. I go to web design, Jaylee Cosmetics. And remember, I need to optimize this by copying this, pasting it, pasting it, set the featured image, publish, publish. And then I want to use the Divi Builder. And again, I want to clone an existing page, which is this one. Then I want to get rid of the video element. I want to go for an image. I want to use the same image, which I just uploaded with a link to the actual website. Open it in a new tab. Related work. Okay. So far, so good. So I exit the Visual Builder. We have three pro projects. I go to our work and what do we see? Nothing. So let's configure the portfolio page or the our work page or the project page. Before I edit this, I want to go to one of the portfolio items by going to projects, all Jaylee Cosmetics. I edit it with the Divi Builder. Right mouse click, copy, exit the Visual Builder, go to our work, enable the Visual Builder. And I build it from scratch, close this and then right mouse click, paste the section, it goes our work. So that's great. Uh, I click on the plus regular this area and I search for a filterable portfolio. And there it goes. I go to the tab design layout and I change it to grid. Okay. Now I go to content. Let's walk through these options. I have four categories. So if I click here, I only see film, photography, web design, and again, Wedding photography over here. I only want to display films, photography and web design. My main three categories, no subcategories. So I can turn it off by not selecting it. Do I want to show the title? Yes. Do I want to show the category? Yes. Do I want to show Peggy Nation? No. Okay. Then I go to design layout uh, as we decided before. It's a grid. The overlay. I don't want to have the icon. I do, however, want to have a small overlay color. The image is fine with me. Again, we can have borders and stuff. The text, I want to align to the center. Also this text, that's what I prefer. Uh, dark is okay, the color. The title text, I can uh, change the color if I want to, but uh, I'm fine. Filter criteria text. How should it be displayed? So the color, I can uh, make this the, the 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 color that is selected. So I'm okay with that. And there's the meta text over here. I can make it green. Uh, I'm okay with this. Imagination text. Well, I don't use that, and all that other stuff. I don't need that. So this is how it looks. Um, if I go to all, this is how it looks. So what I will do now, I will fast forward or be back with you when I upload, uh, let's see, six more portfolio items. So you can see how it can look. So I added a few more portfolio items. I go to films, photography, Web design. Well, by default, it's not possible to change this to three columns instead of four, but we can do that with a bit of CSS. Uh, first, 
if I go to wedding photography, I see wedding Daniel and Leah. It looks like this related work. I can increase the, the padding over here and I should add a title. If I click over and I can go back to our work, I can go to films, watch one of the videos and I see the other related work. And again, I need to fix that. So what I can do. I should just go here. Design spacing. Or even better, go to the whole section. Design spacing. Because here it looks a bit different than on the actual screen. That's why I uh, did it. Now it looks perfect. And I should uh, change the hover. But um, this is how our portfolio looks like. And if it looks like, and if I want to go for web design, Jaylee Cosmetics, and I can click over here and I can go to the website. Perfection. Our work. So let's talk about changing this to three columns. Now I go to Google and I search for Divi three rows in filter filterable portfolio. Okay, Divi plugins. Let's see. Okay, I can copy this code. And it says in our example, we added the following class three column grid to our module. So first I go to the theme customizer. I place the code. Then let me see, I go for the three column grid. I copy the title, publish, close. So I need to sign, assign this area to a class, which is called three, let me see, three column grid. So in order to do that, I go over here to the module, advanced, CSS, classes, and I paste it. There you go. That is the way the cookie crumbles. Now we're using with uh, CSS, so I don't want to mess things around, but let's see what we can do. I don't know if I mess things up, but if I go to layout, or sorry, uh, to the row. Design sizing. Use color width. No, that's not working anymore. Uh, I'm not the best um, CSS guru, but let's see. Let's see what the code what the code is saying. I can see the result immediately. So I can go to the additional CSS. Okay. The width, the margin, point seven point five percent. If I would change this to five, to five, I see no changes yet. If I would say 10 pixels and 10 pixels, and zero pixels and zero pixels. Close this. Yes. Okay. Now this is less, but there's a small problem now because everything is aligned to the left. So I can go back to the theme customizer. And by the way, I did not see the real life uh, example. I don't know why. That's what I prefer. So now I can play around with 31%. And since I don't see the result, I go to the V5. Paste it here. And this is how I work sometimes, just playing around. Okay. Uh, here it starts, so it will probably finish over here. So let's try 32. So my mouse is over here on the edge. If I refresh this, Command R, I see it's working. Okay. I think if I say 33, there is a small chance it overlaps yeah and that things will get weird so let's say 33 percent 
Okay, let's say 32%. Okay, let's say 30 32.5%. I need to get it as close to the line as possible. Six. I'm happy with this. So I decided to have a 10 pixel gap. And if I would change that, I prefer 20. <laughs> so uh, where is it? 20, 20. Then I also need to play around uh, probably with, um, with the percentage. Yes, like that. So I close this. I go back to the theme customizer. Then I need to go back and play around with those settings. If I would say zero, would it fit? Yes. If I would say two, no. If I would say one, No, so let's keep it with 32%. Then um, it looks like this. And I want to go back to the theme customizer because I want to see how it looks on a different device. Great. And great. How about? Let me see. This is a glitch. If I go for this one, okay, I go for the tablet. We saw that already. It looks great, except for the, the, the part where I have to increase some padding and change the overlay. So that, ladies and gentlemen, is how you create a portfolio and then you can go to the homepage, enable the visual builder, And then over here, click on the plus, I go for a new area and I go for portfolio. I go for all categories, post count four, design, layout, grid. Okay. Then I go to one of the portfolio items, enable the visual builder. I bet I can do probably is weight, right mouse click, copy module, right mouse click, weight, weight, paste the module, remove this one, and then over here, show all categories and the overlay. Nothing and black like that. And then on top plus you can say text R work make it H2. Hover over here, click on it. And go bring it to the center and drag it on top. And that is the way the cookie crumbles. Later in the tutorial, we're going to use the Divi Builder to create an amazing blog page that shows all our blog posts. And we can style the individual blog post page pages. But right now I want to show you how to write a blog post yourself and we're going to dive deep. A thing I want to say is that uh, the recording is made almost a year ago. Why? Because I wanted to see if the things I teach really work. So I created a few blog posts. Uh, I show you, I record how I create a blog post and I made a lot of money with it already. So it works. 
So we do, we do research, we install analytics, we optimize our website for the search engines uh, using rank math. So what you're about to see is um, an amazing piece of content, but it's made almost a year ago and I'm using a different theme, but it doesn't matter because we're going to make use of the WordPress editor. The WordPress editor is in my opinion, the best editor to create blog posts. It's super intuitive. I'm going to show you exactly how it works to create amazing blog posts. So um, that's also why you see that my studio will be a little bit different. That's what I want to say up front. Uh, the content is great. The things I will teach you, I know that they work because I see my results. So that's what I want to tell you before you think, hey, why is the studio different? Why does Ferdy look different? So uh, let me show you the Ferdy from a year ago. It's almost time to create your first blog post. But before we do that, we need to do a few things. We need to make use of two free services that will help us to track our visitors and see where they are coming from. Because when we see where they are coming from, that can help us to, to give extra attention to certain areas in our website, to certain blog posts, maybe to, to make some content better or fix some things in our website. And those free tools are Google Analytics, which helps us to see what uh, visitors are doing on our website and Google Search Console, which helps us to see where visitors come from and what they are doing and if everything is all right with our website. So let me show you how to sign up for your free Google Analytics account. In order to measure statistics on our website from visitors and what they are doing, I can install Google Analytics. So I search for analytics, hit enter and I go to Google Analytics. Then I need to select an account or use another one, create an account. And if you're here for the first time, you need to click on start measuring. And then you, create, you need to create your first account and I would do the name of your website. I uncheck benchmarking and I click on next. Again, I say freddydavid.com. Then I need to select the, the country where I want the reporting from with the time zones. Um, I would say United States because I'm focusing on people from the United States. And since I focus on people from the United States, I would also change the currency to dollars. If you choose this, you cannot change this later. So you need to make sure that these are the right settings. Then I click on next. I can say something about my business. I can say I have a small business. I can select the industry, but I leave it as it is. And I click on create. I accept all the terms. If you want to read them in a different language, you can find the language over there and check that. And then you click on, I accept. I save for the settings. Now I need to link my Google analytics code with my website. So I go to freddydavid.com and over here I click on which platform I want to choose. If you do not see this, go back to admin, choose your account and here at properties, go to data stream and then click on web, then fill in your domain, freddydavid.com. My stream name is Freddy david.com and I click on create stream. Now I need to install my Google tag and I want to do that using the SiteKit plugin. So I go to my website to plugins, add new. I search for Google SiteKit and I click on install now and activate. Start setup, connect Google Analytics as a part of your setup. That's exactly what I want to do. Sign in with Google. So I need to sign in again and give some permissions. I use the same account I used for my Google Analytics account. Otherwise it will not work. That is this one. So I click on continue and I trust everything. So I click on verify over here. Now it will check if everything is linking correctly. I allow the metrics on my dashboard. I want to set up search console. So I click on setup and I click on next. And there it goes. Perfect. That's exactly what I want to use. I click on configure analytics and more permissions are required. So I click on proceed 
I need to log in again. There are quite a few steps. I click on continue. Congrats on completing the setup for Google Analytics. Okay, I got it. Let's see if it's working. There's no data yet because we just installed Google Analytics for the first time. But to check if it's working, we can go to analytics. Go back. Go back to the homepage. Okay. Now over here for freddydavid.com, I can see the latest users in the last 30 minutes. So I click over here, a new incognito window. I go to freddydavid.com. So now I am a visitor. So what I need to do now, make this smaller and watch until I see there's a visitor. And if I see a visitor, a one over here, that means Google Analytics is working properly on our website. So let's wait a minute. And there it is. It means Google Analytics is linked with my website and I can see the visitors over here. So everything is working. That is great. What I want to do now, I want to go to the website and I want to configure Google Search Console. During the configuration of Google Analytics, we already activated Google Search Console. Let's check if everything is working. So what we will do right now, make sure that Google Search Console is working on our website. In order to set up your Google Search Console account, we go to Google Search Console. And actually, we already created our account with the Gmail account you used before when we installed Google Analytics because it asked us to set up Google Search Console for us. So the only thing we need to do, we need to use the same email address we use for Google Analytics. Click over here and click on start now and voila, our website will be tracked and Google Search Console is talking more about where your visitors come from. If there are pages that need attention that are not linked correctly. If I take a look at one of my websites, Ferdy Corpsook for instance, you can see a lot of information and reports and insights and that can help you to optimize your website. So this is everything we had to do right now. I can close this and then we go back to our website. So now we have Google Analytics and we have Google Search Console. Right now I don't need this, so I will get rid of it. Great. Okay, one step closer to creating a blog post, but what I want to do in order to create great blog posts, I want to install Rank Math. Rank Math is a tool that helps us to optimize our website for the search results. So our website will be found better. Isn't that what we want? That is what we want. There's a free version and I will show you in this tutorial how you can use that. And after we have done that, we're one step closer to creating our first blog post. So let's get right to it. Let's install Rank Math. In order to do that, we go to ferdycorp.com forward slash rank math hit enter we can download it for free by clicking here and sometimes they seem to hide the free version so if you cannot find it oh is it here no if you cannot find it you can go to your website to the back end and to plugins add new and then search for rank math. It's my opinion better than Yoast. Why there are more free features in comparison with Yoast. Million installation, more than a million, a lot of stars updated two weeks ago. I click on install now and activate. Okay, I can connect a free account. I can skip this or I can click on connect your account. I prefer to do that. You can log in using your Facebook account, Google or WordPress or email and password. If you're new here, you can register. Well, I will use my email and password. I'm already logged in. Log in. Now I need to link uh, Freddy David with my Rank Math free plan. So I click on OK. Activate now. And I have an in depth tutorial about Rank Math. So if you go to YouTube and you search for Rank Math, mine will be not number one anymore. Maybe if you search for tutorial, tutorial, tutorial. Real. Yes, there it is. It's a year ago, but still relevant. Two hours in depth stuff. I said I will cover every step, but I will go just through the steps because all this setting up stuff, it's already optimized. 
So I just have to click on advanced, start the wizard. I will not explain everything. If you want to know exactly what is going on, then you can watch my in-depth tutorial about it. My website is a personal blog. This is the name of my website, alternate name, short name. It can be YouTube channel growth. Okay, the rest of the settings are all fine. I click on save and continue. I can connect services. And since we have those, I want to do that. So I go to the Gmail account I use for Google Analytics and Google Search Console. I click on continue and I accept everything. So I select Freddie David. Also at analytics, I search for Freddie David property. Also Freddie David. Perfect. I don't need to install the analytics code already. It's already there through Google Sidekick. I have, don't have an AdSense account. It's for later and it's for the pro version. We don't have to use RankMath for that. And if you want to, you can get email reports every week about visitors. So I like that. Save and continue. This is all fine. This is also fine. And I click on return to the dashboard. It's almost, almost, almost time to create our first blog post. But I want to set everything or let you set everything up in a way that you'll start to make sales. So what we can do, I prefer to talk about things in my blog post that I have passion for. But if you have passion for frogs, if they are alive on planet Mars, there is a slight chance that not a lot of people are searching for that on the internet. And that means that you don't get a lot of visitors with that subject. So we need to find out if the things you want to write about are relevant. If people are searching for that. So I want to ask you uh, three questions or, or help you to get three things. The first one is I want to give you the right ideas because I can tell you writing about frogs on planet Mars is maybe uh, not a great idea. So how do we get good ideas? Second, the ideas we have, are people searching for that? And the third one, is there a lot of competition? Because maybe you have, you have an, an ID, you start an affiliate marketing website with the title, how to start for free with affiliate marketing. I think that's an amazing thing that a lot of people are searching for, but the competition is crazy. So I wonder if you should write about that or start writing about that because it's really hard to rank in Google on that subject because there are a lot of other websites that are already doing that for years. So in that process, if you want to do that, you can get um, demotivated because you don't get any sales in the beginning and then you stop doing what you're doing. So I want to show you how to find the right subjects that you can write about with not too much competition. So you can start to make money in a relative short amount of time. Let me show you how to do that. I will start with a pay tool with a free trial. So you can use the free trial and then cancel it in seven days or 14 days. But after that, don't worry, I will also talk about free tools. So I will talk about a few free tools with a free trial. I will talk about another free tool, which has is a light version. And then you also have a, a pro version for that. And after that, I will show you what I do most. Actually, just go to YouTube, go to Google and do some market research based on the organic results you see on Google, because it's really simple. If you want to know if a blog post is good, search for a subject, go to the first uh, page in the Google search results and you know it's good because it's on the first page in Google. So let's talk about how we can do market research, also known as search analysis and the analysis. We're getting there. Okay, let's go. So let's take a look. I go to ferdicorp.com forward slash Sam Rush. Hit enter. And now I can fill in uh, a keyword. So I can search for A, B, split testing, tube body. I click on start now. Now I need to create an account. You can continue with Google or with your details. So if I would say ferdicorp at gmail.com and I create a password and I click on create account, I will create an account. I need to get a code. I get the code, paste it and confirm my email. Uh, I consider myself to be an experienced someone. I don't answer this. Okay. I can get a free trial 
for seven days and then it will be $120 per month. So what I always try to say, so what I always advise is do as much as possible within seven days. And then within those seven days, you can decide to cancel and then you still got a lot of out of it. So I go for the free trial. And by the way, this is not the only way to do market research. So if you want to skip this part, you don't want to pay uh, that amount of money, just skip this part, go to the next part and I will show you other ways on how to do market research. Or don't even skip this, but just watch how I do this. So now my trial is activated. I can uh, request a training that's live or go to the knowledge base, but I will show you what to do. Start using SEMrush. Okay, let me make the screen a bit bigger. Keyword overview. I search for TubeBuddy and then I can see what people are searching for, for the variations. So here, keyword variations. I view them all. So what it's saying, this is the keyword people are searching for when they search on the internet. Then you see the amount of people per month that are visiting, that are searching for this. So 18,000 people per month in the United States only search for TubeBuddy. The keyword density, that means the competition, how hard it is to rank well for this keyword. How much money you should be paying on Google for advertising if you want to come up as number one in the advertisements when you want to be found on the word TubeBuddy, $7. And how many <laughs> results there are? 3 million pages. So now I can see over here what people are searching for. TubeBuddy, the TubeBuddy extension, FitIQ versus TubeBuddy. So what I can do, I can go to my notes again. Freddydavid.com. And over here I can say blog post IDs. And I can say TubeBuddy versus FitIQ. TubeBuddy pricing. People want to know about that. Tube body review. Is tube body safe? So people are searching for this. Is tube body safe? The great thing about this keyword term or this, this term is tube body safe. That means that people do not yet have tube body. And they wonder, is it safe? That's the reason why they don't have it. So if you can explain in your blog post why it is safe, then people can buy it through your affiliate link. Tube body free version. What can you do with the free stuff? I can say tube body free versus pro or paid or premium. So that's how you can get IDs. And if you click over here, you also see in different countries, people are also searching for this. So actually it's 130,000 instead of 18,000. Now let me show you a trick on how to rank well with high quality search terms. In order to do that, we need to go to the keyword density and only select keywords that have a keyword density from zero until 25. So it will filter everything out. So you see the keyword density is relatively low right now. The only thing is the volume is quite low over here. But keep in mind when you click over here, the global volume is 870 which is higher, of course, than 140. The, the thing I don't like about this tool is it seems there's no global option over here. So I always use the United States. And then I click on the keyword to see how much people are really searching for it worldwide, 90. When it comes to keywords, I like to go for keywords that are found or searched for at least 500 times per month worldwide. Now, let me show you another tool which is amazing. There's a free version that can help you already to get some IDs for your blog posts and for headers. And there's a pro version, which with an amazing deal. Well, let's talk about that right now. Another tool you can use is birdiecorp.com forward slash ATP. Hit enter, answer the public. So I search for a phrase or a word, tube, body, preferably a keyword. I scroll all the way up. United States and the language should be English. And I click on search and look at this. Look at this. I scroll down. I see a visual representation on what people are searching for. So there are 301 results and those results are fetched from the, the go to Google from the suggestions tube body extensions, free review, but they're organized. So right now there are questions over here. Why, when, will, are, who, where, can, what, and how. 
and then I can see uh, in one area how much people are searching for something. So I see 90 over here. That means people are searching for this a lot. So what I can do, I can create a blog post. Is TubeBuddy worth it? Another one, does TubeBuddy really work? So all those questions, I can check them. And if I want to see them in a better way, instead of in a circle, I can click on data. Look at this, R, can, how. I don't see all the information. Uh, I can get a free trial, but let me show you a way on how to get a lifetime deal. It's really affordable in comparison with other tools. But first, let's take a look over here. Is TubeBuddy safe? Is TubeBuddy worth it? So I could write about that. Does TubeBuddy really work? So I can create a blog post about that and show people why it really works. And people that ask these questions, they don't have TubeBuddy yet. Should I use TubeBuddy? Definitely worth writing a blog post about. And then the other questions. Can TubeBuddy delete your videos? People are concerned. They are afraid. You can say, I can write a blog post saying no. So over here, I don't see all the information. I need to have the pro version, but there's also a preposition. And again, one area, how to use TubeBuddy. Excellent title for a blog post. How to install TubeBuddy. Excellent title for a blog post. And then in all those blog posts, I can refer to other blog posts. So my website becomes an internal link organism movement. I'm just trying to find cool words now. So uh, I'm getting excited. Again, also here I can click on data. So if I want to go with the, the pro version, I can click on upgrade to pro. And as plans and pricing, look at this. It's quite expensive. $99 per month. And you can do two things. You can go for the, the seven day free trial. So you pay nothing for seven days. Or look at this. There's a special deal. Click over here. And then lifetime, you pay $99. Pay one time and no monthly fees anymore after that if you click on get started uh, by the way it's for one user you can have 100 searches per day and a cpc and search volume data so what we just saw so if i click on get started and now if i search for tubebuddy look at this i see more information so i paid 99 dollars, and i never ever have to pay again here at answer the public i will always have this information so right now i see everything so if I go to the data, look at this. High search volume, is TubeBuddy worth it? 170, is TubeBuddy safe? A lot of people are searching for this. So right now I can see what people are searching for and then I can write about that. And then I need to make better content than other people. Is TubeBuddy worth it? So it's really simple. One blog post, two blog posts, three. 50, how to cancel TubeBuddy? People that have it want to cancel Write a blog post about it. Is TubeBuddy free? Great blog post title, and it is. And there's a pro version and a free version. Is TubeBuddy worth it? Again, some questions are overlapping. Is TubeBuddy worth it? What is it used for? What is TubeBuddy? Is TubeBuddy worth it again? So then there are the prepositions. TubeBuddy for YouTube, the, the comparisons, TubeBuddy visits versus vidIQ, and then here below, we have everything in alphabetical order. So after TubeBuddy, what do people type and, and what comes up and what do people search for a lot? So the TubeBuddy app, TubeBuddy browser extension. So TubeBuddy Chrome, TubeBuddy for YouTube, TubeBuddy free. So I can get a lot of information and inspiration to write about stuff. So that's what you can do with answer the public. The free alternative is keyword tool.io. Look at this tube buddy worldwide. I can get some information in this case, no information, but what I see it's the keyword set up people are searching for TubeBuddy YouTube, TubeBuddy app, TubeBuddy keyword explorer, TubeBuddy pricing. Is it safe? So also if you use a free version, you can still see what people are searching for. You only don't see the numbers. How to add TubeBuddy. Really simple. People don't know how to do it. How to add TubeBuddy. I make this a little bit 
bigger. So that's what you can do on how to get IDs. And there's the good old Google suggestions that you can use. You can use Google in order to find out more about what people are searching for. Also, you can search for tube body on Google and skip the ads and see what people are asking. What is tube body used for? What is tube body used for? Is tube body free? All those questions, how much does tube body cost? And it's not only that I, I can use this for blog titles, but also for headings in a blog post. So if I make a tube body review in the tube body review, I can say, what is tube body used for? And then I can write about that. So all those questions are uh, related to what people are searching for. So if a lot of people are searching for what is tube body used for, I can see it in this overview. Is tube body against YouTube? I can answer those questions and they're also answered over here. I should not copy it, but I can get inspired by it, see some information and write content about it. So then I scroll down, I scroll down. What are people writing? Instagram also here, more IDs. I go for the next page. So this is a Dutch website about two buddies. So you can also do affiliate marketing in your own language. Two buddy review. So if I click over here, you see a blog post about two buddy and it says try two buddy for free. And if I click over here, this guy has his own landing page. So he must be making a lot of sales. So if he make, is making a lot of sales, you should definitely try out what he's writing, how he's writing, how big his um, blog posts are, how many words. You see, it's, he's trying to answer all the questions. And what I also like to do, if I want to get IDs, go to the comment section of a blog post and take a look at the questions people are asking. That means he did not answer those. And then in that way, you can make your blog post better than his what i also see a guy i know uh, shout me loud really popular uh, uh website blog website so if he's writing about um two body it means that's a po it's a popular subject so you you should also write about it the pros and the cons so also here i can see um uh, what i can write about the tag explorer so i can um for free, I can talk about the tag explorer. Tags are things you place be, be, be below the description of your YouTube video. And sometimes I wonder what should I place over there? Should I just fill it with tags? I have no idea. And then there's the tag explorer. If I explain how that can help you to find better tags that are more relevant for your video and get more views, then people are interested in that. And if TubeBuddy provides that, then after reading my blog post about the tag explorer, people can become interested in it and want to buy it. And I can tell you, TubeBuddy is making me as a YouTuber a lot of money. I will show you uh, later on. Getting started with TubeBuddy. Some people are asking that. Oh, I want to <laughs> go away and then you see this. Interesting. Over here, another link, a different color. See what's working better. Explanation on how to edit to Chrome. What I see, it's an old browser, so maybe you can update it and make better quality images because it doesn't look too good. I can learn from those people. You can save it to Pinterest. So if I click over here and I have a Pinterest account, it will be on Pinterest. And that's another way for Shout Me Loud to get free exposure. So I can learn from the best. I think Shout Me Loud is an amazing website. So what I also get, what I see, I they have their logo, their blog stuff here at the right. I have it in the center and then search. It's almost the same as I have the logo, this stuff, the content and search. Also here, the background, my background is also this color around, around the same thing. So I can, I don't have to copy everything, but I can get inspired here. You see a reading thing. What I do, look at this blog post progress bar. I made a tutorial about it a few years ago. I don't know if it's still. The results here. 
it's a, lot, a long time ago already. But that's what I do. I, I, people want to learn something and I provide that. People want to learn a lot of things about the things you are writing about or you want to write about. And it's up to you to create great content about it. So Google rank you higher. You'll be found more. You can help more people and people click on your affiliate link in order to buy the thing you teach them about. That's the whole game. And then, the, the, of course, the game is to make the best quality possible quality content. Related posts, that's what we also have. People can leave comments. Okay, so here I can learn things. If people have questions. Well, not a lot of uh, comments. Okay. That's how I do market research. When you promote something, I think it's really important that you try out the service or the product that you are promoting, that you know everything about it. So what I prefer to do when I promote something, I dive deep. I try everything in the tool, see what is working, what's not working, play around. And then I have a lot of information that I can use in my blog post to write about so I can help people to make the right decision to buy or not buy that tool. And of course, I try to convince people that I need to buy the tool because it can help people to get the results they want. That's what I think about when I think about affiliate marketing. People want to get a certain result. And if the result is better than what the, the tool costs in order to get that result, then it's worth buying it. So when it comes to my website, I want to promote TubeBuddy. I found a few great things within TubeBuddy that's making me a lot of extra money. So I will talk about that in my blog post so I can convince people that if they want to grow their YouTube channel, they, they can get the, the premium version of TubeBuddy, which costs around $280 per year. I get 30% of that, which is around $100, but it can help them to make a lot more money, grow their YouTube channel faster. And in the long run, it will make them a lot more money than $280 if they use it right and create high quality content. So that's what I think about when creating blog posts, that, that what the outcome of what the tool that you offer on your website or service, uh, the outcome should be better than what they invest. And if you can convince people that that is true, then you can make a lot of sales. So that was free. I don't pass it around everywhere, just in this tutorial. And uh, let's continue. And of course, really important, I play around with the, the tool I promote. So let me go to TubeBuddy. I love TubeBuddy for one specific reason. There are more, but one of them, what I like the most is the, the AB split tester. So here, AB tests. So every day, another thumbnail will be shown and then I can see what's working better. So look at this. WordPress tutorial for beginners 2023 or exactly the same thing except for make your first website. What I see, my original thumbnail is working better than my variation. Well, let's go to a different one with a bigger difference so I can show you what is possible. Okay, look at this. WordPress tutorial for beginners with this image or with a close-up image. This image is with an 85 millimeter lens. This is with 24. So, so my head is bigger and everything else is smaller. I have a, uh, another expression. Everything else is the same. And what do I see? The, the thumbnail is performing better. And based on that, TubeBuddy is saying we are 100% sure that your variation will perform better than the original. But if I would make a thumbnail that says make a million dollars in two hours for free, of course, my click-through rate will become higher than my original. But then people find out I do not live up to the promise in the thumbnail, and then the average view time will be lower. So what I'm after is not only a higher, higher click-through rate, but also a longer view time. So when I have those two, then I'm like, yeah, this is a winning thumbnail. And then, I use this as the original, which you see over here, with something else. So now my thumbnail is performing better than another one. And then it's time to try something new, a new text, a new color. So over here, I do the same thing. My other image, my close-up image. And I see that everywhere the close-up image is performing better. So let's do some math for you to show you how crazy this is. If I go for... Or is it this one? Um, look at this, 20%. I get 20% more views. Let's do some math. If I would make 
$100 per day through advertisements or affiliate links or whatever with this particular YouTube video. $100. And I can increase that amount with 20%. Look at this times 1.20. That means that every day I would make $20 extra just because I did the split test and I found out that this is better. But not only that, because um, people are watching it longer, uh, it doesn't, uh, it's really close to each other. But if, if this is longer, the longer this is, the more my video will be shown on YouTube, the more viewers I get and the more viewers will click because of my click through rate. So I have so much information about this. If people can make with one video times, let's say times 365, $7,000 extra per year because this, this change that is worth the money for AB split testing. If I can convince people with my story, with my blog post, I'm about to write that people can make so much more money because they can get 20% of increase in, in, in views and a longer watch time that is worth probably $280 per year for people. That means that people need to make $1 per day extra with the 20%. And that's only one video. Look at this. How many videos I already have made better by just playing around. And sometimes I see, okay, I tried something else and I see the original is performing better. Okay. Then I go on with this color. Then I start with a different image. Then I have the different image. I start with a different text. And then that way I can keep, I can keep on optimizing everything for every video. So over here, this video is from last year. I changed the Divi 2022 to Divi 2023. I see a big variation. 40% higher than the original. Okay, let's do the math again. Again, let's say this video makes me around $100 per day. Let's say 150 times 0 0.4 because 40%. I can make $60 per day extra. Oh. $21. $22,000 extra by just changing the number. But I'm not sure if that is working. Really important, what is the average watch time? It's around the same. Okay, I need to be careful. I want to make a tutorial right now, a video tutorial about you, buddy. That's not the idea. The idea is um, that, that when you have something beautiful to display like this, and you can convince people that this is helping people to make more money, People are willing to invest money when they know it's going to make them more money. So my whole goal with making blog posts about TubeBuddy and about vidIQ and other tools that are related to making YouTube videos is convincing people that the tool I promote will help them to make more money. And I always need to keep in mind, I just need to focus on helping those people just by providing value. And then they can decide for themselves if they want to buy this or not. So I heavily believe in this concept of, of talking about A-B split testing, about data and insights, going through all the, the, the features of um, TubeBuddy, the free stuff, the pro stuff, compare it with other blog posts, and then write articles about it and, and text and images, show the results uh, so that people get convinced like, hey, this is the tool I want in order to grow my YouTube channel. And if it's about health, or about food, or about happiness, or about love. The thing is you need to help people with the content you write. And in a lot of cases, you can promote something that will help them to achieve the thing they want. So in my case, I talk about TubeBuddy and I say, hey, through split testing, I make a lot more money than I used to before. And it's only $280 per year. And I make that back a lot of times. So people are willing to invest. So whatever you write about, focus on helping people. So based on your information on your blog post, they know if they want to buy the thing you promote. But the first thing is help people. If you take a look at my tutorial, I help people with my affiliate marketing stuff. And I talk about SEMrush, which is an affiliate program. I talk about the Bloxy theme, which has an affiliate program. So if you buy the pro version, I make money. I talk about the rank math, which has a pro version. So I help you, I give you everything I ha have. I hope you can see that. And then when you buy things, the pro version of Rank Math or Bloxy or SEMrush, I get a commission. And that is how I do that. I do that with videos, I do that with blog posts, 
I do my best on TikTok now and on Instagram. And that's it. Helping other people. So when they're ready to buy because of your information, you get that commission. So let's go back to my blog post. This is what we explored for free. I can talk about A, B. A, B, split testing. And if people are not searching for that, I can say something else. I can say the best feature of tube body that makes me extra money. It's time to come up with a blog post title. And that's important because that's the thing that will be displayed in the Google search result. And there are a lot of search results and maybe you're not number one every time or number two or number three. So you need to have a blog post title that gets the intention. How do we come up with that? Let me show you. And what I will do from this point in the tutorial, actually throughout the whole tutorial, normally I prepare. I create a website, I prepare a few times and then I record it and everything is bam, great at once. This time I do differently. I want to show you the whole journey. So instead of creating a perfect blog post, I do not create perfect blog posts, but instead of preparing a blog post and then having my second screen and okay, now we need to write this. Oh, let's come up with that. I will just start without preparing and show you how I come up with my title and with my content. And sometimes I change my mind and sometimes I make a mistake. I will just show you that because I want to show you the raw journey. I don't want to give you the, 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 the perfect example, like, and then I've created the blog post and then I made my sales. Wow. Now we need to do it. No, I want to show you the, 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 the complete honest journey. So let's create a blog title. So I go to new post. So when it comes to a blog title, I should have my main focus keyword in it. So I should not say that is a B split testing It's called like that because let me see. I go to the homepage, AB test. I can say how AB testing with tube body launched my YouTube channel. I think the title is too long. I can also make it mysterious. I can say this single feature boosted my YouTube channel, or I can say tube body review and then how AB testing will skyrocket your channel. So what I have, I have two body review, AB testing and YouTube channel. Well, I think people are not searching that much for AB testing. So if I search on Google for tube body space, I search for this. Learn how to, how AB testing can increase your YouTube CTR. So that's a really nice title from uh, TubeBuddy itself. AB testing notes, TubeBuddy support, AB testing with TubeBuddy more than thumbnails. That's true. You, you can also AB test uh, titles and tags. How AB test thumbnails with TubeBuddy. So also videos, a lot of videos about it. TubeBuddy video AB test, TubeBuddy AB testing for YouTube thumbnails. So I can get inspired by that. And what I can say based on this, why you should do AB testing on your YouTube thumbnails. And by the way, I can also split test the title so I can see what's performing better. So what I will do now, I will click on publish and publish. And if I don't want to have the twice anymore, I click on the three dots. I go to the preferences and I turn off include pre-publish. So I'll publish it at once instead of twice. So now if I go to the website, here it is. Well, no image. There's the date. Today's the 21st of February, uncategorized. 
So we're about to start. If I want to edit this, I click on the blog post and I click on, let me close this. I click on edit post. So together with Google, with rank math and with my knowledge I share in this tutorial, we are ready to create an awesome blog post. By the way, if I come across like I'm really all over the place, uh, wavering, I don't, I don't know if the right is the right word, but um, doubting what should my title be. I want to skip nothing. What I can do, I can press uh, pause now on the recording, figure out a lot of things on a different computer and then come with a, an amazing title at once. But I want to take you with me on my journey. So I, I pressed pause because I was, okay, what should I do next? I have the title. Uh, now I want to talk about the headings I want to cover in, in, the, in the blog post. But I want to take you with my, uh, on my journey uh, as I typed before. Maybe split testing the best feature of TubeBuddy. I know what I want to say. I want to say the best TubeBuddy feature. A, B, testing. It's a little bit a normal title. I can also make it more enticing by, by, by making people uh, curious. But I'm doing that with, with the best YouTube feature, A-B split testing or A-B testing. I could also say why A-B testing, why A-B testing is the best tube body feature for YouTube channels. Because people uh, maybe don't know tube bodies for YouTube. I also want to be found on YouTube for YouTube channel owners. I think it's too long. If I want to know if it's too long, I copy this title. I go to the rank math settings, edit the preview, paste it here. And I see it's too long. So I need to make it shorter. How tube body A, B testing can skyrocket your channel. That's it. I have two body. I prefer also YouTube. Let's see. Maybe I should write the title here. Okay, how how two body AB testing can skyrocket your channel. And if I say YouTube channel, it's just too long. So what I also can do is this because then people know it's about YouTube. Copy this. I have my title. Great. Now I want to think about what I want to cover in this blog post. So I need to answer questions because I want to convince people that they need TubeBuddy in order to skyrocket their channel because my web whole website is about helping people to grow faster on YouTube. So I will have my, have my title over here. Let me see. And then the headers of our headings. What is a B testing? That's a heading I want to have. Then how I gained $60 per day with a B testing. Also here, tube body A B testing. Yeah, two body. So you have A-B testing in general. You can also do it with Facebook. Actually, what I thought about, you can do A-B testing in your whole life with everything. If I respond to my wife in a certain way, when she's in a certain mood, I know, okay, maybe I should not do that next time. And that's how I keep learning in life. If I go to bed too late, I'm tired the next morning. Okay, maybe I should do split test if I go to bed on time. Okay, that's, uh, that was for free. <laughs> All your whole life is a split test. Here's my blog post. A heading, all headings. What is A-B testing? A-B testing at two body. How I gained $60 per day with A-B testing. That's only one thumbnail. What to do after A and A-B split test. How to get started with tube body A-B testing. And by the way, a heading can be as long as it can be. So I can also go to similar blog posts. 
see what they are talking about. Which, yeah, oh, good one. What to look at in the A, B results. As I just said, uh, two things are really important. Okay, it's, it's a relative small blog post, so I think I can do a better job. So again, I do not copy, but I just want to take a look what are people writing about. So this is really smart, having a video and a blog post. Also really smart. Why are YouTube thumbnails so important? And then I can do a test with a really, a really appealing thumbnail or maybe just a white screen and showing the difference that if, if the title is there, but there's no thumbnail, how much decrease it gives in the click through rate. This is really well, nice blog post. And then here gets you buddy. And then here, uh, of course, that's also what you can do. No questions, no comments. Next page. Advertisements, so tube split, tube split. Wow, the whole. Oh, look at that. What's that? Okay, that's a competitor. So I can write something about uh, alternatives. I don't know if this one costs money. Yes, it costs, but I can say, hey, alternatives. So what I can do, let's see if there's an affiliate program for this. Or I can reach out to this guy. So tube split affiliate program. That's how I work. Because now if, if there is one, I can write a blog post about uh, tube split. I can write a blog post about tube split versus tube body versus vidIQ. I go back. What is split testing? What is tube body? Yeah, that's also what I can say. What is tube body or what else can you do with tube body? And then I can talk about other stuff and then I can do internal linking. And with internal linking, it's the World Wide Web. You create a web within your web page that has a lot of internal links. So I talk about tube body and I say, is it better than vidIQ? And then vidIQ, I can link that to my blog post about the comparison between vidIQ and TubeBuddy. And at that blog post about TubeBuddy and vidIQ, I can say there are also different alternatives. The other one, split tube, tube split. And I can write a blog post about tube split. So what I want to do in the long run, I want to create a blog post about every single aspect within TubeBuddy. And uh, the, what I've not told you already, maybe, the, the, recur the commissions are recurring with TubeBuddy. So as long as people stay active with TubeBuddy, I get my commission every year, 30% every single year. How to do a YouTube thumbnail, AB split testing for free. I can also write a blog post about that. You probably need to do it manually. <laughs> yeah, you need to do it. And that's what I love about you, buddy. So I can write a blog post about this, how you can do it for free and all the stuff you need to do. I can write a blog post about it. And then afterwards I say, do you want this to be automatically? Then read my blog post about two body split testing and then I can refer them to that blog post. So um, I have uh, affiliate marketing websites that talk about a lot of different programs, a lot of different tools that I promote, affiliate tools with an affiliate link. But for this website I'm making, Freddy, David, I will focus on TubeBuddy and vidIQ and maybe some other programs, but mainly two. So my goal is to, to dive deep, learn everything about those tools and then write about it. So with the information I have over here, I think I'm good to go to get started. What is AB split testing? 
So with every title, I start writing and then I will show you how to add images to that. Because uh, a blog post without images is just a lot of text and it can be boring. So we're going to make it better. Two more things before we get started. Uh, first, uh, my main language is Dutch. I'm from the Netherlands. English is my second language. So I tend to make some mistakes in what I say, in what I write. And that's why I use Grammarly that can correct me when I make mistakes. And it's correcting me all the time. So in order to get Grammarly, Look at this. This is an affiliate link for the corp.com forward slash Grammarly. There's a free version and a pro version. So this is my affiliate link. I'm already logged in. So I'll go to my Grammarly account. If I would sign out, you go over here. You can get started for free and then you can get some uh, uh, response from your text. And if you like it and you can go for the pro version, you can buy that. And then I make money. So that's what I'm also in this tutorial doing with my affiliate links. And then the second thing over here, there's a focus keyword. What do I want to be found on? Well, of course I could say tube body, but actually I want to be found on a B testing. Even if I say that over here, testing comma, uh, it says I'm not found that much, but my, I increased already my uh, rank math score. And what's, what are other words, less important words I want to be found on YouTube, tube, body, thumbnails, and YouTube thumb nails. So since I have no text, everything is red and now it's time to write content. And meanwhile, uh, rank math will give me feedback on what I should do and what I should not do. So the whole goal is to, to get as much as green check marks as possible. So it says, hooray, you're using the focus keyword in the SEO title. So a B testing is in the title. So that's a good thing. Add the focus keyword to your SEO meta description. So I need to go to my snippet and I have no meta description yet because normally it will be taken from the text, but I have none yet. So I start writing and that's the thing you'll see when you search for tube buddy, a B testing, this is text you'll see. So I will say, learn how a B testing. Look at this, it becomes bold because I use the keyword, the focus keyword, in my description. Learn how A-B testing at tube body, another word I want to be found on, can increase your YouTube channel overall growth like crazy when you apply it the right way. Something like that. So, so that's also for me a way to make people interested in, okay, how can you do it the right way? So if I close this update, what I see now, the focus keyword is used inside the SEO metadata. Use the focus keyword at the beginning of your content. So the thing I've been postponing or avoiding is to just start writing. And the funny thing is I need to pick up my son. It's 14.30. I need to be there in a few minutes. So again, a reason not to start writing. And when I come back, I start writing like crazy. Ladies and gentlemen, it is finally time to get creating content. I've done my preparations. I've done my research on Google. And now it's time to write. One thing I want to change, how YouTube AB testing can skyrocket your channel. If you apply it correctly, it is it will skyrocket your YouTube channel. When it comes to creating a blog post, I think it's important to deliver immediately. So start delivering, maybe over delivering from the first paragraph on. What do I mean by that? You will have a blog title that states something. Increase your YouTube views with 320% or how I did that. And uh, give people the answer in the first paragraph. Don't start talking, blah, 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 blah. Because people can get distracted, think, hey, I don't see the answer. I'm gone. Give the people as soon as possible what they expect. So you, you create some expectation in the blog post, in the title, I mean, and then give the answer straight away. So let me show you what I've done. So I start writing and what I want to do, I want to get people's attention. I want to live up 
to the promise I have in the title. How YouTube body AB testing will skyrocket your channel. So what I want to start with is an example, a case study. So that's what I will do. And I need to start with a title and I would prefer to have the focus keyword AB testing in the first heading. So I start typing. So I can say how a B testing increased my revenue with 320%. So I made three times as much money than before. That's crazy. So I think that will get people's attention. And then I click on enter and then I open a new paragraph automatically when I hit enter and then I can start typing what I want to type. And I don't want to fill this with fluff. I want to be straight to the point. Every sentence needs to have a purpose and just say it how it is instead of, you know, 20 years ago I started. No, I want to get straight into the cool content. So I start typing and I keep in mind that I want to use those words in my content and especially in the beginning of my content. I already have it in the, in the first 10% of the content, which is uh, over here. So let's, let's start typing. With Grammarly, I, I take a look at the, the things I need to make better. So a comma and another comma. So now I say in that in-depth tutorial, but it's not relevant to the content. So I say in that video, I promoted, promoted a web hosting company. A really important aspect of your blog post is images. We can create images. There are a few ways to do that on a Mac, on a PC. I'll show you all the ways paid using a Photoshop or for free using a free tool. I'll cover that all and I will start with Photoshop. If you don't want to follow that uh, Photoshop part, you can click on the right arrow on your keyboard and then you skip forward to the part where I will talk about a free tool that is online. Yes. Okay, people, I don't feel it yet. Um, it's a lot of text and people can also get overwhelmed. Like, okay, a long story, click through rate, A-B testing, tube body. What is this? Uh, percentages. <laughs> so I want to make it more clear. So I want to use images. Let me update it. We can preview it. This is how our blog post looks right now. Okay. So I click over here. Click on the paragraph icon. Change it to a heading, heading two, update. Then I click on preview in the step. How AB testing increased my revenue with 320%. I will make this smaller later. So I want to add a few images over here and I will show you how I can do that. So what I will do, I will go to tube body, sign in. Let me make this bigger. A, B tests, and here it is. So I want to make the, the screen bigger, command plus, and I want to make a nice image. So on the Mac, I say shift command four, and I make a selection. I release it, and now I made an image, you see it over here. It will go to my desktop. So there you go. I rename this tube body a b test results what else i can do i can open it in photoshop by double clicking and then i can add arrows so i can go to the circle custom shape i can drag an arrow fill it with the color red also because that it's uh that's a bit the color of my website then i can go to Edit, let me see. Edit, transform, rotate. Okay. And I can also make this bigger. Let me see. I can make a circle selection. And then copy it, go to edit, transform, skill. OK, 
Okay. Right mouse click on layer two. Blending options. Stroke. <laughs> let's do a normal stroke uh, with a color, which is, let's do this green one and then make it outside, make it smaller. So it's showing that I have a better uh, increase. And the only thing I did, as you see, is I made the line bigger and I got 37% more visitors. This is unnecessary, so I'll uh, make a selection. Then I can go to image, crop. I prefer Photoshop. It's for me the best tool, but it costs money. So I will also show you how to do this for free. File, export, save for web. And then I prefer to use the quality of 100%. Save it. I want to place it over this one, except it's next to each other, tube body, AB test results. So I can also be found in the search results when I rename my images. I want to use PNG. Then I go to tiny PNG, open the file on the desktop, PNG file. It's 400 uh, kilobytes and now it's just 126. I download it. I go to my post. I hit enter, forward slash, and then I go for an image. And I go to the media or I click on upload. I go to downloads, the most recent one. There it is. And you see more options. The image size is full size. So the, the quality is better. Update. And what I need to do now, look at this. The alt text. I call this one A, B, split. No, all A, B, test results on tube body. So one of the things it probably will say is that I should have an image with the, the, the main keyword AB testing. So right now I have that. Let me go to the settings, AB testing. I did not have it yet. You see, it increases a bit. So if I get rid of it, it decreases. So 2% more, update, and then I can have a caption here below. So I click on it, I can say something like on the image, you see that the right thumbnail was performing 37.2% better. Okay. I can align to for the center and then text will also be in the center. Here I can make it two. That's what a uh, Grammarly is doing. Update. So I'm here at my web hosting affiliate sale commissions. And as you see, I started in November and since I got a higher click through rate, I got more visitors, but since I got a higher click through rate, I also got more views because YouTube showed my video to more people. So if you take a look over here in November, 13 unique clicks in December 90, but because YouTube was showing my video to more people because of the high click through rate, because of the two body AB split test, look at this. I went to 300 views, 200 views, and you see my sales also increased. So I went from four sales in December to 21. Well, that's actually more than 400% an increase. And that's the power of AB split test. It's, it's a domino effect. It's not that I get 37% more people. No, because my click through rate is higher. My video will be shown to more people because YouTube loves high click through rates. So I can click over here. Command zero. Um, I just showed you how to make a selection with command shift four. There's also a tool. Look at this. It's called go full page. Just if you go, you need to have Google Chrome. So Chrome go full page extension. There it is. You can add it to Chrome over here. I already have it. So what I can do now with these results, I can, uh, Show some statistics. I got more, more subs through the second one. 
more likes. As you see, uh, YouTube was suggesting this thumbnail even more than the other one. A longer watch time. So all this information is really interesting. So I can click over here and then a capture of the full page will be made. I can download it over here. Sorry, my kids are upstairs. My wife is doing the laundry. And I can make a selection. Image crop. And I can save it. File. Export. Save for web. It's really big. But I will leave it that way because then I can be found on big images in, um, in Google. I saved in 100%. That's a really big file. Save. And I can give this a name. A, B, split, test, results, tube, body. And I can say 400% increase in sales. I save it. Then I go to tiny PNG. I grab the image from the desktop. And it's a bit smaller, a lot smaller. I go to the post and I can show this over here below. Forge slash image, upload, downloads. Okay. I click over here. I can change the image size to full size. There you go. And below I can say, and again, I want to click over here, bring this to the center. So the text will also be at the center. I want to show the results of my web hosting sales. So I can grab this and I can go to um, Photoshop again. As I said before, later on, I will use a free tool that you can use. And if you want to skip this Photoshop part, just hit the right arrow on your keyboard or click on the, the, the timestamps in the description to go to the grab free images part, which is coming now within 10 minutes, I think. Okay. And create a, a new arrow. Hold shift. And then make this green. Maybe a bit greener. Then I want to, let me see, edit it, transform, rotate, hold shift. Okay. Hold shift, hold uh, option, shift. I hold them both. Alt, shift. So an increase in sales, increase in unique clicks, increase in clicks. Why? Because over here I did the split test. And actually click, shift, shift, alt, or option. Perfect. Let me see what is relevant and what is not. It is what it is. I normally do not like to share things, but okay, it is what it is. All because I did a split test with a uh, red line around the video. I will bring it down to 1600. Save. Split test. Split results. A, B. Big increase. Tiny PNG again. Download just 30 kilobytes. And then over here, I want to add that area. Forge slash image upload downloads, most recent one. Bring it to the center. They are still performing great. Update. 
let's uh, refresh this and see how it looks. Image, image, and an image. People like images. Otherwise, if you only see text, and what you see over here, here I can place my affiliate link. So the whole blog post, people can see, start with YouTube and I can place my affiliate link here. When people click here, they go to TubeBuddy. Uh, I will show you how to apply to become an affiliate, but I need, first need to have some something to show to them that because they're probably going to ask for my website or how I will promote them. So um, this is how I started my, my story. And that's the way the cookie crumbles. As you see, I'm already spending quite some time here, but it's for the long run. For the long run, it's amazing. You can make a lot of money with blog posts. And uh, at this moment, it's uh, just working hard. Maybe you think, but 30, you have those results. I don't have them. You can also make this instead of a case study, or you can make it theoretical. How do you say that? In theory, you can make it a story like, hey, if you would have this amount of sales per this amount of views, or you make $100 per uh, thousand views, and you can increase it uh, by changing the thumbnail with 37%. That means that you start to make more money. And not only that, you also get more views because through the higher click-through rate, that's how the way it works. And then you can make a nice calculation so people can see what happens. I think this is appealing how A-B testing increased my revenue with 320%. So how are you doing um, over here? Content is 247 words long. Consider using at least 600 words. And then there are other things. Focus keyword is high. Yes, I, I've been talking a lot about A-B testing. So I could make it shorter. I have no internal links. So if you make more um, blog posts, you can link to each other. So if I talk about alternatives, I can link to a to vidIQ, to a uh, review about that. If I talk about what else can you do, take a look at that. What else can you do with TubeBuddy? Then I can go to my TubeBuddy review or my TubeBuddy guide. And that's how the ball starts rolling. Uh, linking internally, making more content and helping people. So what else do I want to cover over here? Because I already have my um, case study. I can make it a strike through. What is A-B testing? That's what I can say right now. So over here, enter. What is A-B testing? Question mark. Hit enter and now I can explain what it is. I already did a little bit, but now I can dive a little bit deeper. Then I click, can click over here. If I wrote something, wrote something, I can click here and make this a heading. I think it's a bit big. Let me close a few things. So what I can do, I can go to the website, to this one, customize it, go to typography and heading two, I can just make it smaller. Twenty four. Okay, publish and let's do the same with the other ones. 24, I copy it. H4, H5, H6. Great. Edit post and now I can continue with the post. Okay. I've been writing and um, this is what we have so far. Writing, writing, writing. Wow. It's just a matter of doing. Before I started today, I was like, oh man, I'm a bit anxious. I'm, I feel a little bit of tension also because I'm recording everything and I'm a little bit on the spot. Like, hey, I have to make my first sale. I just keep doing it. Um, let's see how we're doing over here. Basic SEO. 
content is 676 words. Good job. So we're getting a little bit higher. Keyword density is still high. 25 times. Yeah, we, we should. Yeah. Okay. A few more things we can do. I can make a link, which links to tube body. We don't have an affiliate link yet. Open a new tab. Okay. So now you see we have a link to an external source and it goes to 71. I can have an internal link. So uh, let's do, uh, I don't have that. I'm, I'm, I don't have a lot of pages, but um, let's see. Okay. Let's do something weird. No, we'll do that later. So uh, 71, so far so good. I will update it, take a look. Yes, step by step, we're creating more content. And um, I think we will bear a lot of fruit when we keep on doing what we're doing. And the th great thing is when you keep on doing what you're doing, you become better at it. So keep going. So it's a new day for me. It's day three of my affiliate marketing journey. Yesterday I typed this and I want to continue. I said I want to show you every step, but big chance you're not creating a blog post about TubeBuddy. Even if you were, I don't think it's uh, really valuable for you if I'm gonna show you the whole hour and the next hour I will take to finish this blog post. So when I do something new, which I have not covered yet using the Gutenberg editor or the, the WordPress blog editor, then I'll show you. So I will fast forward. I do record it. I will fast forward. And when I do something new, I will show you. Yes. So I go back to my notes. I want to talk about what to do after an AB split test. Okay. I'll fast forward. Okay. New area. I'm going to create a new block for slash. It's going to be a button. I can add the text. Sign up for tube buddy. And I don't have an affiliate link yet. Why? If I sign up to become an affiliate, I want to show what I already have. If I have an empty website, they probably say, mm, I don't want to add you to the affiliate program. I get a lot of questions from people. Hey, Ferdy, I try to do what you do, but the affiliate program is not accepting my website. Then I say, make content first, show them the value you give. And then they want you as an affiliate because if they say, okay, you, you will not be an affiliate, even though we have a great blog post, then you're not motivated anymore to create more blog posts. So they want you to promote them, but then you have to offer something. So first let me make this heading. So here should be my affiliate link. So I click over here, make it a link and I can say freddydavid.com forward slash tube buddy and later on i will show you how to uh, make this uh, a redirection link and in that way you can keep track on how many people click there not only in the dashboard of your affiliate program but also on your website i, I love that too i will talk about it later so sign up for tube buddy so now i want to make a lot of screenshots by the way i'm so happy that i started doing this an hour ago yeah, I was not in the mood of following, uh, following, continuing my, with my blog post, but I just did it. Now look at this. This is what I've created in the last hour, which is quite nice. This area, Bam. and I'm also recording and not preparing. So it's, it's a little bit overwhelming, but I'm happy that I'm doing this. Why? I want to show you the real story and not only that I prepared like crazy that I had the website already complete. I'm just copying what I have already done. So it seems like it's so easy for me to do. No, I'm also doubting. Is this a good text? Is it not? But a reason it's not a reason to quit. I want to persevere. And that's what I want to give to you in this tutorial. Yes, it can be hard. Yes, you can doubt yourself just like I do. You need to persevere. And uh, I have a few videos, movies you can watch. Um, first, the series, uh, the last dance from Michael Jordan about how he persevered and kept on going, kept on stretching himself. Sometimes it seemed like literally how he get uh, basketball in the basket. Uh, the movie joy 
Oh, awesome movie. And the movie Jobs. Joy and Jobs. And the founder. The founder, the head person, the, the lead person character is maybe not the nicest person. But he knows how to persevere. That's what I like about the movie. So having said that, we're going to make images using a free tool. As I said before, you can on the Mac, you can do shift command four, make an image on a PC. Uh, you can say, um, okay, I can Google PC make cropped screen shot. Okay, shift S and then you can make a selection. That's how is this. Just Google it. Yes, I've been talking about a free tool and it's called the Get Cloud App. It's a free tool, it has a premium version, but you can use the free version. And then for the first 30 images, you can use everything for free. Well, I think when you use 30 images, you can create at least three blog posts, get up and running. And yeah, let me show you how to work with that tool. But there's a, a tool you can use and then can, you can create arrows. And when we sign up, and I show people how to sign up. It's handy to use arrows. So if you don't have Photoshop, follow along. Go to ferdycorp.com forward slash get cloud app. Hit enter. I use uh, the Chrome web browser. You need it in order to make it work. I click on download for free. And I want to sign in with Google, but when I do that, it automatically goes to one of my Gmail accounts. So what I need to do, I need to go to Safari birdiecorp.com forward slash get cloud app. So I can show you exactly what to do. Download free. Sign up with Google. And now I can use this one, for instance. That's it. I need to log in with my Google account. Okay. I want to go for the, the free version. You can also go for the pro version. You have more options. Here we have up to 25 captures, so you can see how it works. And um, for your first blog post, that's enough. And after that, it's uh, $10. But I, I want to focus on free stuff. Uh, when you're really going to make money with it, of course, I suggest you go with pro versions. So I say continue with free. I want to install the, the Chrome extension. And I want to go to Chrome. Wait a minute. Okay. Let me... Copy this and I go back. Now we know how to log in. So I will log in with Google. And then I paste the link in order to get this Chrome extension. Add the extension. There you go. I want to find it. So I click on this icon. So it's over here. Okay. So what I can do, I can go to tubebody.com. Then I can make a selection. So I click over here, screenshot. And I release it. Okay. I go for annotate. And I want to go for arrow with the color red. Let's do completely red. The line width. I want to have a solid arrow and at the end, nothing. Otherwise, I, it points, points two ways. Wow. Okay. So I explore the pricing. That's what I want to do in this image. I click on save, download, there you go. I rename this of course, get started with tube body. Now remove the E. Okay. So let's continue. I click on explore pricing. I make a new selection. Release. Download. And I rename it again. Choose your plan. You don't have to have dashes over here. 
I prefer to have them. That's up to you. So I say, um, those dashes are here. Okay, next. Then you choose a plan, select. So again, screenshot, select this whole area. And then I want to have an arrow again. So I go to annotate. Okay, let's remove that. Again, I want to go for medium. And then I want to add a channel. That's what I want to focus on. Save, download. Let's continue. Let's, let's go a little bit faster. So I click on add channel. English. And for this, I actually can also say shift command four because I don't need an arrow. But if I need an arrow, then I prefer to use this one. So there I go again. I go for a medium arrow. I choose the YouTube channel that is linked with uh, the, the right email address. Then I want to redact a few things. Save. And that's what I prefer. Do things with online tools, especially when they don't cost any money. So I click on download. The only thing is you, you can have up to 25 images with this. There it goes. Okay, I'll, I'll rename it later. I need to link it. And then I need to fill in my details. So what I will do, I will skip a step. Why I already have an account. So I click on my account because I know that the next step after that is that you see your channels. So I'll take a few more screenshots and fast forward. It's really important to rename your images. If I create a screenshot right now, it will show the title screenshot and then with the date and with the time. People are not searching for that because when people search for Google, sometimes images will appear, images will appear. And also when you click on the tab images, uh, a thing that people use to search, your um, image can appear when it is correctly renamed. So never leave your images unrenamed like IMG001 because people are not searching for that, but people are searching for a tube body review. When I have a, a title or an image with tube body review, it can come up in the search results in the images. So rename your images. Let me show you how. Now to rename everything. So over here, choose your tube body plan. If I search for this on the internet, choose your tube body plan. I go to images. It can be that your image will appear over here. This is an old one, old one, old one. So um, when your image is high quality, it can be that, that your image appears over here and then people click. Go to your website and in that way people can get it, get it through your affiliate link. So I will update everything or um, rename everything. Everything. Then I go to my post. I update it. I go back to the WordPress website, to the dashboard, to media. Add new. And now Go to downloads, scroll down, start with the first one, hold shift, select them or drag them all over here. And that's it. I close this. I go back to the post. This one. And now I can start typing. So the question is how to get started with TubeBuddy. Then I choose an image, forward slash image. I select it. I go to the media library and I select the first one. Okay, for now, I'm happy. I can always make the, the 
blog post better. So if you take a look, this is what we have created using Photoshop, using free tools. And it's quite an in-depth blog post. So to me, it looks a bit overwhelming the way it is displayed. So what I can do to make it better is take a look at other websites. So for the email tool tester, that's a website I like. If I go to a blog post, it looks a bit cleaner. Text is a bit smaller, I think. There are more, more um, titles, bold words, words in a certain color. So I think what I should do below every um, every image, I should have a title that, that, that breaks it a little bit better up. I don't know if that's the right uh, way to say that. Uh, so I edit the post. Let's see the score, 78. So here's an image. By the way, my website is a bit bigger. Uh, I, I made my screen bigger. This is how it looks on a normal screen. So what I can do in order to spice it up, look at this, use more links, more colors. Bold words. So that's what I will do. How can I do that? Let me make it bigger again. Okay, that's better. And then below this blog post, which is quite a long blog post, what I see over here, something about myself, but I see no text yet. In order to fix this, I open this area, edit profile in a new tab, holding command or control on the PC. I scroll down and I can place some links over here. So Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, Instagram, YouTube, and I can say something about myself. I scroll down, update my profile, close this, renew the page. Now you see this text over here and a few links. And then over here below, we can go to the next post. We can go to related post and people can leave a comment. And when people are not logged in, so they would open this in an incognito window. Let me get rid of this. Page down. People see name, email, website. They can add a comment. And when they get a comment or when I get a comment, so let's do that. I can send it, post a comment. It says your comment is awaiting moderation. And now I get an email and over here I see as a comment, I can approve it. And now I go to the website, to the blog post, scroll down. Hey, this opened up my eyes. And when the email address linked to this uh, message has a Gravatar account, you'll see an image over here. Now I can reply, say, great, great to hear that John or Jack. And then it have an, has an inline like this or a tab. How do you ever want to say that? Then he can respond to that so that you can get nested comments. And that's what's also nice for the Google search results. When people are asking questions, it can help me to write more information in the blog post related to that question. So I can update my blog post and it's good for the search results because my website gets renewed by the comments. A really important part of our tutorial 
Let's talk about scheduling our posts. That means that you can make 10 blog posts at once. That's a little bit optimistic, but <laughs> or you can let 10 other people do that at once and then you can schedule them for every Friday. I'll talk about categories to keep the, the structure of your website uh, neat. How do you say that? Keep it organized. We will make use of tags, an excerpt, and a featured image. Let's talk about that right now. Okay, thank you, Ferdy. Let's go back to me. I'm also Ferdy. So I want to go to the settings over here, to the tab post, and talk about a few things. Right now, it's public. I can also make it private so people cannot see it. I can also say it should be published next week. When I click on outside of it and I click on update, now I need to schedule it. So it will be scheduled. And on this date, the 24th of February, then it will be released. If I bring it back, I can publish it. So that's nice. I can create a lot of blog posts or let other people do that and then schedule them for every Friday, for instance. And then for 10 blog posts is 10 weeks. So for 10 weeks, every week, new content can't will uh, appear. Over here, I can change the permalink why you should do a B testing on your YouTube thumbnails. I think that's a good URL, which will be seen over here. Stick to the top of the block. I can say this one should also always be on top. If you want to do that, you can change the author. If you have a, a lot of writers and other people write something for you, you can change it to you as an author. So it doesn't say that someone else wrote it. Revisions. So I can go back to earlier versions. If you mess something up, you can go back over here. Then we have categories. Well, I created a few categories. I want to create new categories or better. I want to rename a few categories. So I go update this. I go over here to all posts and then categories. And I click over here. And I change this one to tube body and also here tube body update. Now, if I go to the website, look at this tube body. Wow. So I go to my blog post, it says uncategorized, but if I click on edit post, I scroll down, I can select tube body and I can unselect uncategorized. If I want to create more categories, I can click on add a new category and that can be YouTube marketing, for instance. And I can also have multiple categories. And the great thing about categories is that it will bring structure in your website. So when I go to my website and I click on TubeBuddy, I'll see all the blog posts that have the category TubeBuddy, 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 TubeBuddy. So that gives an overview for people that want to learn a lot about TubeBuddy and not about FitIQ. I can also go back, go to posts, categories, change category to, to fit IQ. And also here, fit IQ without capitals. Category three, what, what, am I, what else am I covering over here? I could talk about gear. So I'll talk about the best cameras you can use in order to film yourself for YouTube. It's all about helping people to grow when, when you have better quality, your cameras, your videos will be watched longer and you will get more views. So a new category, I can say editing, no, not software. Okay. So I have a few subcategories. So this one is from uh, TubeBuddy. Yeah, I don't know what I should call this. But I could say tube body tricks. Look, now it's it has created its own slug. So that's what I prefer. Tube body tricks. And of course, tube body. Yeah, well, what else? Guides. Get rid of this. This. So now if I take a look at my website, tube body, tube body tricks, tube body guides. So what I can do, I can go to my blog post, edit the post. And if I think this is a guide. I go for the guide, update. Now, if I say two body guides, mine will appear over here. If I say tricks, it will not appear. So in that way you can bring structure in your website. I go to my customizer. Then I can go to the menus, the main menu. I add an item. 
which is a category, which is editing. So I can create a blog post about the best gear, the best cameras, the best uh, computers to, to live a digital nomad lifestyle, to take with you to Thailand or to Bangkok, which is Thailand or not, yeah, or to Bali. I can go crazy with a lot of subjects. And that's how the others do it. If I go to email tool tester, the logo, here are all the categories, the blog, and the contact. You have a different language if you want to. People can search. And then if I go to one of the blog posts or the categories, it looks like this. If I go to one of the blog posts, it is displayed like this and it sticks. And here's the content. And then over here is the header. So, so far, so good. What else can we do over here? We talked about categories. Well, the same things can be done with tags. So this tag, a tag I want to have over here, it's actually also the, the, the keywords. So I say A, B, test, comma, tube, body, YouTube, thumbnails, so, so words that are being found in this content, I can use those as tags and tags work a little bit the same as categories. And then when I click on those, I see all the blog posts that have this tag. Let's talk about the featured image because right now I go to the blog. It does not look that appealing also here because we don't have an image over here. So if I would go to any blog post, shout me loud. Let's go. I go to the blog. Look at this. This is what you can do. Uh, image of yourself, small text, and then this is the text. So you need to create a thumbnail or it can be in image, but what I prefer is something like this or this with a small text that is just helping this title. It should not be something totally different. So grow your YouTube channel or how to body AB split testing will skyrocket your YouTube channel. I could cra go crazy with it. Two faces, one angry, one happy, one light background, one dark background, and then split testing. So wh what I also can do, I can go to YouTube, AB split testing, thumb nails. And let's see what they come up, come up with. So something like this. This split test. Featured image, really important. You need to get the attention with a featured image and then people can click on your blog post based on the image. How can you create one? Well, I'll show you how you can create one using Photoshop. If you have Photoshop, you can find that link over there or you go to the description, but there's another tool a free tool with a pro plan, but you can cancel that pro plan within 30 days. So if you want to use that, it's kind of a free way or you continue to, to be, be a, a Canva pro user, you can use Canva. And I have to say, I'm impressed with Canva, the, the, the things you can create in a short amount of time. Let me show you in this tutorial how you can create amazing featured images for free based on the amazing templates that are here at Canva. So let's dive right in. So in order to make those featured images, we go to ferdycorp.com forward slash Canva. Hit enter. I accept all the cookies. I want to sign up. I can do that with Google. And now I can click on create a new design. I want to use a custom size. So I click here. I go for 1920 by 1080. That's the aspect ratio of 16 by nine. As you see over here, I click on create new design. And then I can make use of templates. So I can click here, click here, see some results, replace the current one. So if you click over here, I see another one. I can also go back, go to different categories, for instance, black. I can go back, black and white. Black and red, black and yellow. Let me close black. And I want to go for business. Look, 
how beautiful it is. And then we can change the information, change the colors. So if you see something that fits your the style you have in mind, then be my guest. I like this one. Maybe this one even more. Maybe you're not into paying things for services like these. Well, then I have good news for you. When you upgrade, you pay around $12 per month, but the first 30 days are free. You can do everything there's to do at Canva. And if you decide to cancel your subscription within 30 days, you pay nothing. Do I suggest you do that? No, I suggest you, you keep on going with the pro version. But if you want to do that, you can do that. Let me show you how you can do that. What I see, all those images, they have a Canva over it. We want to remove the watermarks. In order to do that, we need to try Canva Pro. It doesn't have to cost any money. You get 30 days for free. So I click over here. I click on start my free trial. And if I choose monthly, it says due today, zero euros, and it will be 30 days for free. I click on next. Oh, wow, you can pay with Ideal, which is a Dutch payment provider. I go for PayPal. I get my free trial, so I can cancel it within 30 days. Then I click on maybe later. I want to go for personal projects over here. It doesn't matter. Just select something. I got it. Now the watermarks are removed and we can work on this. What I can do now, I can just double click or triple click. And uh, if you take a look at my blog post, how to body AB split testing will skyrocket your YouTube channel. I talk about an increase of 320%. So I will say over here, 320%, make it bigger, a lot bigger. And over here, triple click, let me see, increase. And the thing I want to do, I want to line it all up or click on it, left arrow until it lines up perfectly and then I can make it bigger. So it can also line up the other way. Let me bring this to the right. Make it bigger until I think, yes, it aligns. Okay, that's a little bit of a challenge. I like a challenge. So let's see. It needs to fit both at the left side as the right side. Maybe I can say, 0.5, no. So what should I do? What I can do, I can get rid of the background. So I go to effects, make it transparent. Also here, background, make it transparent. And then I go to elements, square, I can use it like this. Okay, then I go to the background, make it more yellow or grab a color over here. Okay, then I want to get rid of this, so I select the delete. This color, I want it to be a red color. Then I select this one, hold shift and click here, bring it to the left. Okay. And then I can say something like split test your YouTube thumbnails. Let's see if I can do it like that. Maybe make it a bit bigger. It, you can do it with a comma, make it a, okay. Oh, I'm only, so let's say uh, 70 until it goes to the next line. Okay, like that. Then I click here. Click, click, bring it down a bit. Okay, I will go to this background. I want to make it white. And then I want to upload my own image. So I click here and I remove it. Now I want to go to file, import files, choose a file. And I want to uh, 
grab this file, which is a PNG, so I have a, a background that is transparent. Open it. There it goes. I select it. I can make it bigger. Oh, wait a minute. Make it big. So what I say in this thumbnail is 320% increase. Split test your YouTube thumbnails. Or I bring this to the right or I make this a bit smaller. So that's the way the cookie crumbles. Now I can share this. I can download it as a JPEG. Quality, I make it 100 because then I will go to Tiny PNG, download, show, and I can say A, B, testing on tube, body, increase, click through rate. Then I bring it to the desktop, go to Tiny PNG, go to the desktop go from 195 195 to 158 so it's already doing a pretty good job canva to make it smaller i go to my post and then i can choose do i want to use this one or this one and then copy paste paste set featured image update I think this one is better. It's uh, it's clear that it's about increase. That's what people want. So um, yeah, that's how you can do it with Canva. And still, if you do this within 30 days, you pay $0 and you have a few nice images that you have created with Canva. Or you can keep your subscription and keep using it, well, for every blog post you write. It's cheaper than Photoshop. As you see, you don't have to choose something that's in the style of your website. You can choose anything, change the colors, change the text, change the way it is displayed, and then you can create something you have in mind for your blog post. And then there's, there's the excerpt. And I copy this text, place it here at the post, excerpt, place or paste. Can people reply? Yes and yes. Update. Refresh. And now it looks like that. And I forgot that that is not what I like. <laughs> How can I fix that really easy? Go to the customize customizer. And I go click on edit over here. And then add the card options. I go for the featured image. And I say 16 by 9 and I turn this off and then it looks like that. I zoom in and I hover over it and then maybe I'm like, okay, I don't need the post made up. Okay. What I can do if I want to, I can make the text a bit shorter, but um, I think it's fine. So as long as I'm here, I'm zoomed in. So this whole area is a link or, or when I hover over here, it zooms in. Then I can click over here or I can click over here. Then I go to the blog post and I see the amount of comments. And then it starts. Maybe it doesn't look that beautiful. It doesn't look, uh, it's, it does not win a prize for uh, design, but the best sales are made with designs that are functional instead of beautiful so a few more things i want to do i want to make this core better so i click over here maybe testing okay so let's see the content is 1600 words keyword density is 3.67 which is high it should be a bit lower so I can also change uh, the, the, the way I say it. So here I say AB testing. I can also use split testing. So what I can do, Command F, 
A, B, testing. Where it says only shown a few times. 13 instead of 61. So maybe it's also, um, I don't know. So let's say split testing. What happens over here? 361, if I click on update, URL is 82 check, uh, characters long, consider shorting it. So if I would do that, I can do that here at um, the settings, post, A, B, testing, for YouTube thumbnails. Copy, update, and I click here, I edit the snippet. Okay, it's, it's better now. So let's see what it is saying. Okay, it's green now. With Rank Math, there is a new feature called Content AI, and that can help you to make your blog post even better. So let's explore that. I can use AI content to optimize the post. I can do it for free a few times. So I click on it and I do some research. I can do this for free. And after that, I can upgrade by clicking here. So it's now analyzing a few things. Let's see what it is doing for us. And that is what, look at this. Now this becomes better because I activated AI enhancements. So uh, I see a, a lot of information over here. This is orange. I should use more words. Link, only three links. I should use between 18 and 27. The heading count, that's good. Uh, it can be a bit more. Media count, 17. I use too much. Only use 17 until or 8 until 12. There are some other ways to, to use AB testing example. So if I would add those, look at this. I can search now for example. Let me talk about the AB test testing examples. So also singular, okay, if I would say examples, it is in capitals. Update, look at this, now this becomes green. So what I can do, I can see if I can uh, few, place a few of those in the text, as long as they are having value, because I'm not talking about website AB testing. So it's doing a nice job, but it's missing a few things over here. Let's take a look at the headings. A, B, testing statistics. Okay. So I talk about the statistics. So I can say over here, A, B, testing. This ticks. There it is. And this becomes a bit higher. SEO title. Okay, and the description. Okay. So it's it's just uh, something new that can help you to enhance your website a bit more. I tend to focus on this one. Now this one is green, which I like. I like green. Focus keyword is not found in the URL. So I can bring that back. And this is how it goes. As I said before, it's, it's just trial and error. A, B, is it what, what it wants? Yes, that's what it wants. Wow. Yeah. Keyword density is high. 
it appears 20, 62 times. Your title doesn't contain a positive or a negative sentiment word. I can also neglect it. Your SEO title doesn't contain a number. Okay. So I can also say increase your YouTube channel by 200%, but uh, I cannot guarantee that. So, okay. Nice suggestions. You don't seem to be using table of contents plugin. No, I don't use it. I've taken a look at other websites. They don't use it. There's no table of contents where people can click on. So I decided also not to do that. By the way, this is an amazing website. Show me loud. Actually, our website looks a lot like it with this and this. So um, I like it. And this is sticking. Wow. As if he's copying my website. No, just kidding. Oh yeah, the, oh man, that's also something. If you want to get more views, sales, everything, go to YouTube and search for ConvertKit tutorial. Here it is. Two and a half hours, it can boost your sales like crazy. It did it with me, in my case. So um, right now, I'm happy. What I can do, write more words, and then um, the score goes higher. You don't have to score, have a score of 100 for everything, but I want them to be green at least. So when I go to the website, to the post, I think this looks great. There was only one blog post. Talking about AI, what else can we do? We can create a new blog post and we can go to open AI.com or chat.openai.com. I want to log in and then I can say, write me a thousand word post or review about tube body. Hit enter. Okay. Let me copy this and paste it over here. Now I want to get the title and of course we need to to i i don't see it as a copy and paste thing but at least we have a, a framework to build upon so i think this looks decent and now we can make it better so we can improve it uh, make it optimized for all devices optimize it so we can do the same things i just teach you in this tutorial and then if you want to have images, of course, you can create those yourself as I've shown you, or you can go to ferdicorp.com forward slash mid journey. And there I can create images. I have a tutorial for that. Ferdy AI mid journey. This one. There I show you how to create a few nice images. Based on you as a person or <laughs> look at this. <laughs> And it, that's nine months ago, so probably right now it's already a lot better. But um, I just played around with it and um, you can use a tool and follow this tutorial to see how that works. I, I prefer, I'm okay with using AI, but I prefer to, to have my human touch in it so it doesn't become a completely AI-ish blog post. But keep in mind, if the blog post is great and it will help people that I'm really happy that AI is helping me out. So ladies and gentlemen, that wraps it up. Thank you for watching this video. I hope it was uh, helpful and you're now able to create amazing blog posts and keep in mind, it's hard work, but if you stick to it with it in the long run, it can benefit you a lot. Right now I make more money than I could make uh, when I would have a normal job or a good job. Why? Because I kept on making content the latest years and sometimes I think, oh, it's hard, it's tough, other people are better. But as long as you persevere and you give high quality content, uh, right now I'm referring to my videos, not only about my blog, uh, to my blog post, I think you can do great. I think I make a lot of grammatical errors in these, those sentences, but it's what it is, even though I make errors. I'm just doing it. I'm publishing content. I'm doing my best. And in that way, I can help a lot of people. 
And when you help a lot of people, you can also make a lot of money with that. Wow, Ferdy, that, that, that black t-shirt looks so amazing. Actually, I want to wear it right now, wear it right now, but it's, um, it's smelly. So I had to wear this one also really nice. But what I actually want to say is that since we have created our blog post, I want to show you how we can add a few more blog posts and how to configure the blog page and the individual blog post. So let's do that right now. In order to create our blog page, our blog layout, we go to the blog page and we see there are no results yet. But you can also follow along by going to ferdycorp.com forward slash am stuff. Hit enter. You will download something. I will unpack it, bring it to the desktop. Okay, I'm going to import a few blog posts. So you can follow along, see how it looks. So in order to do that, I go to the back end to tools, import, WordPress, install now. Then I can click on run the importer. I choose a file. I go to that file that I just downloaded AM stuff. I go for the five dummy blog posts. And you know what? Before I do that, I go to media, to AM stuff. I go for the five blog posts, JPEGs, drag them over here and see if they can link. If I import the blog posts, that will be cool. Okay. Now I go to tools again, import, run the WordPress importer, choose a file, and we're back at AM stuff, five dummy blog posts. I upload the file and import them. I don't select this. I click on submit. And now if I go to the posts, I have five blog posts with categories and tags. And let's see if the featured image is uh, linked. It's not. So what I prefer to do, hold command or control, click on one, two, three, four, five. Wait, five, okay, four. Then over here, featured image, one, command, control tab. Two, three, four, five. Update, 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 and update. That's how I roll. I like to, to do things like that. Speed up the workflow. That's how I call it. Call it. And now if I go to my blog page, it looks like this. And we can make it look better and we will. So now you have, you have at least something that we can work with. So I enable the visual builder and I want to create a page from scratch. So I click over here. I want to go for a regular area, one row, and in that I want to have text. Okay, the text I want it to be, I click over here, I want it to be the title, like that, and I go to text, I bring it to the center, I want to make it light, because I want to use a dark background. Then, then I go to the section, background, gradient, so now I can see the text again. First color is this one. The second one is this one. I change the gradient direction to 90 degrees. And now I click over here. Go to the settings, design, text. I want to make it bigger. And I want to go to the section, design, divider, Button color white. Make it less high. Okay, I click on the plus 
And I want to add a few blog posts in one row. So I search for blog. I go to design, layout, and change it to a grid. As you see, I changed the, the titles of the blog post. And now we can configure this. Okay, let's configure this. I can also hover over here. So for instance, if I want to change something about the image, I click over here. And now I can do something with rounded corners, for instance. So I can say 10. And 10 over here. Or 50. I prefer not. So I say 0. 0, hey, but it's possible. Then I can go to the title. I can make it uh, upper cases, but I like to work with uh, lower cases. So um, I leave it as this, but I want it to be yeah, like that. Then I go to the third area. And I want to make it less black, but, uh, uh, grayish. I can make it transparent or I can make it grayish. And then there's the extra text. Well, I can adjust it if I want to, but what I prefer, let's go to the content. Since I put this uh, to a grid, let's go to these settings. So the content, post for the current page, I leave it as this. What do I want to display? Post, I can also display projects like that. I prefer posts. I like to have a maximum of 12 posts per page. And I can select which categories I want to show. Well, I want to show them all, so I leave everything unchecked. Here for the date, I can decide how I want to display the date. So month, day, year. So I can also say J, M, Y. And then it says it in this way. I leave it as this, but I prefer not to use um, yeah, anything with the date. There's a guy. Adam and Freud. I was uh, checking out his website today to see how he uh, displays blog posts. So that's what I also do. I take a look at other people, how they do it. He's, he's really successful with blogging. So he has this, but I prefer not to have it. But you see, he only has um, categories and the title and the image. So for me, that's also enough. So I don't want to show the excerpt. I also don't want to show the whole content. It's weird. If I do that, look at this. Bam. No, thank you. So I scroll down, I go to elements, and then I want to show the featured image. I don't want to show the author because all uh, blog posts are mine. I don't want to show the date. I do want to show the categories. I do not want to show the excerpt or pagination. I want to show pagination or I turn it off. And I say over here, 100. So link, no thank you, no background. If I do that, I can do it, but I prefer not to do it. Uh, now I can go back to the meta text and then I can give it a color. Okay, so that's how it looks. Then I go to the row settings, bring everything a bit closer by going to design, sizing, custom gutter width, and then decrease it to two. Okay, I go back to the module. I want to add a nice shadow, so I go to design. I want to go to box shadow and have something not like this, but something gentle like that. Okay, I save it. So one more thing over here, click on the plus. I want to add something from the library and that is the contact area. So on every page, I want to have an area where people can get in touch with me. 
There it is. So how does it look on uh, different devices? Great. So there's a small change because of the title, but I can see if it works. I'm not sure. Design, sizing, equalize kilomites. But that doesn't work. I can go to mobile. Perfect. So make sure you have good uh, titles. So that when people go to your blog page, all at once they see the power of split testing, best tools to create thumbnails. And I'll always use the same aspect ratio for every image. So not all the images are in a different size. I exit the visual builder. Great. So let's go to one of the blog posts, this one. There's a sidebar over here. We can talk about it later. Right now it looks like this. People can leave a comment. So let's create a blog post layout from scratch using the theme builder. So I go to the back end to Divi theme builder. And then I click on add a new template. I want to build a new template and I want to assign it to the old post. Create a template. There it is. I want to add a, add a custom body from scratch. And the first thing I want to do, I want to create a background here. So I go to the gradient green, second color dark. I want to change the gradient direction to 90. Okay. Then I click on the plus. I want to have one row with a post title. Look at this. At once I can showcase a few things. I go to design, text, make it light. Then I go back to content, elements, and I want to get rid of the featured image. Okay. Now I can go back, if I want to, to the background of the section and go to image. And then click over here. I want to use the featured image of that blog post. Now this is displayed in front of the background gradient. So I can go to the background gradient, scroll down and say, place the gradient above the background image. Now I can go to one of the colors and increase the transparency. So you can see the featured image of that blog post through it. Okay. Back here. I like it. I can make it bolder. Change the color. Okay, so far so good. I want to make this a bit smaller. I'm actually okay with it. So if I save this, Command S, Control S, and I close this, and I save it again over here. Now, if we go to the same blog post, look at this. We only see this area. The power of split testing by Ferdy Korpsuk. And if I go to a different blog post, you see a different background image. Nice. So let me go to the custom body again. I want to add a new section, regular with two columns, big one and a small one. And in the first one, I want to place content, post content. And by default, it is displayed like this. Okay. Then I go to the section area, background. I make it black for now. And I see this area is white. Now I go to the column settings and the first column. I want it to be orange or actually white. I want to do orange to see which area is affected. So let's do orange for now because I want to show you something. I have a, an element over here or a module. If I want to add another one, for instance, a call to action is orange. Okay. I go to the background, 
do the same thing again and again. I can also, oh no, it's uh, not anymore. I want to do copy and paste uh, the background, but I changed the background. So I go to this one. I can have a call to action. I think, you know, I prefer to do something else. But what I see now is that this area is orange because the whole background of the column is orange. And since I know that, I can bring it back to white. So I know that this part, everything will be white. I don't need this, but I want to have something else. Actually, I want to have people's emails. So I go for an email opt-in. And then I go to background. If I want to, I can go to design, spacing, say 20, 20, and also here, 20, 20, nice, and then actually, or here, or, no, sorry, here, I want to have 40. Wow. That came out of my mouth and I know what it means. Okay. Sometimes things like these happen. Okay. So far, so good. Of course, I don't want this to be so dark, but I want to show you the, the difference. I can also make it black and then grayish. Over here, I want to have a sidebar. Uh, select the main sidebar and also here for the right column, I want to have a background, which is white. Okay. Then I go over here to this column. It's hard to select it. So I go to the section row column, second column, I go to advanced scroll effects. Stick to the top and the bottom stick limit is in the row. So now the whole sidebar sticks with us. I like that. So now if I refresh the page, look at this. I see the blog post. It looks like that. So there is a lot to do. Let me go to the recent blog post. There's a lot to do. First, I go to the column. I, I mean, I go to the module, the content module, spacing, and there I say 40 and 40. Let's see what it does. This doesn't look really good. And this better. So we have the blog post below the blog post. We have a, we can have a call to action. But then, yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. I did not finish this one, but, uh, we need to link it. We had an email account. I use convert kit and then we need to link that. If you want to know how to do that, I have to talk about it. You can find it on YouTube. If you search for Bloom plugin, create your email list, 40 minutes, and there I show you how you can um, configure everything. Okay. So if I take a look at my blog post, there's quite some space over here. I can decrease that by going to the whole row spacing. If I say zero over here, zero, zero and zero, what is happening? Yeah, it's better. 
So below this area, I want people to be able to write a comment. So I create a new section, one area, and I go for comment. Then I can make the background light again. Sorry, um, white design. Okay, let's wait with design. First go over here. I make this blue. Now there's no edge over here. So I go to column or to the, to the module again. Spacing 20, 20, 20, and 20, or even better 40 and 40. Now people can leave a comment. When people do that, that comment will be displayed over here. So how are we doing? Power split testing. It's a long blog post and then here we see the amount of comments. So if I would leave a comment, this is amazing. I'm logged in, so I already can submit my comment and it will be displayed immediately. There it is. And then I can reply. Thank you. Submit. And it's nested like that. So I can do page up and then I see two comments. Okay. How can we change the, the text over here? Well, awesome that you asked that. We can. Go over here and change that. So over here, post heading one, I can change how it looks. I can make it bold, make it bigger, etc. I want everything to be 26. So this one, this one, I actually don't use those ever, H4, H5, but just in case, H6, I can also do it over here. Okay, and the text, I want it to be bigger. So I click over here. And I make it bigger and I increase the line height. I like to have a lot of space. Great. Now, if I refresh this, okay, it looks better. I think we can even increase the line height. Two, two. Okay, and what I see now is that the there's space between the title, the title, the heading, and um, the text. I want to do that different. So I say right mouse click, inspect using Google Chrome, and then I go for a WP block heading. Copy it. Then I go to the theme customizer. Scroll down to additional CSS and below I paste it, command left or control left with a point, opening parentheses, and then I want to say padding. If I say zero, see it changes. So we know we're at the right area. Four times zero. So what you do now, the padding is top, right, under left troll. So at the top, I want to have more space over here so I can say 20. So there's more space over here. Then bottom, I can say 10 or also 20. And you see, if I do that, there will be much more space in between. So actually I only want it to be five. So I like this space that gives, gives it some freedom. But maybe there are also other block headings. So what I want to do now, I want to say 
point blog post CSS space. So only for all the areas with the, the, the class uh, blog post CSS, it will be adjusted. So now I need to go back to the theme builder, to this module, to advanced CSS classes and paste that class. So now everything should be fine. Only for our blog posts, it will look like this. And that's how I'm actually really happy with the results, how it looks. And then below we have comments. We can add something else over here or over here. Or we can add later or uh, adjust it later. So I can say, uh, let's just scroll and see what, what is appearing. We can have post navigation. That's what I want. So we can go to the last or to the next post. So I save that. I refresh the page. Okay, this is uh, weird. But as I said, I could. And also over here, design, spacing, I say 40, 40, 40, and 40. Let's see what's happening here. Better. And then people can leave a comment over here. So what is left? The right sidebar. You can do a lot of things over here. Let me close this. It's already saved. I can go to appearance widgets. Then there's the sidebar and this is using the, the Gutenberg, the, the, the WordPress page builder. So I can add a block, browse all. And what you can do, you can add Google AdSense, for instance, code. That's really nice. Uh, what you can also do is use an image with a link. So I can upload an image. For instance, start with tube body. Link it to your affiliate link. And make sure it opens in a new tab. Update. And now it will appear over here at the sidebar. If you scroll down, it sticks with us. So that's great. Let's add another one. Another image. Because people should also be able to choose something else. So they can also choose 30 with a link hashtag update refresh okay it does look weird so what i can do i can go to the divi theme builder to the custom body of the blog post okay then i can Click over here, sidebar, then I go to design, layout, show the border separator, no thank you, and now it's in the center, and um, then I go to the rows, the second rows, I can do two things, or I can say no background, and then you see space in between, which is something that I like. I can go back now, go to design, sizing, use custom gutter, decrease it to something like that. And the other thing I can do um, is make it white again. So white and then design, or let's make it orange for now. So you can see what is happening. Then go to spacing. And then do something like that. That's also what you can do. And then, uh, of course, at content, make this um, white. Well, I prefer not to do that. 
And then a design spacing. I don't need to have this. Okay. It sticks with us. Let's see how that is working out. Okay. It sticks on the top. I want some spacing there. So I go to advanced scroll effects. Wait a minute. I think it should be the whole um, column. There I go. And I can have an offset of 20 pixels. Refresh. And then there's a space over here. Until the end of the row. I will go till the end. Up the row. Ba -da 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 -num -num. So right now there's a, a two body blog post. So what I can do, I can go close this. I can do go to appearance widgets. I can create a new one calling this tube body blog post. It has been created. That's great. Go to the customizer. Close this. Go back to the widgets. Close this. There it is. Two body blog post. So now I can do something like this. Link it to my affiliate link. I don't know what my favorite link is, but uh, in the new tab, update. Then I go to Divi, theme builder. Okay, then I can duplicate this. And over here, I can say post in specific categories. So let's say um, only the ones with optimization. Save. And then this one, manage template assignment, all posts. I turn it off and then post in specific category, all of them except optimization. Save it, command S. Then I go to the custom body of the specific optimization category. I click over here and then I say I want to select two body blog post. I only see this one. So what happens now? I save it. If I go to a regular blog post, which is in branding, then I see two of those. But if I go to a blog post with optimization, look at this. I only see two body. So you can as assign things really specific to specific categories or to specific blog posts. And in that way, show an affiliate link for the product you promote over here. And then if you promote another product in another blog post, you can assign another widget area to that. So for every blog post people see over here, they have to write affiliate link with it. And if you use Google AdSense, you can also go to um, the widgets and then click on the plus and go for ads or for HTML. But I think uh, the ads one is doing a great job. Just paste the AdSense code over here and beautiful advertisement will appear that's based on the interest of your visitor. And in that way, you can make money. So that's what we've done in this tutorial. We've created this blog post overview. And when people go to a specific blog post, we created a template for that. And at the end, I showed you how to assign specific templates to specific pages. So if I go to another blog post, this one, all the same settings are applied. As you see, you see the background image, the featured image in the background. And it is displayed beautifully and below every blog post you see this and when you um, configure this you can let people sign up for your newsletter.
So there are zero blog posts. And if I would open this in an incognito window, you scroll down, it looks like this. Hey, great post. George, George at geocities.org website. George from bananas.com. Submit the comment. It will not be published at once. It's still waiting for moderation. Now I go to my website. I see comments one. I approve it. I can even reply. Thanks, George. Bananas. And now if I go to that blog post, how to be found better. Page down. I have those blog posts over here and over here. I see I have two blog posts. If you want to, you can go to the homepage, enable the visual builder, scroll down, create a new area. You can go for portfolio or let's see, remove this, duplicate the artwork area, say um, latest blog posts, and then over here, I go for, let's see, I think. I made a mistake. I thought in portfolio you could also have blog posts. It's not the case. So I get rid of this. Click on the plus. Let's see. You know what? Command S. Exit the visual builder. Blog. Enable the visual builder. Copy the section. Go to the home page, enable the visual builder, scroll down, paste the section, and there you go. I drag this. Let's see, or I drag this one. Okay, rid of this. Um, this is a light area, so I want this to be dark. So let me see if I can. Click over here, copy the background. Paste the background. Make this. Let's see. light or white and over here show only three blog posts and then over here i can drag this down all the way down over here Not working yet, so I drag this up. Yes, and then drag it up one more time. Above. Yes, so light area, dark area, light area, dark area, and then the separator. So that is how you create blog posts and a blog post overview in Divi. This is how it looks. So we have an amazing website that's optimized for all devices. Now it's time to talk about the theme builder. We've created a lot of content using the Divi theme, but we can do so much more. We can create headers, we can create footers, portfolio pages, we can do so much more. So what I want to do, I want to start with creating a beautiful 
header for your WordPress website. And then also how to create separate different headers for different pages. You can assign any header to any template. So we'll, you'll learn a lot more about Divi. We're gonna go next level. I think you will like it. And if you like what you're about to see, then please like this video and subscribe for more upcoming WordPress related tutorials. Now let's get started. First, we will assign our header to all the pages in the website or just to a specific page. And then we start building our header from scratch using the Divi Builder. We will make our header sticky, change the colors and logo when we scroll, add a menu and a call to action. Of course, we will optimize our header for all devices. And then I will show you a few ways to adjust the look and feel of your header. So I have my menu over here created with the Divi theme customizer, a logo and a menu, submenu. It all looks decent and if I scroll down, it shrinks a bit. And it's the same header for every single page on my website. And now I want to create a header using the Divi Visual Builder and I want to assign it to the homepage. So on the homepage, I will have my new header. But if I go to a different page, there can be our current header or another one. How can I do that? Let me show you. I go to the back end of my website. Then I go to Divi Theme Builder. If I would create a header over here, for instance, a global header, and I will create it using the Divi Builder. That means it will appear on every single page in my website. That's not what I want. I only want it to be assigned to the homepage. So in that case, I click on the plus new template. I want to build a new template, not from the library, but one from scratch. And I want to assign it to the homepage. So I can also assign it to multiple pages, but in this case, I only want to assign it to the homepage. So I click on create a new template. There it is. I save the changes. Really important to do that over here. Otherwise nothing will change. So if I go to the homepage, I still see this one. But now if I click on add custom header for the homepage, look at this. I can build a custom header or add it from the library. I choose this option. Okay. Now if I close this and I save it and exit and I go to the homepage and I refresh it, nothing happens. Why? We always need to save it over here. So I save the changes and now look at this. It is gone. It's a wide empty area. Why? That's what we see over here. So if I want to edit my custom header on the homepage, I click over here and now we can start building it from scratch. So the first thing you need to ask yourself, what do you want to show in your header? I want to show my logo at the left, a menu at the center and a call to action, a button at the right. So I click on the plus and I want to have three rows, not equally divided because the logo area and the call to action area can be smaller. I want to focus on the, the menu. I want that to be wider. So over here or over here, there are two nice options. I go for this one and then I can add an image by searching for image. That will be the image, the logo of my website. So I click over here. If you want to follow along with the same images I use in the tutorial, then go to ferdycorp.com forward slash images and it will be downloaded. Then you can click on upload files, select files. I have my folder here at the desktop. I can go to folder six miscellaneous webdivine 2024. And I want to go for my white logo. I already have a normal logo and a light version. So I want to upload the logo white.png and then upload the image. There it is. Great. In order to see the whole logo, I want to go over here, go to the background. Let's go for a gradient or a normal background, just uh, black for instance. But then click on the color over here and make it a little bit lighter. So it's now quite transparent so I can see beneath it. We'll use it later in the tutorial. Like that. So now I can see the white and I can see the logo. Well, if I see how big it is, I think this is a really big area for a header. I want to decrease that. Well, there are two places where we can do that. The first one is the section. I go to the design area to spacing. And here at padding, I say zero and zero. So it becomes already a bit smaller. Then I can go to the row settings go to design again to spacing and also here at padding zero and zero. Well, now there is no space outside of the logo. I 
think it's too flat. So what I can do over here at the row settings, design, spacing, I can say, you know what, 10 pixels on top, 10 pixels below. I think these are nice measurements. So what I want to do, I want this header to be sticky. So if I scroll down, it sticks with us. But what I want, I want to have a dark, transparent background so that this area can be beneath the header. And when I scroll down, I want the header background to become white and then a menu with dark text and a call to action. So how can I make it sticky? Let's start with that. I go to the theme builder, then I go to the section settings, advanced, I scroll down, scroll effects, and I say stick to the top. And everything else looks fine. So now if I save it and I refresh the page, now it sticks with us. That's what I want. When I'm scrolling, I want the background to be light. How can I do that? I go to the section settings to background and look at this. Since I turned on scroll effects, there's a new option over here at the background or almost everywhere. It's this one. If I click over here, I can say this is the desktop setting and this is the sticky setting. So for the sticky, I can create a white background. And now if I save it, look at this. Right now, our header is transparent. And I scroll down, the background becomes white. That's exactly what I want. But now I don't see the logo. So what I want to do, I want to change the logo when I scroll down. How can we do that? Well, let me show you. The first thing I do, I give this a specific width. So I go to the logo, design, sizing, and I say, let's say 200 pixels. It makes it a bit smaller. So whatever you prefer, I say 220 pixels. That's what I like for the, the width of the logo. Now I close this and I go to transform. And what I want to do, I want this logo to disappear when I'm in the sticky area. So right now it's, it's shown, but when I scroll down in the website, then it should disappear. So in order to do that, I go to transform, translate. And then when I'm at the sticky area, right now it's normal, but when I'm at the sticky area, then uncheck this. So, so it will only adjust this area, the vertical area. When I'm at the sticky area, I say, make it minus 100%. I save it, command S, control S. Now let me refresh the page. Oh, and I scroll down the whole logo disappears. Perfect. Okay. I go back over here. What I want to do, I want to duplicate this logo. If you somehow cannot find it or access it, you can go to the layers section row first column, then the image I can duplicate it. Then I go to the second image settings. Oh, 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 drag it over here. I go to advanced to position. And I change the position from default to absolute. Now it's on top of the other one. How do I know that if I go to content image and I change it to my darker logo, look at that, it's on top. So that's exactly what I want. Now I go to design. I go back to transform. What I want to do when I'm in the desktop state and I go to the transform translate, I want this to be unchecked and I want 100% below like that. Then when I go to the sticky state, I don't want it to go to minus 100. I want it to go to zero. Okay. It looks weird, but trust me, it will be fine. So I refresh the page and when I scroll down, this one will appear and the other one will disappear. Okay, let's go back. I go to the row settings. So I go to the rows, then to the first column, the settings over here. Then I go to advanced. Then I go to visibility. And at horizontal overflow, I say hidden. So things will be cut off and vertical overflow hidden. Okay, save it. Now, if I refresh it, it's not exactly how I want it to be. Why? Let's go back. 
we can go to the row settings to design sizing. I want to use a custom gutter width, which will be one. Look at this. This looks better already than this. Let's refresh it. And now if I scroll down, it disappears. How great is that? If I hover over it, nothing happens. So what I need to do, I need to go to the first image to link and link it to the homepage. And the second one, link it to the homepage, save it. So now if I refresh it, I scroll down and there it appears and I go, can go to the homepage. What we can do if we want to, if only we feel like it, I can um, close this and now I can enable the visual builder of the homepage. And now I can switch from our page builder, our homepage to the template. So what I want to do over here, look at this, I click on the section settings. I want to go to design spacing and then for margin, I want to decrease it. I want to decrease it to a point that it's completely overlapping the header area like that, or maybe a few pixels extra, but then vertically, this is not in the center anymore. So at the padding, I want to increase it with, let's say 35, 50% of this. So let's say one, three, five. I think that's perfection almost. Okay, that, that looks great. I save it. I scroll down, now it looks like that. I want to edit the header template. There I am, I select this, the section settings, go to advanced to position. And I want to turn the Z index to 10. That means that uh, in the Z index is kind of uh, a layer. So the layer will all, always be on top of something that is less in the Z index. So if you have 10, it's probably on top of everything else. Otherwise it can be that, that the logo will be hidden beneath the homepage and that's not what we want. So I exit the visual builder. And this is how it looks. Perfect. I want to create our menu over here, but I think if I enable the visual builder, the header is hidden. No, it's not. Great. So I can edit the header template. That's what I prefer. And I still see this homepage. So that's why I prefer uh, uh, editing the header while seeing the homepage. So I see it immediately how it will look. So I can click on the plus over here and I search for a menu. And in my tutorial, which you can see in the description of this tutorial, I already made a menu. If you want to learn how to do that, hold command or control, click over there. Wait a minute, wait. Uh, copy the, your domain, paste it, and then go to the theme customizer to menus, create a new menu, then give it a name, assign it to the primary menu, and then when you have that, you can click on add new, and you can create new pages and add them to your menu, and in that way you can create a menu beautifully explained to you in my complete Divi 2024 tutorial which is visible as a link in the description, as I told you. So I already have it. It doesn't look that appealing yet. So what I will do here at the, the content area, I want to go to the background and get rid of it. But keep in mind, we're at the transparent background, which is a dark background. So what I want to do at the menu text first, the layout, I want to bring it to the center, which you can hardly see. But if I go to the menu text, active link color, I can make it orange. So if people go to the about page, it will be orange. There's no home page in the menu. So people don't see right now that one of the links is orange. Then I scroll down and I want to go to the text color. And of course I want it to be white like that. Before we continue even further, I go to the row settings to design sizing and I turn on equalize column heights and that will bring this vertically to the center. I go over here. When I hover here, I see nothing. 
So I need to go to design menu text or even better drop down menu text. So we're still in the main area. So it needs all needs to be white, but the sub sub menu needs to be dark. So I just need to read what it says. Drop down menu text color. Yes, that's it. Okay. And when I scroll down, how does it look? Okay. Then I don't see this. So I need to fix that. This is something I'm happy with. Let's see the active link color. So when I go to the branding page and I go over here to services branding, this will be orange. Mobile menu text color. Okay. Then I go back to the menu text because if I scroll down, I want to change that. So I go to the menu text color, but this time I click on this icon sticky. So now I can change the color for the sticky area like that. And that's how we can configure our menu. I'm happy with it. I click on the plus and I go for a button. And in the big tutorial I've created, I decided that every button I create is already in the style of my website. So it can be that it looks different for you. Well, either way, what you can do, you can go to design spacing. Change that. Okay. And this I leave, I leave this empty, but, um, what you can do, you can go to the alignment, I align it to the right. You can go to the text, light color to the button add custom styles. And then, um, for the background, when you hover over it, you can change the color. This is by the way for the text. So it needs to be white, but if I go for the background, it's orange yellow. But if I hover over it, it needs to be green like that. Then you can add a, um, and an icon, for instance, you can, by the way, make it capitals, all that stuff, show an icon and then only show it. For instance, when you hover over it like that. And, um, I'm happy with it. Maybe if I can be so free, I can go to spacing and then padding increases. Make it big, a bit bigger to get some attention. I like attention. I love it. Today I found out that, uh, 30 million people, or I had 30, 30 million views, all that attention. I love it. it. makes me so happy. Of course I'm kidding, but, um, I'm really happy with, uh, 30,000, 30 million views. So I do my best to create the best tutorials possible. So right now it looks great. Of course I need to link it to something. I need to change the text so I can say, get in touch or start here or get in contact, but, um, then I don't need this page anymore. Get in touch. And then I link it also to the, to the contact page forward slash contact. Command S let's open this in a new tab. Go to the website, scroll down, get a new logo. Everything looks great except for one thing. There's an animation over here. I don't want that. That was because of the style. You probably don't have that. Then I go to design animation. None. I want to have none of it. So this is how you create a header for your website using the visual builder. More than 70% of the people that visit your website come through a device like a tablet or a smartphone. So it's really important to optimize our header for all devices. Let me show you how we can do that. But how does it look on a different device? Well, I can tell you it doesn't look good as you see, not at all, <laughs> but that's up to you. Figure it out. Good luck. Bye bye. No. How do you optimize it for other devices? I will show you. For that, I prefer to go to the backend to Divi the theme builder, then go to the custom header. And I want to create a new area. So what I can say over here, the section advanced visibility, I want to hide this for a phone and a tablet, a 
for a tablet and a phone, we're going to create a separate menu. Regular, only one row. And I want to start with an image, which is the light logo of our website. Then I want to link it to the homepage. Design, let's go to sizing, 200 pixels. Great. Bring it to the center. Then I want to go to the section, go to the background, make it green one or gradient green. And then the second color, darker one, change gradient to 90 for instance. Okay. And then um, maybe a design sizing or spacing, padding, etc. Okay. So far, so good. So this is how it looks uh, on every screen. So what I want to do, I want to go to advanced to visibility. I want to disable this for a desktop. Then if I go to the tablet view, it's visible and what I see, the design sizing for a tablet. Let's see over here. I need to see an animation. Sometimes this, it doesn't work I Need to click. Okay. For a tablet, let's say 250 pixels and for a smartphone. It's a uh, increase. It's, it's, um, CSS means cas cascading style sheets, cascading. So that means if I say something, a, a specific setting for the tablet, automatically it will be cascaded to the settings of the phone, unless I change it over here. So I can also say 200. So for a tablet, it says 250 for a phone 200. Okay. I click on the plus and I want to have two areas. The first one is a menu, the main menu, and it needs to be no link, but also no background. So now it looks like that. I want it to be at the left. So I go to design layout, left aligned. How come if it's left aligned, it's still at the right. We need to go to the menu text and then I need to change it to this option. So now it's here at the left. If I open it, well, I can't. So let me refresh it. Then you will see that this disappears when I go to the tablet view. And then it looks like that. So far, so good. And if I go to the mobile, it looks like that. Okay. At the other hand or at the other side, which is now below somehow, the second column, if you want to be sure you select the second column of the, this row, you can click on the layer area here. I can say, desktop header and here I can say tablet mobile header and then the second row I want to go for the second column and then and it, because here in the first column is the menu as you see and then the second one add a new module and that is a call to action so let's say button but what I also can do I can duplicate this one, drag it here, and then get rid of this one. Okay. I go to the settings of the button. Let's see. There's no animation anymore, I guess. No. Okay. It's aligned to the right. So I think everything is fine, but I don't like it that these are below each other instead of next to the other. So what I can do, I can go to the row settings. Go to advanced custom CSS and at the main element, I say display flex. And now they're next to each other. So it's starting to look better. If I make this smaller. I like that. I think the spacing is not the best. So what I will do um, for the row. Let me see. 
I think we can take a look at uh, second row here. Go to design, spacing, zero, zero. And then for the phone, it also looks like that. So let's see how that looks on the website. I think it looks great. You can play around with that. So uh, what you can do, you can go to the first row to design spacing and at the top, decrease it until you are satisfied. By the way, maybe this is not the best structure for a, um, a header on a mobile, on a tablet. So what I can do, I can duplicate it, just show you something else. I can hide this for now. On everything. Then let me see. I get rid of this. Then I bring this over here to the right. I bring this over here. Let's see if that's working. I get rid of this row. So there are two rows. I go to the main menu, design, menu text, or, or over here. Okay. I go to the menu text and I don't justify it anymore. Bring, bring it to the right. Then I go to the row settings, design, sizing, equalize column height. Well, that's not working. <laughs> so let's see what we can do over here. Design spacing. I said nothing. So I want to bring it back to 10 and 10. Spacing. Okay. Let's say margin 10 and then here minus 10 or minus 20. Then I go over here, go to design. Maybe not the best way to do it, but it works. Um, okay. Spacing for a tablet. Okay. So now we have something like this. If I make it smaller, like that. For the tablet, let's see. There's quite some space over here. So what I can do, design, sizing, the width, let's say 100%. Okay. And then over here, let me see how, yeah, this looks great. Spacing, maybe also 10 pixels over here. Let's see if I have something over here with the spacing. Okay, then I want to bring this also a bit more. So I go to the row. Or let's see, maybe um, sometimes also playing around. Like, is, is this all there is? No, I don't need to do that. Um, I go to the spacing and then at the right, I want to increase it a bit more. Like that. Well, what's happening on the mobile then? That's what I thought. On the mobile, I want to decrease it again. Okay, and then here. Spacing for the mobile. Top. Great. Save it. Refresh.
There you go. We have created a beautiful header using the Divi theme. Now I want to show you how you can duplicate a header, change a few things and place it on a specific page in your Divi website. So right now, this is how our header looks. What else can we do? Let me show you. I close this. If I go to the back end to Divi theme builder, I can duplicate this header and then I want to assign it to the contact page. Save it. Save it over here. Now I want to, first I want to go to the website and I want to click over here. I want to go to the contact page. Okay, this is how it looks right now. So let's change this. So what I will do, I will go to the row over here, row settings, and then I go to design, sizing. Right now, I scroll down, and then the width, right now it's at 80%. At the next width of 1080. So I click over here, so I go to the sticky area, and I want it to be at 100%. Nothing changes because also the max width, the sticky area, Want to be increased now this is what i want so i scroll up it looks like this i scroll down i cannot scroll down so let me save it refresh i scroll down and it goes to the left and to the right so even with a big screen it goes to the completely to the left completely to the right so what i want to do now i want to give it some space over here so again i go to the row design and this time spacing and then for the sticky area at the left i want to increase it a bit let's say 10 pixels so it's a little bit lower what i also can do i can close this save all the changes click over here go to the contact page enable the visual builder And then edit the header so I can see at once how it will look for now for the sake of the tutorial. Let's get rid of um, this area and this area. Uh, what I've done already, what you need to do also. Okay, let's uh, close this, Command E. Enable the Visual Builder. What you need to do with the contact page, I seem to have done it already. Hit this section, go to design, spacing, and margin top, make it minus 70. So uh, it will be covered. So this area will be behind the header. I go back to the header template. Okay, scroll down like this what i want to do now i want to go to the rows and the third row the third column i want to give it a background when i'm at the sticky area so i click on the sticky area sticky and i give this a yellow background like that then i go back i go to design spacing and then at the sticky area i say zero and zero okay then i go to the button itself design let's see spacing but now when i'm at the sticky area i want to increase this to 20 and 20. so it looks like this and i scroll down it looks like that but this looks a little bit weird and this is not a button so if i save it and i refresh this page i scroll down it looks like that but this is not a button only here so how can i fix that well let me show you i go to let's see design button custom styles and then i search for the background but this time again for the sticky area what i can do i can make this green so i can see how it looks then i go to i can close this go to spacing and then at the sticky area i can start increasing this while turning on this and now 
I want to bring it as close to the edge as possible, the edge of the yellow background. Not too much, otherwise this will happen. Like that, pixel perfect. Okay, now I go back to the button. Background, sticky. I get rid of it. When I hover over it, I see the get in touch area. What I also can do, border radius, put it to zero. Okay, now I still want to do something sticky and hovering. Sticky, let's make this green. Okay, and then I go back to spacing. I need to have one more pixel. So let me uh, just close this, go to spacing, uncheck this, and then at the left, I increase it. So now, let me show you. I save it. So now it's square. And if I hover over it, it looks like that. If I scroll down, it looks like this. So let's see if I can fix that, the, the border radius. So design button, the border radius. Okay. I put it back to 25. Button border width. Sorry, that's the wrong one. Zero. Border radius, 25. But then over here, or sticky, I say zero. Save it. Refresh, so it should be round again. If I scroll down like that, and if I hover it green. Well, still that, maybe I need to refresh it again. Maybe it's a cache thing. Oh, well, maybe not. Okay, I think it has something to do with the hover settings. So design, button, search for the border radius. Okay, I need to go for sticky and this one. And it's zero. When I hover over it, it's also zero. That's the way the cookie crumbles. I'm fully sure now that when I hover over it, there is no more rounded corner. Perfect. So that's also something you can do. So still, when we scroll down, the logo changes. These go to the side. And do you want to use this? Maybe not, but I just want to show you what is possible and then use the same principles for the mobile view and the tablet view to adjust it to your wishes. And then it's time to talk about the following because we can also create a footer using the Divi theme. And with the principles I teach you, you will be able to create footers like this. So by default, Divi comes with a footer, this one. But we're gonna create one using the Divi Builder. In order to do it, we go to the back end and we go to Divi Theme Builder. Here we have the Theme Builder and the first one, the default website template, it means if I add a footer over here, it will be on every single page within the website. So if I add a global footer, I want to build it from scratch, Great. So I start with uh, four areas like this and I can go to the background by clicking here on the section settings, background, background gradient. I want to start with the first color green and the second color dark. Then I want to change the direction to 90 degrees. And now if I save it, command S, and I close it and I save the changes over here. And I open the website in the new top holding command or control. There is our new footer and it's on every single page. Here, the blog page, contact page. So now I want to configure it. So I go back to the theme builder, edit the global footer. I want to start with the first area and the first module, which is an image with our logo. So I click over here. If you want to follow along with the same images I use in the tutorial, then go to ferdycorp.com forward slash images and it will be downloaded. And I go for the light logo so it is visible on a dark background. And I go to design, sizing, 
and I change it to 200 pixels. It's a bit smaller, so I can say 220 and I'm happy with this. Below that, I want to have a text. It can be any text. So let me just remove some things. Then I go to design text. I scroll down and I want it to be a light text like that. If I want to, or you below, click on the plus, and go for social media follow. So there's Facebook. Awesome. I can adjust the link. I can go back to the second one, Twitter, add a link. I can also add multiple or more. For instance, let's see the ones I use. I use Instagram. And I want to add LinkedIn. So I go to the L. And you know what? One more. YouTube. There you go. So that's the first area. Then I want to create a second area. So I click on the plus. I go for a text. I call the text or I say in the text, quick links. I click over here and I change it to heading two. design or I click over here and I change the text to white. Below, I want to go for a divider. There you go. It looks like that. And if I go to design spacing, I want to go for a minus, let's say 20. And then below that, I want to have another text with a few quick links. So I just typed them over here. There's no list module. I say our work, shift, enter uh, the block and a contact page. So I can select this, command or control K, and I can link this to forward slash R dash work. Okay. Second one, command K, forward slash blog. And the third one, command K, forward slash contact, and enter. That's it. I go to design, spacing, and I say zero, and then I bring it to the minus. Okay. I bring it up. And that's the same thing I want to do over here. Design spacing. So it all lines up. Then I want to go to the second column and duplicate it. So we have two of them and I want to do it a third time like that. So over here, I change the text to a few services I offer, services, and then I can change this over here. So I can say branding, shift enter, web design, shift enter, web development, SEO check, logo design. I can, whatever service you offer, you can place it there. And of course, make it all links. Right now I will do it like this. Command K, shift, so it becomes a hashtag, enter. So it will become a link. And then you can link it to your page that is related to the link. The latest one, shift three. Oh, I mean shift or uh, command K, shift three, enter. Okay. Then we have another one. I remove this. I want to click on the plus and I want to go for a blurb. So I want to say over here, you can email me at info at divi5.com. Or even better, I close the title and I go for the text and I go to design image icon, align it to the left 
and I go back to content image icon and I want to use an icon and I search for mail. This one. Then I go back to design image icon. I want to go for the size. Let's start with 20. Make it 20. Then I go to the text. I can hover over here. Click. Make the text smaller or 14. That's uh, great. White. Perfect. Okay. I save it. Command S. I refresh the page. Press page down on the keyboard. Okay. This is how it looks so far. Let's refresh again. Yes, that looks better. So what I want to do over here, a few things I see. Why is there so much spacing? So I can go to design, spacing at the margin top. I bring it up so it aligns with branding. The next thing I see, there's a lot of space over here. So let me see how we can do that. I'm not a CSX, CSS expert, but I can do my best to see how I can make this work. So I say right mouse click inspect using Google Chrome. And then I search the area around it. This one, ET blurb container. Okay, then I go for the area that contains the text. And that's in this case, ET PB, <laughs> PB blurb description. I copy this, close this, and then I go to the theme customizer to additional CSS. Okay, then I need to place a point, opening parentheses, enter, and then I say margin, margin dash left let's say minus 10 pixels so what's happening now not much let's say 20 now we're getting somewhere okay i like it margin top two pixels or minus two so now it's better aligned with the icon okay I like it. Publish. Let's save this. Close this. And open it again. Great. I can duplicate it. Okay. There's not much space. So I go to design. Spacing. And at the bottom. I can say 31 or 36. Over here, I want to change the icon to, to, to an address. So I go for content image icon. I search for address or I can yeah go for this one. Then I go for the text and here below. Okay, and that's the third one. And then I can go for an icon, searching for the time. Then I go to the text and I say Monday till Friday, shift enter from 9 a.m. till 5 PM, we are open. Awesome. Now I can go to the visual builder. To one of the images over here. I can copy the module. I can paste one. If you want to learn, by the way, how to create a website like this, you can go to YouTube and search for Divi 2024. Or, wow, that's interesting. 30 after that, 
there it is one of these videos i will make a new one or you go to 30 corp.com i will make sure that the newest tutorial is over here at tutorials divi and then this one over here they can learn how to create a website like this from scratch using the divi theme so i will paste the module get in touch i can change the text to contact us go to design Let's see, spacing, because it's taking all the settings with it. Oh wait, that's not what I want to do. I leave that empty. But I can also bring this back a bit. Okay. So far, so good. If I take a look at my footer, let me exit the visual builder over here. It looks like that. Okay, all those links, I want to adjust those. How can I do that? Then I go to the settings of the section and I give the whole section a certain uh, class. So I say our footer. I copy this. Okay, now I save this. I exit this. I go save it just uh, to make things sure. I go to the website. This is how it looks. I want to change this to white. So I go to the theme customizer, additional CSS, and over here. What I will say point. Then I paste our footer, opening parentheses. Um, I say color, hashtag, F, 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 nothing happens because I need to give this a title, a link. Now it says every link within our footer class, and this is all the class, our footer will be link, uh, will be white. So all the other links in the website are not white. Also, this one is not white, but that's not enough. Let me see if I enable the visual builder. I go for this color, this background. I grab this color, copy it. Okay. I want the color when I hover over it. So let's say color hashtag or paste it. Okay. This time it's dot our footer a and then hover. Let's see opening closing. So when I hover over it, there you go. Then there's the third one. Let me copy this and paste it. And that means when it's active or I say when it's active. So let me show you, publish, close. Now if I scroll down, okay. Our work and contact are already orange. There's one more, uh, another code, and that is visitors. Oh, visitors. If I already clicked on that link, sometimes it can stay orange. So I will copy this or the white one, paste it, and then I say A, if I type it, it will probably be, yes, visited. That means when it's already visited one time, the color will stay white. So I scroll down. That was white. When I hover over it, it's orange. When I go to the page, our work. It's white. And when I hover over it, it's orange. So, um, so far so good. I can make this a link if I want to. Uh, it looks great. I want to add uh, another area. Scroll down. And I, uh, let's see, I go and edit the footer. And then below I create a new section with one column and a text. Then I say, Alt G 
2023 or 2024. And I say privacy policy terms of use disclaimer. And depending on what kind of website you have, if you also sell products, uh, you need to have a few of those pages. The best thing you can do since um, it's different in every country, sometimes even in certain areas, the best thing you can do is figure out for Google uh, on Google for yourself, which pages you need for your website, uh, which is mandatory in your area where you live, and then uh, use a free builder that can build them for you, or you can hire someone that can do it for you. Right now it looks like this. I go to the back end to background, choose this color, and then make it a bit darker. Then I go to design spacing and at padding I say zero and zero. And then I go to the module to design text, make it light and bring it to the center. And I can also make all these links. So I uh, should link it, this to command K forward slash privacy policy. Okay. Then it becomes orange. That's the way the cookie crumbles. Of course, you can also say, um, Website made by now your name, Freddy Korpshoek. The only thing is now it's a whole link. So what I can do, I can go to the text area, get rid of this area, cut, and then paste it here. And then Freddy Korpshoek could be a link. Command K to HTTPS FreddyKorpshoek.com. Great, but how does it look on a mobile or a tablet? Well, not that great. So let me go over here. Now it looks like that. I personally prefer not to have that. So what I will do, I will go to design. Be really careful with what you're doing over here, because if you don't pay attention, you can also adjust things for the home page. Uh, for the desktop so you change things over here and it looks great and then you go back to the desktop and it looks weird so i go to spacing and with uh, i mean uh, sizing and with everything i do i hover over here make sure it is for the tablet view so i can say 90 percent okay great then i go back to the rows i go to the first column advanced Custom CSS, and then at the main element, I say with 20%, and then exclamation is that the word important, and end like that. But I forgot, forgot one letter. Yes, now you see something changes. But I need to be careful, so let's cut it and then make sure we are at the tablet view and then paste it. Okay, so. If everything goes right, this, that still looks great. And on the tablet, it becomes better. Then the second one. So I go to the second column, advanced, custom CSS, main, and make sure it's for the tablet. Paste it. Okay, so far so good. The third one, advanced, custom CSS, by now I believe. It's on the tablet. Okay. And then the fourth one. Advanced. Custom CSS. Tablet. Okay. So it is okay. Not totally. So what I prefer to do, go to design, spacing, or sizing. Bring it up a bit for the tablet. Alignment for the tablet in the center. That's not working. So everywhere I said 20%. That's why there is 
um, a little bit space left over here. So I can also go to the rows, columns, and say 22. Then the second one, also 22. And the third one, also 22. And then the fourth one, twenty two. Okay, I can play around with the gutter, so I go back, design, sizing, custom gutter. I can decrease it, so that makes it a mess. I turn this off, but what I want to do. Go over here to this divider, go to design, align, that's okay. Sizing, the width, decrease it a bit. And then, oh, I forgot this. So this is the, the tricky part. If I forget, go to design and, and change it for the tablet. Yeah, so now I did not change it for the tablet, but for everything. So I put it away, then I go to the tablet view and there I want to make it 87. Let's do 87. No, let's do 87. Same goes for the services divider, design, sizing, make sure. It's also something weird, sometimes it takes a while. 87. Okay. That's what you can do. And then this looks great. Design. Spacing. Okay. Oh no. Did I really do this? Tablet view and this one. No wait. You move it here. It's it's a uh, it's not the best system. They're working on updates, so maybe it's getting better. So I save it and then I go to the mobile view. It's having a, quite a hard time as you see. So what I want to do now, advanced. Custom CSS. Okay. Here I say 22. Then for the mobile, automatically it's also 22. But I can say 100. Then I go to the second one. Advanced. Custom CSS. Tablet 100. The third one. Custom CSS. Advanced. 100. And the fourth one. So I'm saying that's 100. And then I go back to design, sizing. So for the mobile, bring it a bit more to the center. And in that way, I am happy. So right now it looks like this. On a big screen, it looks like this. on a tablet and like this on a mobile. And I'm really happy with it. I save it. I exit the visual builder. And now it looks like this. So I hope you like it. But if I scroll up, look at this. Why is this happening? Well, remember, this is a blurb. This is also a blurb. We said that the blurb description, this stuff should have a negative margin. So it's happening for every single blurb in the website. In order to fix that, we can do the same thing we did over here using the CSS class R footer. So I go to the theme customizer, search for the code, and 
what I see over here. ET PB blurb description minus 20. It's also applied over here. So what I need to do, I need to use a class R footer, paste it before the blurb description space. You don't see it yet, uh, but if I publish it, it says that this is only applied in our footer. So if I close it, it's back to normal, but here it's still as I want it to be. And one more thing, I think there should be a little bit more space over here so I can enable the visual builder. Edit the footer template and I guess somehow I cannot, uh, I don't know, I cannot select this one. So I click over here, I go to the layers, to the first section, the latest column, the first blurb. And then I say design. Spacing, padding, button, four. Extend, padding, troll blurbs throughout this column. And that's the way the cookie crumbles again. So I exit the visual builder. This looks great. And this looks great. I want to end with this. If you want to, you can also import pre-made layouts for the Divi theme. So I can search for Divi footer layout. Hit enter from Elegant Themes. And then they will direct, redirect you to another page, page from layout.diviextended.com. And you can add something like this. So you can buy it over here for $19, 90 footers and Instagram footers. Or you go for this one, 70 headers, 70 footers. So a lot of things over here. If you click on buy now and then you can import a header like this, content like this. and then import it into your website. So what else do you know what you can do? You can do split testing within the Divi theme. This is amazing. You can create a homepage. We talked about the hero. You can split test the hero. So you can try out a different text, a different button. And then later on, you can see which version of your split test is performing better. And that way you can optimize every single aspect of your website. And when you optimize your website, that means that your conversion ratio will go up. That means that you can get more business, make more money, help more people. And I think that's what we all want. Maybe not all, but if you want that, you can do split testing. I have a separate tutorial about it. Again, go to ferdicorp.com to tutorials, Diffy. And if you scroll down, you'll find the split test tutorial. And there I'll dive deep into that amazing subject, split testing. And then last but not least, we can talk about Divi AI. When I go to the website and I enable a visual builder, I click over here. Now look at this. I can generate content with AI. So I click on it. Okay. I can improve this with AI. I can translate it. I can simplify it. I can shorten it. I can rephrase it. I can make it better. Um, use this text and then I still can make it orange, still the bug over here and the glitch. So I have a complete tutorial about it. Uh, it's not a complete tutorial yet. It's uh, the first look of Divi AI since it's uh, new 60 minutes. There are a few things I like. There are a few things I don't like, but they can improve it. So over here you see it looks nice, but if you size is bigger of the image it can look uh, quite weird i had some fun with it and uh, when it's more improved i will make a new tutorial and you will definitely find it over here so um go to 30 corp tutorials divi 
and take a look over here to the most recent tutorial about Divi AI. So what I've done, I've created my portfolio. I've added blog posts. I have used a custom header from Divi. And if I scroll down, look at this, the logo changes, it becomes light and it sticks with us. But if I go to the contact page, I said that on the contact page, there should be a different header. So I created a different one so I can assign certain headers, certain footers to specific pages in the website. So this website we have created, I think it looks beautiful. It's optimized for all devices. I added my latest blog post over here and our latest work. And then here's the footer. And of course you can create the website you have in mind. I hope you're happy with the results. What I want to do now, let me tell you. Let me show you a few more follow-up tutorials you can follow so you can get the best out of your website and out of your business. I want to go to YouTube. The first one is rank math tutorial. I hope mine comes up first. Yes, it's a year old. I will make a new one soon, but here you can see step-by-step step how you can optimize your website so you'll be found better. Really important to, to apply this if you want to be found better, if you want your website to be found better. So I highly suggest you watch this tutorial. If you want to, you can start collecting emails from visitors. And I have this tutorial for you, convert kit tutorial 30, because I'm not sure if I will be number one over here. Uh, it has generated me a lot of money as you see. And there you can see in two and a half hours, it's a long in-depth tutorial. You can see how you can um, build an email list and monetize that email list uh, while helping other people on autopilot. What else? If you want to sell things on your website, you can follow a WooCommerce tutorial. WooCommerce is a free plugin for WordPress. And there you can learn. Oh, there's a new one, by the way. This one, two months old. Wow, <laughs> a lot of views already. Wow, that's nice. I wasn't aware of that. In really in depth, this one is uh, four hours. This one is five because every year I learn new things. And I want to tell you uh, all those things so you can have the best experience possible. So um, if you want to sell things on your website, highly suggest you watch this video. And then the latest one, if you want to start with affiliate marketing, so you can start to promote other people's products in exchange for a commission. And you want to learn how to do that you, through blogging. There is an affiliate marketing tutorial 30. I have a few ones. The, the recent ones is the longest one. No, this one is six hours. There is a recent one, six months old, almost five hours. And um, I show you real results in this one. So I start from scratch using nothing. And then um, yeah, I show you everything, everything I do until I see my first sale. And that brings me to the end of this video. Thank you for watching it. I hope you learned a ton of stuff. So if you want to learn more things, you know where to find it. I will show you a few tutorials over here that you can follow about rank math, about ConvertKit, about WooCommerce, affiliate marketing. And then I wish you a great day. Good luck with your website. Good luck with your business. And thank you for watching this video. And feel free, of course, to like this video and subscribe for more upcoming tutorials. Okay, bye-bye.